last time, and this may be a little bit longer because a lot happened. That's right. A lot happened, and I want to make sure that all of the, the players are feeling in the heads of their characters. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as they experience this. And you all met Virgil Zern at the Black Pyramid within the Eternal Sandstorm, the Breath of the Forgotten. And the chain god was very nearly breaking free of his long imprisonment. It was at this point you decided to assist him in his plan in helping empower the Felix's Raven uh, Talongar dagger with um, a ritual of the Raven Queen uh, that would take you in and out of the power it held in the memories, held in the mementos, in the magical ritual that he performed. You went through each of your own memories. The first time that you had each experienced death. And each of you had lived the lives, inhabited ten different souls. Ten different people at different places in time. In a very bizarre, otherworldly experience. And once you had empowered the dagger and prepared the ritual, you had then experienced the memories held within the mementos that was utilized to finalize this process <clears throat> and finalize the process of empowering the Raven child and allowing the ultimate plan, the creature would devour a weakened chain god and then be split in half by Zern, the process of which would transfer the chain god very briefly into his empowered soul, and then he would kill himself, forever sealing away, or at least ideally forever, sealing away the chain god within the Fortress of Memories, the stronghold of the Raven Queen, somewhere in the Shadowfell. You then learned through the stories that unfolded from these mementos of the process, a Barov von Zarevich and a Ravanovia von Zarevich. Barov, the, an ancient Grand Master of the 13th Order, forging a blade uh, with the power of death itself. Strange cult to Striga. Um, a Vistani fortune on a child that would bring about blood and utter destruction, the ruination of a line of a pregnant <clears throat> Ravanovia. This, however, due to the whisperings of a nursemaid, the blame was deflected to the wrong child, the unborn child in the womb of Ravanovia, and the mother's love sending the child away to be taken care of somewhere else in Striga, a uh, Sturm von Zarevich, the line eventually leading to Virgil Zern, a line which would then eventually lead to Milo, Felix's brother, which was then fused with the line from Barov and Ravanovia, but through Alexei von Zarevich, which would then eventually lead to Sofiana, or rather Valeska, um, the Vistani child that you had saved. That fusion created a incredibly powerful creature of the Raven Queen that could use the power of death that had just sealed it away, the chain got away in order to devour it. The memories completed, the rituals done. It was time to act. The chain god was breaking free. The black pyramid rose to the sky, inverted in an instant. And 
the doors split open and you only saw for just a brief moment the horrible, unfathomable form of this impossible entity <clears throat> that emerged. But only for a brief moment as Lufty called upon the seven angels, the Wind Dukes of Aka, for a very brief moment, all of those wings descending upon with the rod of law, smashing into the chain god, splitting the seven angels and the pieces of the rod of law across the cosmos, but creating a shriveled, helpless, weakened mass of Thar's Dune for a moment. It was then devoured by the two-headed raven creature, mm -hmm. causing it to swell and grow into a beast that could, perhaps could have been used to impossibly evil destructive ends. But in a moment, Virgil Zern acted and he split the beast in two with the empowered dagger. The process, killing the beast, but saving, sparing the children, as each half fell to the sand and turned into Milo and Valeska. And the process, as you saw the dark energies of Thar's Dune surging in Zern's body, he brought his blade to his throat to end his own life. But he was stopped, wrapped up in his own four wings, as his, you had thought, familiar, grew larger and transformed into the one who's you've been dealing with this whole time, Pazuzu, the demon lord, the Obereth. He taunted Zern and devoured him, consuming the power of Thar's Dune just as he had consumed the power of Miska the Wolf Spider, the original Prince of Demons, so long ago. However, there someone had accounted for this and some strange, shimmering, silver curse afflicted Pazuzu as it surged through him. He gained power, but also with a disastrous consequence. Virgil Zern's last chess move. And in Pazuzu's fury, before he left this dread domain, in one final mockery to Zern, he turned the man into what he had spent his entire life attempting to fight, some strange, gross, demonic crow, who he had dubbed Raum, the son of Pazuzu. It's at this point that Pazuzu disappeared into a cloud of feathers, claiming that Apocalypse had arrived, even if slightly delayed. You now all are on the dunes of Harkir. You've just witnessed incredibly impossible things. The Your body's now just regaining composure, your mind's regaining composure, but still struggling to after the horrible maddening babbles and the sight of Thar's doom. You come to and you see the broken jet black eggshells with the thick viscous orange yolk or uh, coating the shell scattered across the sands. You see the rubble of massive uh, obsidian bricks from the ruined and crumbled black pyramid all around you. And you see two children on the sand as the storm whips around you far more subdued than you've ever experienced before. What do you all do? I immediately sprint to Milo. Immediately. You do. As I run and I run and I run, when I get to about three feet from him, I stop. My hands are shaking. Ah, is, is it really you? And I'll take a couple steps slowly. You take several steps towards him. And you realize now, you recognize the outfit that he's in. It's, it's little more than a very simple uh, tunic of uh, Shadar Kai or, or a Dusk Elf make. Uh, it is the same outfit that you had seen from the vision from the memento. And you approach and you see, although it's just a, uh, it's shaggy um, mid-length brown hair in the sand, 
as you approach, you see the closed eyes. You see the face of your brother. It does seem to be Milo as the sand whips over him slightly as he is sprawled out. Uh, and you see now, as although he's on his stomach, you see his, um, his form rising and falling. He is breathing. I'll kneel next to him and still hesitantly, as if I just can't believe what I'm seeing, reach out for him and try to, like, hoist him up into my arms to get his face out of the sand, brush his face off, and just, like, cradle him in my arms. Milo! Milo! Are you all right? Milo, wake up! Um, you, you cradle him, and although his body is returned to its state before it had been fused, you now see the effects of what his long imprisonment and torture uh, from Ravanovia, and who knows uh, whom else. Uh, he's weak, he's emaciated, and he l- and as you call to him, his eyes flutter open, and they <clears throat> seem confused and bewildered at first as they lock onto you, and you see a look, it takes a moment, but you see a look of recognition and he says, Felix, I, I knew you would come for me. You, you, you need to, to, to teach my friends how to make ice cream soup. And then he falls asleep <laughs> uh, in your arms. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's all right, I'm here. It's all right. And I'm just gonna pull him in close and like hold him to me. Uh, and, and start to go in my pack and just like look for water and rations and, and any kind of food that I can try to give him if he is conscious or if he's sleeping, whatever, just make him comfortable. I'm not even worried about where my dagger fell. I'm yeah. like, not looking for it. I'm solely focused on my brother and making sure that he's okay. Yeah, um, uh, so he does doze off a little bit, but um, you see he nuzzles into your uh, chest as you do that, and his eyes kind of flutter back open, uh, and and they're tracking, uh, they're 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 tracking. It's like kind of when you're when you're you're waking someone in and out of a sleep where their eyes are opening, but they're not. Uh, they're there, but they're they're not really fully present. That's kind of where Milo is at right now. You can tell he's incredibly exhausted. You can't imagine what energy, even your knowledge of the arcane, what it would take to be turned into that kind of creature and then transmogrified back um, by what the crazy magic that you, or the magic that it had taken to empower that dagger and then also to consume Thora's Dune, the chain god, and then to be turned back. Uh, but he takes the water, he sputters a little bit, you get some on your on your coat, um, but he does manage to kind of calm down a little bit and he takes it and his throat is very dry, but um, he, he does seem to settle a little bit. I'm not making any noise, but there are silent tears staining my very dry, desert-stained cheeks. I would have like hustled like pretty, not like super immediately after Felix, but like let him get his distance or sort of just, I, I would be maybe like five feet back to sort of watching and letting them have that moment. And I think I would sort of turn, like look around to see if I could see where the dagger did fall. Um, yeah. If it's I, nearby. I would also be looking for the dagger, trying to be sensitive to what I'm hoping is a happy story, but not close enough to get a sense yet of what's going on with uh, Milo. You look around in this, and I would say it's it's very easy to see. This is a, a, a wide sand dune, right? You look and you see amidst the massive bricks of this ruined black pyramid, you see the broken a demonic egg. Uh, and then you see a glint of silver. And you see now that it is very close to a streak of blood on the sand as you approached Felix's uh, talon guard blade, very clearly um, almost half submerged at this point in the sand, sticking upwards. <laughs> and a mere five foot away. Are you holding it by the blade. What is wrong? Put, put that away. Uh, Andy, don't let him have things. <laughs> a f- five feet away, you see a, the, a severed foot 
Oh. Ooh. The military boot of the high general. Blood st- uh, strewn across the sand where it had landed. Just adjacent to both the knife and to this broken egg? Yeah, the egg is the egg is probably a good, like, 30 feet away from that. Okay. But I, they're all kind of relatively clumped because of what had basically all just come out of Pazuzu's mouth. Ugh. You got it? Yeah, yes, uh, I want to make sure it doesn't forget it. I mean, there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, uh... What do we do about this? And I'm taking my spoon and poking some of the broken eggshell. <laughs> uh, I'd leave that alone. Uh, let, 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 let's, let's deal with the egg in a moment. We've got 14 fires, and, and that's but one. Uh, I'll deal with the little girl. Iris, can you deal with the little girl? <laughs> <laughs> um, Richie can tell you nothing pisses me off more than someone to tell me to do something I'm already doing. <laughs> It makes me want to murder. We if really you could just be a <laughs> Thank you. It that is so frustrating. I'll go to turn off the light, and Rich will be like, "Hey, can you get the light?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." I was literally like clearly walking there to do it. It's like one of those things where, like, I, I like deep down, I know it's irrational, and when yeah. Kelsey tells me something that I was going to do anyway, I have to stop and be like, "Hey, don't get mad at Kelsey. This is stupid. There's no reason to get mad at Kelsey. No. She's just being helpful, reminding you right. that you have to do something." But. But inside, it, yeah, you're on just, fire. Oh, so, so, hey, Andy, don't forget to breathe, okay? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so growing up, spending my 33 years growing up with Rich, I guess has made me used to it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm li- oh, you just told me a literally do the thing? Okay, well, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, you know? Yeah, and I just, the yeah. Uh, That's funny. Uh, Iris, yeah. you see um, Valeska, and you had seen, although um, they had been split in two, the raven child had grown into the raven adult uh, in that brief instant before Zern had split them. And they had fallen probably a good 50 feet or more away from each other. And you see that um, it was actually uh, very fortunate that there is a massive um, uh, black brick sticking nearly a f- five feet from her. And she was lucky that she didn't get completely smashed. Um, but however, there's a bit of sand on her um, on her leg. She's like almost kind of half buried, but uh, she is just resting peacefully. You see her breathing. Uh, and you do very clearly recognize Valeska um, uh, in the sand. I just she's medically amazed. tend to her and uh, talk to her. Yeah, make a medicine check for me, please. I'm a cleric, so it might be all right. Pronounced Eric. Eric's Eric's not even close. close. Thank you. (laughs) Too many TikToks, not enough time. Uh, 14. 14. Um, That's a nice I would say that, kind of given that what Iris had witnessed uh, in the vision, (laughs) um, that that Valeska was very clearly, clearly had not been suffering the same level exposure and torture that basically once they got Valeska, they did the test, they were able to create the Raven child. Um, so she's not nearly as like emaciated and withered. Um, she does seem to have marks from poking and prodding cuts, whatever horrible, tor- uh, whatever testing they had to do, um, it was not pleasant, but she is, her throat is dry uh, and she is very weak, but she is very, is stable. Fortunately, to know for sure, we'll have to take all of the bone marrow. (laughs) (laughs) Was that a syringe? Yes. (laughs) Yes, it was. Um, So I'm sort of getting my. I rue the day Derek is a cleric in one of our (laughs) campaigns. Yes, that would be quite unfortunate. Um, I am Something getting a, I'm getting my grip. Like I'm, I'm barely able to like oh, push yeah, myself through. She a no, she's a druid. Farron's a druid. <laughs> exactly right. Um, a druid of mold. Uh, it's hard to push my way through the sand. It's hard to know where uh, uh, Felix is emotionally. I'm, I'm confused about all of what I've just witnessed. Uh, but I'm starting to get my bearings. I want to scan the horizon and just like while everyone is dealing with these smaller fires, be like, is there an army coming? Like, what's next? Can I get a sense of like, are we? 
Okay, is, there, is there anything? Are left? we? Are we? Is everything just silent yeah. and sandy wind? And and we're like getting. Our... Is the storm like continuing to die as well, or is it yeah. just kind oh, of like question. mostly? Yeah, well, it... we'll say make a perception check. I just suppose straight. I could. We killed actually, the mummy lord. Derek, please we proceed. Killed the god. Like, no. <laughs> There's nothing left. It's Strappy's the only thing left. <laughs> You're welcome. Strappy. If we're lucky. Strappy. Twenty four. Perfect. <laughs> I would say that um, you look around and you recall that you had ventured very far into the, you're in the center of the storm. You're in the eye of the storm, basically. Mm-hmm. And so it is dissipating. All you can see above around you is sandstorm in all directions. However, you do see that at, with each passing, you know, I'll probably say you'll take a good, you know, several dozen minutes to kind of do this and rest and recuperate and, and see this, that the intensity is starting, is continuing to drop. And I'll say with that role, we'll also give it a little bit of uh, intelligence and deduction, is that you get the sense that it's getting to the same level as the what you had experienced um, in the lower, um, the, the breath of the false, the other sandstorm that moves across the dread domain. It seemed the incredible supernatural, um, almost cloaking of the Black Pyramid that this storm had been doing is now seeming to, uh, that effect is starting to dissipate. The storm almost is dissipating as if it knows its purpose is, is no longer... Right? Yeah, as if it's returning to a, a, a classic a Harakirian sandstorm, which is still crazy high fantasy dread domain sure, levels, sure, sure. but it isn't uh, shrouding the imprisonment of a horrible <laughs> god of unfathomable entropy and destruction. Uh, yeah, I breathe a bit of a re- sigh of relief, and then I look, I look to, <laughs> uh, worse. to sort of get a sense of who, could, who I can help most in this moment. Um, I, I, maybe I run to... Uh, uh, tell what to see how he's approaching Felix. Oh, hey, I found the dagger. <laughs> I mean, I guess we both found the dagger. Do you want to hold it for a little bit? It's really cool. Me? Yeah. I, mean, I have a dagger. I don't I, think I've ever touched Felix, it it's Felix is, Let's find out if he's all right. Well, I want to have, let him have some some time. He, he, you know how long he's been looking for Milo? Do you think Milo's all right? I mean, when I pulled him from the ocean, he, basically, I woke him up and he said, Milo, it was the first thing he ever said to me. Yeah. That's how long he's been looking for his brother. Yeah. So I just, I don't want to interrupt anything, you know? And then forever in his memory, I'll be like, I'll tell it, barged in that one time. Let me just toss it right next to him so he knows it's there. Don't, no, don't toss it in the sand. This thing just saved the world, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that. That maybe is what I want to focus on after we have all come to rest. Um, you hold on to it. You're doing just a fine job. Not not by the blade, Toa. Not by the blade. <laughs> all I right. Know I've never used the bladed weapon before. All right. Maybe I should hold it. <laughs> fine. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, I, I'll hold on to the blade, and I'll, I'll I'll just sort of watch and get a sense of whether or not uh, Iris and and Lufty are good, and like. I'm really still just catching my breath. I know it's been maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes, but it's just so overwhelming the experience emotionally of going through the memories and witnessing what we just saw. Make a charisma saving throw as you hold the dagger. Oh! Ooh. Jesus! Why not? Why not tell us? That's, he asked for it. That's Probably because of his demon connection. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Toe is pure of heart. Uh, yeah, maybe. 21. That's pretty good. Uh, oh god, yeah, it's not pretty good. <laughs> you only uh, explode a little. <laughs> as soon as you hold on, as soon as you grip the blade, you realize that the you realize as Toa is handing it to you that you've seen Felix's dagger before and he's used it plenty of times and it had that shimmering uh, uh, treated <laughs> silver sheen uh, that had been blessed by the Raven Queen well before he received it. But there seems to be an extra, a strange hue emanating. It's, um, it's almost like when you look at it, 
it's like when you're looking at like a, a street light and it does the what is that when you have like the astigmatism and it does the the light thing refraction a refraction yeah the the light around it it refracts so very like strangely light yeah that are hitting exactly it. and then as soon as you grab it you almost feel compelled to say something as your eyes you almost feel your soul lurching Ooh. and then you snap back to and you're just holding the dagger. I am the destroyer. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, did I see any of that or witness? Like, how much was physical and how much was like just in his head? Perception check. Uh oh. These are getting spicy already. 20. Oh, let's go. You saw Caprice close his eyes and then he opened them, and you know that he has. Astigmatism. Black orbs with like a little, or a dark blue orb with a little kind of blue point. Uh huh. And they open, and they're literally just circular and white, <gasps> oh, and and like lamps, like lanterns. And then he, cl- <gasps> for a brief moment, and then he closes them back again, and he opens. Uh, and Caprice, you feel like as if as if like oh, you don't, you almost don't remember that this happened, with a twenty on your charisma saving throw. Thanks, Tawa. Shit. Are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? <laughs> <laughs> and his eyes are normal now? Yep. Oh, your eyes just turn colors. Has that happened before and I just never noticed? I mean, I can... Minor illusion, like green, blue, yellow. I, I can also change my form factor. Did you just you minor illusion or change your eyes intentionally? No, no, no. Maybe it was just a reflection of light. I mean, look at this thing. It's really, uh... It's really thrumming. Um... It, I don't know what that means, really, but, but I guess it's a magic thing. I, I, I think it's probably still uh, either uh, cooling down or, 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 or charged up with whatever whatever we did with it. Uh, it might it might be even more powerful than what it was, what, 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 than it, than it was before. Um. Well, if you, you feel strange anymore, just just let let me know if you don't mind. <laughs> it, it was a bit startling. Um. <laughs> I, I, but I mean, you seem fine now, so I don't. I, I've continued to, to feel fine. I mean, aside from the fact that we just witnessed all of those things, and I died like five times in a row because I was inhabiting stupid idiots. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fair point. Uh, Why would you jump on a died? basilisk? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember the teeth. <laughs> oh, did you like feel it? I felt everything. Oh, no. You all felt it, yeah. You know what it's like to be caught in a pillar of flame and destroyed horribly inside of a a, a, a small antechamber? Because I do. Well, I have to ask them. What does it feel like to be snipped in half by Hector Mancrate? <laughs> I was hoping you hadn't mentioned that. It, it wasn't so bad until it got to the spine. And then, you know, it was like... And then, uh, it was like breaking uh, a piece of spaghetti, like dried pasta. But you're the pasta. <laughs> it wasn't good. I didn't like it. Oh no! I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's all right. We. I think. I think we did the right thing. I think. I think so, but I'm not sure. As I look around and just everything, I don't really know what's going on. I don't feel Felix tells me what to do next. <laughs> Yeah, we got a we got a lot to talk about and figure out what's good and what's bad and what's next. Well, make sure that Felix gets this. I want to make sure that Aris doesn't need any help. You go. I'll, I'll I'll monitor the situation. All right. And I want to hustle over to Iris and sort of look over. Is she okay? I'll nod. So she's alive. And nod. I'm clearly focusing. Are you fo- Are you focused on a spell or? No. Just tending to her wounds. Oh. Um, I don't really know what spells I have, because I wasn't here, and most <laughs> of my spells are checked off, so... <laughs> you probably long rested since. <clears throat> um, I would... I'll lean over. Um, Iris, um, I just want to remind you that we have her mother's hand in the bag of holding, <laughs> just in case, you know, this might be a good time or a bad time. I just heard that maybe if I cut off her hand... I'm sorry you had to hear that, Valeska. Um, oh, is she conscious? Please, oh. please just try to relax. My my mommy's what? 
<laughs> she starts having nightmares. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Would you like me to present the hand to Velasca currently? No, no, I, I just, someone told me that if I cut off her hand, or maybe I didn't do, but someone cut off her hand, that maybe we could use it to bring her back. But maybe not right now, Tower. Okay, I just wanted to remind you that it was in the bag. In front of her daughter. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't realize she was conscious, even slightly. <laughs> Her I'm eyes just gonna, were open. I'm just gonna... Please stop holding blades by the blade, please. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... Go ask Felix what you should do next. Oh, okay. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, start, I turn and I just start slowly walking towards you. Meanwhile, you're like drinking the egg soup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, oh, for yeah. a while I was poking it and then I got yolk on it. So I was trying to wipe it off in the sand, but that just got sand stuck to the yolk. <laughs> and then I got bored with that. So I was playing it like the bass, like in, from your memory. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and and why don't you make a uh, an arcana check for me, Lefty? I've got nothing to that. Nine. Uh, this is a very strange. The, the egg is much larger than you would have expected, especially for the size of the bird that had come out of this thing. Uh, and the 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 sickening orange goo that's basically coating like all of these black eggshells um, is kind of it it smells absolutely putrid and foul uh, and it seems to kind of still be glowing with a strange that strange orange color but you can't really make out what it is or what it's doing is that so the egg is it intact or is it splatted? So the bottom half is actually is like relatively in, intact. So basically there's like, there's like a bottom like cup that maybe is like half broken off. And then there's just eggshells all, egg, like pieces all over. Okay. And what nothing's makes... in it. Oh, and so no, it's just the goo coating it. And it's just an empty eggshell. Okay. Um, and this is the goo coating it. And it seems to be of that, that strange. It's the, 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 the goo is the same color as that orange energy that had come out. And you had seen that strange demonic crow creature take shape. Um, so that's what we saw Raum break out of. Yes. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> we were here for the birth. Wait, and then so that flew away. Yes, so then basically this massive like bird demon and then it shrunk back down into the little bottom half of the egg and then a, uh, a crow with like a jagged beak and uh, orange eyes with a, a four star uh, star pupil uh, flew out and fluttered away and basically just disappeared into um, feathers similar th the same way that Pazuzu had done. Oh. oh. Got it. Okay. I got a little confused there. Um, but it's still glowing a bit. Yeah, some fiend goo, <laughs> like Ivan Ooze from uh, the Power Rangers movie. <laughs> Whatever you say, you're a heinous. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> that would be a great news segment. How's the news with Ivan Ooze? That's true. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit! We need to get on that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Ivana Ooze. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Seeing um, 10, 20 minutes go by, seeing Lufty poking at the shell, um, Toe is racing up, seeing that the, the girl is in good care of Iris, I'll. Uh, Felix? Hey, Caprice. Hey, you alright? Ness or yo, uh, <laughs> both. Kinda, we're alive, and I think we saved the universe, but also doomed it. And uh, from what I can tell, your brother is okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Milo's good. I, I. Sorry, I'm a little. Uh, I'm at a loss for words, and I'm a little stunned. Um, yeah. By this point, I've I've picked him up, and I'm, I've scooped him up, and I'm holding yeah. him in my arms to try to meet with you and then see where everybody else is. Ah. Uh, I thank you for asking. I, I, I'm glad you just found him. I, he seems to be okay, just a little malnourished, and we'll get him some. I gave him some water, and when he wants to eat, we'll get him food. But he's sleeping. He's resting, but he's in one piece, and he seems to be okay. Uh, great. Uh, if if you need, I can I can play a, a tune and give him some 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 healing or anything. Do you think that'd be uh, a help? I, I I don't know what state. Well, his through all of it, his, his sense of humor is intact. So I mean, that's a good sign. I, I don't know. The extent of his injuries, maybe you and Iris can 
work together on that. He, he's pretty banged up. I, I mean, whatever they were doing to him, whatever experiments or poking and prodding they were doing, straight up torture. I can't even begin to imagine. No, neither can I. I mean, aside from that, that brief glimpse that we got while we were journeying through the memories, I, uh, he's, had a, he's had a rough time of it, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get him to now. safety. Exactly, yeah. yeah. All that matters is that we found him, and he's all right. We gotta figure out how the, how we're gonna get out of here. And probably soon, we're sort of in the middle of the storm from what I can tell, and it's dissipating from legendary status to only epic. I gotta wonder if, uh, now that there are a lot less, uh, powerful entities here, if travel in and out has been restored. How, how do we find out? Uh, I, I mean, I have some ideas about the magics that we might be able to use. I mean, we've talked about interplanar travel with the tuning forks and the resonances and, and all of that and the music and... I don't know, I, we'd have to have something of, or, you know, a part of a Vantress's resonance. Oh. Okay. We'll have to think on that. Yeah, let's, let's, I, I got Milo, let's see how the others are doing. Let's all just convene and, and take a minute. I, I, it's very tired, it's all catching up to me. I think I'm out of water. Let's, let's go, and we'll walk to wherever I was. As you turn, I'm just right there. Ah, I just oh, to stand in there. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, it's okay. How are you doing, Felix? I'm tired, but I'm good. Milo's okay. I oh my gosh. finally feel like I can breathe. He looks so much like you. I don't know what I expected, but oh, after all this time, there he is. I guess I never really noticed it before, but yeah, I mean, we are half-brothers, yeah. Wow. Does he look like Zern at all? Um, I would say that he <clears throat> he's definitely smaller, although it, obviously he's very emaciated from everything that he had done. He was he's definitely small for his age uh, at 13. Um, but um, you can see the resemblances to Felix, but very clearly like the shape of the nose is definitely stronger. And you can see the shape of the brow a little bit. There is very clear Zern. Now that you know, there's clear Zern resemblances as well. Wow. He sort of looks like a combination of you and Zen. Yeah, I, I mean, I you know, it's... I just never noticed. I, I Maybe I blocked it out, or maybe I assumed I didn't want to know. I, I don't even know if Milo wants to know. Uh, maybe he'll... I gotta tell him now, eventually, right? At some point we'll have that conversation, but, you know, maybe it'll bring him peace to know who his father was. Ugh. Yeah, it's your choice, whatever you do when I tell him. But when you teach him to make ice cream soup, um, can I listen in too? I would really like to learn. It's really not as complicated as you think. Well, I'll take lots of notes and I'll, I'll commit it to memory. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what do we do next? Well, I don't know. I mean, well, what about the thing you were just saying with the resonances and getting us out of here? Right, right. I mean, obviously, I've been... This thing is starting to smell. I've been studying how to move between space, right? The teleporting. We've done that a couple times, and, and it's been fairly successful. Yeah, it's been good. In theory, and the way that the studying and the things have worked, it would just be teleportation between planes. Easy peasy. Right. I, I, you know, I, when we were back in Avantress before we traveled to the, 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 the plane of, of, of air where your mother is, uh, you know, we, we saw that machine that they were using, that the, the, the owl folk were using to, to, to create the resonance that they needed to, to open up the portal or, or, or enact the travel. I, I can't imagine it's much different if we had some sort of, a, uh, of an object that, that, that resonated with the prime material plane. Do you have a spell that once you have that, you can do it? In theory, yes. But I've never done it before, obviously. I've never really left Avantress before we went to the elemental plane of air. Well, we're all from Avantress. Why aren't we the objects? The spell, at least from what I understand, will maybe consume it. And if it does, Ooh. we certainly don't want to be consuming any of our essences. That would be awful. Yeah, hands off my essence, please. To exist. 
Yeah. What well, is it? Is it the spell planar shift? Wow, Toa. Wow, Toa. <laughs> Big My God! Over what have you been? Books have you been reading? <laughs> because in that case, I think you just need something attuned to the plane. Yeah, it was more for dramatic but, effect. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I've got a back bed, in character. I've got a bed roll. Back in character. <laughs> if it is something that gets consumed, I don't mind giving anything that I have. But it might be some kind of. It, it might need to exist for the purpose of being sort of a tuning apparatus or something. Right, almost like a key. Right. Think of it that way. Right. Some way to open the door. To get to the other side. I have an idea. Let's go meet up with Iris. Hey, Iris. <laughs> you walk past uh, the eggshells, and Zern's foot is like just right there. Oh, uh, is starting to get like buried. Uh, uh, it's starting disgusting. to slowly get buried by the should sand. We, should we give his foot a proper burial? Absolutely I, not. Don't think so. Aren't there like uh, the we terror. can bring him back style things we can do with feet like that? Uh, yeah, you have like a piece of like a toe or something with somebody. You can, for what it's worth, I don't think his soul is exactly gone. Uh, I also am okay with not bringing him back. Should we take any of this goo? I've got a little on my spoon. Are you gonna it's got sand keep in it. it there, or should we like? It's you know, pretty dried on I, now. I, I don't know that it's coming. I can put off. it in my flask, and, and we could have some some orange black shell nightmare goo. Huh? Anybody I, want to keep some? I don't know if we should be messing around with that stuff. I mean, I, it's I mean, interesting. I looked at it, but I'm not very you know magical. It is like, glowing. Don't touch it, and then touch your mouth or face or eyes or anything or genitals. Oh jeez. Um, <laughs> I will look at the goo. Like, <laughs> Do I? Uh, uh, thinking as magically as possible, get a sense that this could have any value whatsoever, or is it really just viscera that is left behind from the truly powerful entity that emerged? Make an arcana check for me. I would happily do that. (laughs) Here, it's gonna be better than mine was. Uh, let's go for a 26, please. Uh, it very clearly... uh, is has some sort of lingering fiendish demonic um, taint, uh, and so, I knew you were gonna like that. Uh, and so I think that there, <laughs> and so I think that that you could that what you would do with it, I don't know, or like what you would it would be up to you. But very clearly, there is some sort of of, of power or, or fiendish. It's not just just yeah, as a consistency it's not just of fear. <laughs> uh, you know, smarter men than me probably would say, "Why didn't you grab the such and such?" So I'm just gonna <laughs> make a. This seems like a rare thing, right? This doesn't happen fucking every day. I'm gonna take some. <laughs> make a sleight of hand check to see how careful you are. Oh my god! Uh, Caprice, I truly value your inquisitive nature. Should we twist it? Should we twist it? No, I'm holding the talon and I'm totally fine with it. So I'm sure that if I get intoxicated by this nightmare flu fuel, that uh, everything will be fine with a nine. I'd like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, yeah. God. Uh-oh. Man, it's saving throw city over here. Your, your uh, skull inverts itself and your outsides are now your insides and vice versa. Eleven. Oh, God. Um, oh, you oh. scoop. Uh, you're scooping, and you're getting a lot of this goo. <laughs> I'm just scooping and scooping, and be like, "Oh, look at my finger!" <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Without thinking, as you absentmindedly do that, you <gasps> as you hear in your brain that, and you uh, you feel an incredibly intense pain in your head and you you think back you in in a split second you feel as if if you think to all the things that you've kept secret all of the things that you've attempted to keep incredibly guarded and the things that you've even that you've revealed in 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 your dealings with the Raven Queen. You feel incredibly naked now. You feel impossibly that that incredibly vulnerable, incredibly naked, incredibly transparent, as if 
anything that you've, your entire life, every single secret that you've ever harbored are no longer secrets, at least to you. Just, you guys don't have to look at me like that. I'm just scooping it up. <laughs> I, are you all right? What's happening? What's going on with your face? You guys, you guys know all, all, all the things about me. That's all. I just, you know, never, never really. Uh-huh. What is he talking about? I, I don't know, but I don't think you should be touching that anymore. Just finish up what you're doing. Clean yourself up and get away from that stuff. It can't stop be good for you. Your yeah, face. yeah, stop. <laughs> No, 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 stop! <laughs> no, they still be big! No, there's not like orange goo on his wrist, on his face. There's some in your hair. When they do those like sneeze camera trackers, yeah, like, yeah. now it's on the food. Now it's on, on everyone's hands. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, did I do I did I get a like a table no? You got yeah, yeah you got like a very sizable vat of goo. Right. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like some Nickelodeon slime. I'll pop it into my bag and then I'll I'll push my hands and sleeves into the sand and try to do my best to friction free the the goop, which almost certainly is rubbing. Yeah, no. Now you just have sandy goopy hands. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the thing? Can you do do the the, 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 the can you do the thing? Yeah, I have uh, I have since transferred Milo to my back, so I'm holding him like yeah, yeah, yeah like oh, yeah, he's, he's 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 gripping, so yeah, very. And, and with a wave of my hand, I will press the digitate or attempt to press the digitate this this. I would say you are able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Of him and like it'll just. It takes of, a good amount, a good number of tries. It'll just start to dissipate and fall off your your flesh. Uh, thank oh, you. that reminds me. The, the, the dagger! I, I didn't see it anywhere. I didn't grab it. Oh, it's right here. I got it on uh, my hip here. Oh, it's covered uh, in goo. No, I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> uh, uh, do, do you mind? Uh, I will warn you, it's uh, extra thrummy. And uh, I will what take, does that mean? I will pick it up by the handle, and then I will turn Christmas it. saving throw. Ooh. <laughs> Natural 20. Yeah. Oh, oh that's well. <gasps> Twist of dread. He, oh boy, oh, he tried that. Oh, that's boy. beautiful. I will claim one of your tokens. One in 400. One in 400. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Well used, Mike. Eight. Uh, <laughs> you do not give it up as uh, you all see very clearly a to what to, uh, Toa had seen, a flash of the circular white eyes and then very he returns and, and you do not want to, you do not want to give it to, to, to Felix. I, I got it on my hip right here. It's fine. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa, fine. whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening to you? What was that? I saw him do that earlier. What? Your eyeballs. Look, I know you guys know everything about me. I get it. All right? It's fine. It's fine. I'm still a good person. I'm trying to do the right thing. I, I didn't want to keep secrets from you. I, I swear. Is he the only one that touched the dagger? I touched it. Did you react like that? No, it, uh, I even touched it by the blade, which apparently you, I'm learning you're not supposed <laughs> to do. And I was fine. It was just a PC. It was just a, a dagger. Right? I didn't feel anything, right? No. Caprice. I need my dagger back. I know, but uh, uh, perhaps at a later time. We, we've got you're, you're you're carrying Milo. It could be dangerous. What if his leg slips and he's, he's his shin? Tala, can, can you give it to me then? Take Caprice. the dagger back. I'm very comfortable. I grab him by the vest. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna attempt to just take the dagger off his belt. And if you resist, I, I absolutely yeah, would. Uh, I, if, if what, I'm sorry, if what's Caprice. happening is yeah. happening. I'm sorry, Caprice. We can't let you have the dagger. Uh, what are you? Uh, it's a contest of athletics. acrobatics or athletics. It's yeah. just athletics. Just athletics. Outstanding. This is great. Or <laughs> <laughs> acrobatics. You're trying to slip out. If you're trying to dodge out. Um, uh, Fifteen. Eleven at my best. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. you know, you, I, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, I killed that mother. I, I, you know, thing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Caprice? I saw that. Oh, just, uh, it, it, do I feel different as soon as I'm gonna my body, whip him or around am I going after violence. it? Do I suddenly feel like uh, I need to possess this this uh, this uh, item? Ooh! One what? more Christmas saving throw. What the me. hell? Uh, twenty-one. Wow! I would say that you feel. Uh, I don't know how to say this. You feel like Gollum. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I'm you just feel like say, you see my <laughs> no other way to say this. And as you see, as for a brief moment, uh, Caprice, I oh no, it's actually not Gollum, it's Bilbo. <laughs> I should like to hold it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so basically Caprice does that as he lunges forward and there's a flash, but once again your sheer force of will pulls you back knowing that this is Toa, this is my friend. This... I'm gonna hold it over my head. Yep. I would try to like you got grab, you know, grab, grab him by the jacket and pull him back a little. I really want that! Maybe I should hold it! I shouldn't, I shouldn't. I, oh god, I want it! Get a hold of yourself! Something is just. Uh, I'm gonna give him a little, not right, like, a not right. Smack, smack. Do I take a smack, smack damage? <laughs> You, you, actually, point of bludgeoning you actually get flurry yeah. of blows to death. Yeah. <laughs> you get bitsied. <laughs> you <Classic. laughs> Why do you want it so bad? What is happening? I'm gonna lift his eye, like pry his eyelids back and like check his eyes. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, make a medicine check. Uh, I will look up. For how far away is Caprice from me? You guys are all We We started a walk to you. So yeah, so you're within like probably ten, <laughs> five to ten feet. Oh, okay. Well, then. I'm just shoving my dirty Good like egg, egg hands into his eyes and I get a three. <laughs> a three? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he just looks like Caprice. Yeah, it seems fine to me, I guess, but chill out. I'm I trying. I'm trying. I don't like this at all. Something's wrong with the dagger or Caprice or both. I feel like you should probably keep that away from me. I suddenly... I didn't want to let it go. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't feel that way. Should we all hold it and see if we feel the same way? I don't know if that's a good idea either. I'm getting, I'm a little apprehensive to even touch it myself. What's your dagger? I know. And unfortunately I need it. Well, I'll, I'll keep you safe in case anything happens. I'll be ready to like restrain him uh, with my hand on his shoulder. And you hold the dagger. And you look. And make an arcana check at advantage for me. Extra thrummy, though, right? <laughs> what does that mean? It's you thrummy. keep saying that. It's very thrummy. 29? Let's fucking go. You Thank can God see that you hadn't noticed before that it seems to be bloodstained. And it's the... And it seems to have a strange refraction, and, and, and although it, at first glance it looks like it's a pristine, clean blade, it seems to be have its that it, that where the blade had split, the flesh of the Raven Child infused with Thar's Doom. There's that strange kind of reddish, blackish uh, mottled to it that you can see at first glance, and it almost kind of gyrates, and you almost. And as you examine it, you listen, you can hear very faintly as you as you attempt to examine it with that roll. Uh, What's the matter? There's something wrong with it. I mean like seriously wrong with it. There's you some find sort of me, is it bent? Horrific energy coming off of it. I can hear those whispers like deep in the back of my head. Is it because it's covered in blood? Maybe you can you just try cleaning it? I attempt to clean it. You're the thing, you're the thing. <laughs> <laughs> My hand gets blown off. Uh, you realize as you, as you clean it, it's, it's just your blade. And like, it's only when you really focus on it and you can just see what you, ex you, you can just only see the the the, the taint and the, the blood, the, the, the sting on this. Blade the stained from what sh it should look like, from what you're from your knowledge of the weave, it's incredibly subtle. It is not coming out. It's been changed like fundamentally. It's not just like there's blood on it. There's it's like the blood is a part of it now. Oh no! Can you still use it? Again, I'm like hesitant to try. Well, I mean, you need to do a lot of different spells, don't you? Yeah. Oh no. Let me just... Just do something little. Just a, a little baby spell to yeah, start. Yeah, test it out. I'm pretty tapped out. I mean, if you're hesitant, I'm happy to take it off of your hands. No! <laughs> no! I'm not gonna fall for I'm that! Sorry, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm uh, sorry! Caprice, come here. <laughs> yes, Iris? Can I help I'm gonna you? reach up and touch his leg. I'm not even gonna look at him. I'm gonna cast Greater Restoration. Oh! Nice! <laughs> nice. 
Nice. How does that? Can you read that spell for me? Uh, oh. It does reverse um, a cursed item attunement. So I'm hoping mm. that it would. Oh! Uh, would reverse <laughs> his inclination towards the, the blade. Can One I help curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item. Uh, reduction to an ability score, reducing the target's hit point maximum. One effect that charmed or petrified the target. Um, it could reduce their exhaustion level. Um, it undoes it undoes a debilitating effect. Clever, clever girl. Clever girl. Clever girl. I love clerics. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let Anubis watch over you, Caprice, and stop being so greedy. We have things to do. I, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't I don't know where that came from. As I soon feel... as soon as Iris touches your leg, I need you to make a charisma saving throw at advantage. Ooh. Uh let me have a twenty-three for four. A twenty-three. Um as soon as that happens. You all see Caprice's eyes turn into circular white lamps, effectively. Oh, gosh. As Caprice, in a moment, you see a a flash, repeated visions. You see the blade... The, the 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 Talon Guard dagger that's that's flashing and it's now undulating the uh, the refracty biz that you had said is now c- it's consuming it. You hear the the and also like to get rid of his astigmatism. Oh, yeah, that fixes it too. Uh, and and LASIK. Less you happen, hear, more happen. You hear the uh, the babbling of Thar's doom just briefly as you see the blade, and then suddenly surrounding the blade is uh, black iron wrought. You see the shape of a scorpion, a crown, and then you see then in a flash, uh, it all turns to red, as it then you, your your mind pans out as you see it all encased in a ruby Mm. and in a flash you are suddenly returned back to all of your friends and that will that desire to that perhaps could have gotten you try to steal it very stealthily uh Mm. later on has now been removed from you uh at least for now in case we'll see what happens if you touch the dagger again (laughs) thank you iris you're welcome please don't touch felix's thing I probably should stay away from most magical items moving forward. <laughs> yes, that might be wise. But if you find yourself in a similar situation, you know where to find me. I'm just going to sit down next to Iris and sort of like... <laughs> Would you like a back massage? You give those? Sure. You'll do? <laughs> sure. He's undergone something quite strenuous. Then and I will... I, ask, I will say no. <laughs> You say, oh, okay, maybe in like five minutes and I'm busy, but uh, soon. But it's never soon. Yes, that's true. Um, and I will um, I will not retract my claws. I will actually push them forward and I will start massaging into his back claws out. That's okay. It's good. It's good. Ah, do you like this? I was told back home that I give the best massages. Uh-huh. Who told you that? Oh, everyone. Uh-huh. Right there, that's good. Of course, I'm the princess. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we'll do. Uh, I'll endure yeah, it. Valeska, the pain, the pain you're able to place yeah. down gently. Uh, I would say if you want one and two of like kind of make up like a little makeshift camp in this time, if you want to, that's fine. Um, you're able to do that very easily. I make a baby Bjorn and just strap her to my chest while I uh, nice. massage Caprice. Isn't she an adult woman though? Valeska? Yeah. She's, she trying to she's a child. Oh, my oh no, the, the, the bird. The, it was a, a little small bird. <laughs> I love the misunderstanding. Oh, I completely <laughs> thought that Valeska had suddenly become an adult woman, big style, with Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite the twist. You see Tom Hanks in the sand. <laughs> and this campaign has completely changed. I completely missed that. Yeah, okay, no, Valeska's for... still a child. Bjorn um, and I need you to make... I need you to make... It's all good. Uh, one intelligence check for me, just straight, as you as as you get the massage and as you ruminate back on the babbling. I imagine that you heard. I'm putting things together with a seven. Oof. Nope. The babbling just sounded like babbling. Hmm. Yeah, Toa, hold hold Milo for a second. Oh, okay. Give me, buddy. I'm Toa, by the way. Is he conscious? Uh, he's like in and out of consciousness. 
and um and he he uh says mm, ah, you're a rock man <laughs> yeah i'm 40 percent rock <laughs> very good <laughs> Well, just, just take it easy. Just relax. You have a lot of recovering to do, but I've got you, so don't worry. And I'm just going to, like, I'm going to cradle him and be as gentle as I can. Um, All right. I, I, you know, I wonder if, uh, you know, whatever Zern turned into and flew off as, I can only assume that it's of, you know, the big guy that we don't want to talk about. I got to wonder if now whatever he did to split the kids apart, uh, is now reacting with, you know, your blood and legacy. Right. I'd speculate it has to do with why I'm no longer burning in a pit of hell anymore. Do, would Toa be smart enough to connect the eyes with the eyes of uh, Asmodeus? Intelligence yeah. check. You have a pin on your jacket that says "I love Andy." Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a natural one, and this one says, do, "Did we ever see him?" <laughs> yeah, we saw him. Right? Yeah, yeah you, sure you saw the shadow, the silhouette of him. He appeared in Rajani's chamber yeah. after Caprice was resurrected. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you had just if he had just been described to us, or if yeah. he actually like physically saw. We him. saw like the silhouette with the eyes yes. and the horns going yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, right? okay, the spiraling goat horns. Yeah, yeah. you got one. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, oh. Stay here. Give me one moment, and I'll ready the dagger in my hand like I always do. And I'd like to concentrate, and in a flash, misty step thirty feet away and try to fire off a fireball. Okay. Just like out into the desert. Okay. Goodbye, Strapon. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> The chat will kill you if you do that, though, right? Just be aware. I'm expending two our spell slots show. to see if I can make the knife work. And okay. I'm specifically using fireball because it requires material components. I need you to roll oh, two D100s. <gasps> do two D100 oh, rolls. Oh, boy. You're going to come out of the other side of the Misty Step looking like a Cronin. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? And then I just, like, rip up Inside my character out, sheet. like the Galaxy Quest teleporter thing. <laughs> <laughs> the jaunt from Stephen King. Uh, hold on, give me one second. I'm going to oh, get to Because I have different colored uh, D100, so I can roll them both at the same time. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, no, fancy, huh? That is fancy. Here we go. Can we pump the jams a little bit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, if, it to something, yeah, if, it, if it matters the order, red is first and yellow is second. Okay. Uh, eighty-one for red. I think that was a zero. Oh shit. And a one hundred. And a one hundred. Okay. Oh, both. Both. Lord. Uh, go off without a hitch. You blast forward and you blink forward and you uh, you send these fireballs and and you know it seems you can um, every time you use it to cast a spell I will say you're the so I definitely get a sense that something is not right. absolutely yeah you you and after that I would say that and from the colors and the energy this is very Sometimes clearly anything. tainted by the blood of Thar's doom uh, I but guess your spells work. So they would see me like blip away 30 feet and then a. <laughs> and what you see heck? a charred camel. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that to me, Mike! Uh, no, the, the sand is turned into leave. molten glass. I'm and the camel is yeah. giving the thumbs up that you don't need to do. After the, the spells go off. I will just slowly start to walk back towards the group and take my time getting back. You're to them. taking Strapon back to Avantress, and that's going to create a whole world of problems. <laughs> you can go try to find him. Why? Because one of his breaths could kill forty commoners. <laughs> yes. That is the next campaign I run. Strapon is the big the BBEG. <laughs> Great. Great. I'm I'm there for it. Um, yeah, just take my time and get back to them. Okay, yeah, it's a short walk. Yeah, but I, I you yeah. know I blink thirty feet away. Yeah. Oh, it works. Well, something's definitely wrong with the dagger. Like, permanently wrong. Oh, no. Why? I, I, it worked. You, you know, you blinked. You it, were over there. And it worked, but go. every time I cast a spell, I heard that horrible whispering and gibbering. And... So it's not just me. I guess not. No, you're just mentally weaker than Felix is. No offense. I, well, I mean, maybe, but I don't know. I might have just gotten lucky. I, I, I hesitate to even... 
cast my spells. Who knows what could happen if I keep doing it over and over again and keep getting exposed to that horrific babbling. I mean, how long, how much can my brain take? So, okay, just take it easy. There's no need to panic. <laughs> we just need to find a way to get out of here. Maybe it's just because we're in this horrible place. Maybe when we get back to Avantress, it, it won't be that way. I mean, maybe. There's there's no way to know. Uh, and, and Did you tell try. us about the blood you saw in it? Yeah. Or maybe it's because that thing was used to cut the two children apart, and it is now infused with the blood of the raven child at their height, and it will be eternally a cursed item. And that's in which certainly case, another option. We need to find a way to get a new spell focus for Phoenix. Oh, I know as a cleric, we can, like clean that one really well, like a like a like a mystic clean. Mr. Clean. We, we need Mr. Clean. <laughs> you do mean Major Clean? Major Clean. <laughs> I, I love that. We could do a whole shopping episode. We could go to, back to Avantress. We could go to different cities. We decide use. what you want. We need Major one Clean on temples all the time. I really like, like the know. magic erasers. I feel oh. like that's exactly what we need. It's it just is, the magic eraser. It is the way that we clean the hieroglyphs. Oh. Nothing um. gets them more clean. But it's still gentle. It's they're majorly clean. I really want to buy. At and least. if you wet them, you can get sharpie out of anything. <laughs> that's really impressive. Well, yes, right, that's almost impossible. As long as I can spend three to four hours buying as many tiny little mirrors as possible, yeah, um, at least five or six hundred. I think I'd be good. I don't I'd think what that's do enough. you need five or six hundred mirrors for? Uh, oh, I don't know. I've always just wanted five or six hundred. You're tiny so mirrors. vain. You probably think this song is about you. <laughs> That's great. Don't you? <laughs> I'm not, don't you? I don't. I, I don't you? One person in the world. That, don't you? Ah. Don't you? <laughs> I, I, well, no, I just, I don't know. I thought they'd be cool to like look at and have and take them around, you know, in a bag. Wouldn't they all just break? Oh, I guess I didn't think about it. And then that. if you trip and fall on the bag, you'll be impaled by the shards of 500 mirrors. Can and you not imagine to mention, how like, much bad luck I was going to say, be? like, 32,000 years of bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's a terrible idea. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do that at all, then. Just get, you know, one reasonably sized mirror that's good for travel. Wait, yes, exactly genius. like a compact mirror that you can open up and look at yourself. We take the mirrors, and then when we're fighting a bad guy, we throw the mirrors to them. They break the mirrors. They're the ones who's fucked with bad luck. Huh? <laughs> That's actually a brilliant idea. That's a big sack. If breaking mirrors actually brings bad luck, and mm. I don't think there's any science behind that mm. at all. There's only one way to tell, and I do have a silver mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Caprice, you have enough bad luck without the breaking of a mirror. Yeah, you've got like the worst bad luck I've ever seen out of anybody I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the point still stands we I, need to find you a new focus yeah you're right it's, there's, there's a chance that this will never undo itself I mean I can't imagine focusing my magic through anything else though well that was important to you for certain reasons what's important to you now That's what's something question. that makes you think of Milo or all you've accomplished or your mother Wow, this something is a, with heavy emotional weight. This is a big decision. I don't know if I can just like jump right into it. it Take some time to think about it. We, we don't, don't need to get you a new focus right now. I don't think we're teleporting out of here this evening. Right. I think we at least could use a night's rest. Yeah, and in the meantime, I'll just go easy on using my magic. So let's not get into any, you know, tussles. In and the we meantime. should really allow the children a night to recuperate. So I'm thinking temple full of wonderful bathwater and delicious food. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that I was like, nice. we're going to sleep on these bricks? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just do it like kind of away from all of this, like the egg at least? I would hope that we would maybe walk a while until none of this is inciting. Yeah, I could maybe use a, a good walk to clear my head a little. Not too far, just far enough away from the egg. Because if I yeah, make the fort. bread and water now, it will be demonic yoki bread. Yeah, we don't want that. It feels disrespectful to leave his foot like that. I really think we should bury it. Would you it's like, like to mummify it already. and Just carry it around it. in a sack? And then when Milo's awake, say we have the petrified foot of your father. And a like we did for Valeska. For oh, sorry, Valeska. Go back to sleep. <laughs> um, it's a lot of his uh, shin too. 
Mm. No, we, we should definitely just leave it. The desert will take care of it. And besides, he's not even really dead. It would know, feed one just... of the creatures that wanders around. He made us the wings of the raven, you know? He made us who we are. He did a lot of things. He's also a liar. But he saved the world! <laughs> maybe. Potentially. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. He bought us some time is really what I think happened. Or he could have left well enough alone. <coughs> I guess he kind of got double-crossed by, you know, P-Man. Who would have seen that coming? <laughs> no, we certainly didn't. But the point is... Why didn't we see that coming? Well, I think we... We did see it, it was coming. Impossible. Oh, I didn't see it coming. We were well, being you're, sarcastic. You're perpetually <laughs> drunk, so... <laughs> well, that's no excuse. <laughs> what? <laughs> I say we leave it. Maybe a uh, vulture or something will come around and uh, peck at it. That seems very appropriate. <laughs> yes. It does? <laughs> Why? I think he means with <laughs> concerns and, 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 you know. I think we allow nature to run its course on this one. And yeah, maybe it balances them out. Can we tell if it, like, what side foot it was? Uh, his right foot. What side arm was he? Missing? Left. But we regrew that. Oh. <coughs> well, you know. Well, okay. Basically, I'm not taking that foot. That's all I have to say. Yeah, let's just start walking. And, okay. and put as much distance between us and this place as we can. Okay. What way should we walk? Um, north? Yeah, I don't really care. Why don't you pull out your map, Caprice, and figure out where we're at and tell us where we should go? No, I think we should start walking south because we know that at least the rest of the Dread Domain is in that direction. All right. And maybe so we we'll can go flag south. down the, Sphen the Sphenix? The Sphinxes. The oh. Sphinxes, uh, maybe. I the Shynixes. The Shynixes? That's right. Yes. Oh. Yeah, south is fine by me. Sure. I don't need a map to know what fucking south is. It's that way. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, if the sun comes up, then, well, it's straight up, so. <laughs> it's like perfectly moon. Where are we? <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Mm hmm. If we go south, we'll, we'll either go this way or that way. Those are completely opposite directions. Well, I don't know if the map is upside down or not. <laughs> you wouldn't label the top of it map? You didn't bother to put a compass rose on the map when you made it? You totally screwed this up. I just put the landmarks down. We were flying. It was really windy. It was hard. Yeah, you were really in a hurry. <laughs> Let's just walk, fucking, whatever direction we want to go in. It's fine. Well, the direction that you think is south is the direction we should go in. I'll turn, and I'll start walking. I'm Pretty cradling sure Milo. I need to use a little wizard's room. Uh, <laughs> your friends are able to guide you south, um, and you... Uh, you, I would say you walk for several hours and finally you're able to get out of the sandstorm. You leave it behind you and it is only um, probably another 30 minute hour long walk to reach uh, that shaded rock formation where uh, Felix had teleported you all here who knows how long ago. Um, it's difficult to tell in this strange domain, not to mention so close to the Black Pyramid and Thar's Dune. And I would say that you're exhausted. Uh, to press on any further would require an exhaustion roll, but if you're willing to, to stay the night, you're able to, to make camp. You oh, yeah. see the, um, uh, I would say that across uh, the whole Dread Domain, as you come out, this is a bit of a, on a higher elevation, you see very far in the <clears throat> distance, the tip of, um, the now flattened tip of Pharaoh's Ew, Rest, gross. the Great Golden Pyramid. Uh, <laughs> it's like a worn down no. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Great Golden crack. Pyramid <laughs> and Pharaoh's Ew. Rest. And like there seem to be uh, cloud, like, a lot of activity, clouds of, it's like uh, of flying uh, undead creatures and the like. Uh, there does seem to be activity. You see some of the, the creatures of the desert, some shambling undead, but they seem to pay you no mind. Um, as you're able to make camp, if you care to. We do care to. Can you make the the thing? Please make the thing. I can't. I'm so tired. I can't even remember the word for it. My boots are full of sand. Yes, <laughs> yes. I make the thing. <laughs> you. Oh, thank God, the thing. 
Uh, and it's like fucking Cave of Wonders. It rises out of the sand, uh, but it's a beautiful temple to Anubis. It doesn't look particularly out of place in this dread domain. It's uh, the first time we've made it here. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that looks different, it's not quite to the same massive scale as everything here in Hark here, and it seems to be it's a bigger. lot. And it's it's not nearly <laughs> as uh, puts into shame. It's not. It's not. Uh, Iris is not compensating. Uh, <laughs> it's been turned ninety degrees, so it's just a big cube that comes out of the ground. <laughs> Uh, it's not nearly as weathered and worn as everything here in this dread Yeah, domain. no, it's immaculate. It's immaculate, it's pristine. And, and thank it's you, significantly it, larger. It's Gemini. Welcome. Thank you for the Welcome. follow. Welcome. Thank you okay. for the follow. Hello. Uh, and you see the, the glorious temple to Anubis before you. Oh. Uh, uh, so it's like the best thing ever. I can smell the incense. Oh, we can take a bath. <sighs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to soak for a while and think about our predicament. I'm going to take the bathiest bath that ever bathed. Alright, Milo. Um, we're going to spend the night in there, so um, I'll make sure that you have a nice, warm, comfy bed, and I'll let you down and make sure that... I mean, unless... I mean, Felix, uh, should I give him to you? or? Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll find a place to, to put him, and I'll keep an eye on him, and, and we'll just get him food and water when, he, when he's feeling up to it, and, and just keep an eye on him. I got a lot of studying to do anyway. Okay. Let's go. I think Honors has to open the doors, right? The rest of us don't have access? <laughs> or is that a thing? I can't remember. I just, when I cast it, I determine who can oh, utilize so it. Yeah, there's, 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 yeah, I did, yeah. If you walk in, we're just... <laughs> calling in the doors. Um, no, there's, there's no, there's, there's no <clears throat> gate. It's just like this beautiful archway, and there's oh, they're it's like open. It's, really open it's an open courtyard up to this temple. It's very. But the beautiful. temperature, be, as soon as you step across the magical threshold, the temperature like, okay. becomes exactly. It's perfect. It's yeah. way less arid. It's very pleasant. There's a. It's like a. It's a really nice like seventy three with a slight breeze. Oh, perfect. Mm. Perfection. <sighs> I will find. Because there are rooms, there are like mm -hmm. little bedrooms, yeah, right? Yeah, bedrooms. I'll, I'll find and uh, my throne room, uh, a small room, and I'll lay Milo in a bed, um, and I'll put all my stuff down with Milo in the room. But I'm gonna take the dagger uh, and like wrap it up in cloth mm -hmm. and keep it like in a pocket somewhere. Like I don't want to be wearing it out in okay. the open anymore. I yeah. want to like I'm I'm worried about this thing. So I wrap it up in some cloth and then just keep it on my person at all times. Yeah. Yeah, you do that very easily and and it, and uh as you wrap it up in cloth, you kind of hear the and then it dissipates and then it's quiet. <sighs> um should we put Valeska in a different room? Well, yes, probably. I'm sure she would like her privacy. Do we all like all have our own rooms? Like two beds to a room? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's whatever you want. Sharing with you. I mean, it's a temple. You just sleep where you want. There's I'm sleeping in the back. <laughs> wow, there's a ball pit. <laughs> wow. The <Where>? trampoline, <clears throat> bouncy castle. Check it out. Oh, is there a slip and slide? Well, it's not a magic ma magnificent mansion, so it's not like it's tailored to like every possible need we have. But they're right. similar. Okay. There, there's so no there, there are places no for you to, to sleep. There are place. There's food to eat. Oh, Pringles. I'm gonna find like a a buffet table <gasps> of grapes and whatever else. And there's there's on it. hummus, hummus. Oh, of yeah, course. God, I'm great. gonna drag it over to one of the like pristine pools. Kick the legs out from the there table. There are wooden so it's skewers the of uh, this beautiful yellow chicken and piles of saffron mm. rice. Mm. Uh, delicious uh, delicious. Uh, cold yogurt sauce. Mm -hmm. it's uh, you enjoy that by the pool, it's, Lofty. It's vaguely, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very Mediterranean. <laughs> it's not even vaguely. It's not even vaguely. It's, it's like it's super Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Look at all these dates. I want to find a you know, hot spring, bath, place, whatever, and soak in it and just set the dagger wrapped in cloth on the edge of the, the yeah. tub or this spring, whatever it would be in the temple, and just soak and soak until I am mostly pruned. Okay. Yeah, you're able to do that. It's incredibly relaxing. You haven't, you all haven't had a chance to breathe in a very long time. And, um... <laughs> 
<laughs> I twitch says lies, it's all fancy feast. <laughs> oh no! It's actually just cat food. The gigantic can opener on the side. I mean, the, the protein per ounce is just unbelievable. It's so Highly funny. energizing food. That no. is so Eight funny. Tables, just a tin can. <laughs> well, it's hundreds of tin cans. <laughs> I'm thinking it's like gigantic. Oh yeah, yeah. one massive tin can. Yeah. Meat pit. <laughs> And with a giant electric can there's, opener. Yeah. There's, a, there's a heavy cream fountain for you to just lap up. Oh, God. <laughs> Hope no, you're not lactose I'm intolerant. going back to the rice room. <laughs> the Mediterranean room. There's a giant cracker like Aristocats. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I fill up and I join everyone else in the, uh, what I can only assume is like an open bath area. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, beneath the palm trees in the night sky. As you settle into the tub, I move the dagger to the other side of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 that, good, that's good. It's not that I don't trust you, it's no, for your own I safety. No, I don't trust me, that's fine, you do you. I'll get in as well. Um, and I'll like fold up my towel and like try to put it behind. Oh, we should just do this every night, Aris. Like, can you do this every night? Well, yes, but then I wouldn't have access to some of my strongest abilities. Yeah, this feels pretty strong to me. <laughs> I kind of agree. But I mean, no, we should use it to, like, protect and save, you know, kill evil things. But I mean, if, you know... Like if stress. You stress is so evil. We should kill it. <laughs> that, that's well, stress true. is the leading killer of most people in the United States. The what? I don't know. I made that statistic up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded really good until you filled it with a fictional thing. Yeah. Yes, well, I don't. I read the name in a book somewhere. Mm. Hmm. I'm still not quite sure how to to spell it. Stotes, or mm. to pronounce it, Stotes. Stotes. Yes. Oh, it's probably United Stotes. Oh, United. Oh, United. Of course, United, United Stotes. <laughs> Oh, what a strange and mystical place. I'm sure it's a dread domain of some kind. Mm, yeah, that fits. So, I mean, have you heard from Anubis at all since all of this happened? I don't know. Yeah, like, what's up I with I feel that like guy? I've been asleep for the past few days. Has Iris heard from Anubis at all? <laughs> no, he's like, hey, I'm going back to fucking Arcadia. I'll see ya. <laughs> he's like, basically, he's, good luck! He's probably recuperating. Well, I'm just thinking about those sphinxes that serve the, him, you The know? Shinixes? The Shinixes that serve him, They probably know? did. Why? Why, why, why do they you be... think they would be dead? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, they sounded kind of ominous, almost like once our mission is over, we will cease to exist. Or maybe I just did imagined they say that, that in my own brain. That's not the impression I got at all. Mm. Um, well, I can't see what their worth would be now that Anubis isn't here anymore. Well, you know, flying would be cool. <clears throat> sure, but lots of things can fly. You want to fly? Flies can fly. I mean, Caprice can fly. No, you just settle down. <laughs> Maybe take a rest. I am resting. Uh, Nikki, the temple allows you to determine, like, beasts, <clears throat> like, types of creatures that can enter, right? Mm-hmm. What are you allowing to enter? Just us. Okay. <laughs> Get fucked, horrors beyond our comprehension. Right? Oh, and well, us a, a and Dread and, I was going to say, and road. Strapon. Strapon okay. could enter the temple if he wanted to. And, uh, well, what, what kind of what kind of beast are Shinixes? I think they're just... Monstrosities? Yeah, yes. I don't want to let monstrosities <laughs> in, unfortunately, so... They can, they can wait outside the gate. Well, I mean, I think that they can enter. I think I just... Hold on. You can name them. Yeah, you can name them. I mean, I could name them. Name them. <laughs> if only I remembered their name. <laughs> yeah, there was Beavis and Butthead. I'm sure it's that in would here be somewhere. so funny. Cletus and <laughs> some folks will never lose a toe, but then again, some folk will like Cletus, the slack jawed yokel. Uh-huh. <laughs> what the hell? hell? <laughs> Am I inspired? Yeah, only you and the creatures you designate when you cast a spell can open or close the door. The moon. So you could designate Chapon and the two phoenixes, or shiny phoenixes. That would shine, be shine The temple opposes types of creatures you choose. Um, choose one or more of the following: celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead. All of them. If a creature of the chosen type attempts to enter the temple, that creature must make a charisma saving throw and a failed save. They can't enter the temple for 24 hours. Oh Even if the creature can enter the temple, the magic here hinders it. Mm. Uh, oh, so that's the point. 
Got it. So they can still enter if they pass. Well, so no. So basically what it's saying is only the people that I allow can enter it. But like, let's say I said, oh, um, the Sphinxes could come in, but they're Celestials. When they try, when they open the door, because they're Celestials, if I've said Celestials can't come in, they have to roll for it to see if they can still enter. Does that make sense? It seems like you can force your way in if you people can s- designate to open the door or close so it. So it says only you and any creature you designate when you cast a spell can open or close the door. Okay. Mm. But if the door's open and they try to walk in, they have to make the spell safe. Yes. And if they pass, they can come in, but they're still hindered no matter what. Yes. And so then it says. Um, no, it's not, Mike. <laughs> So even if the creature can enter the temple, the magic there hinders it. it Hindered in what way? Yeah. Whenever it makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw inside the temple, it must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the d4. Oh shit! It's baned, basically. Yes. That makes Mm. sense. Well, that makes your roll get instantly massive. But if the door's shut, they can't even attempt to get in. Right. So. Did um, we remember to shut the door? <laughs> um, in addition, right the in. sensors created by divination spells can't appear inside the temple. Creatures within can't be targeted by divination spells. Whenever we gain hit points inside of it, um, we regain additional hit points equal to our wisdom modifier. Um, mm, so wow. if we were like fighting in here and had like healing rolling... It is made from opaque magical that. force that extends into the... Imp- in- uh, ethereal plane, thus blocking ethereal travel into the temple's interior. Wow. Nothing can physically pass through the temple's exterior. It can't be dispelled by dispel magic. An anti-magic field has no effect on it. A disintegrate spell destroys the temple instantly. Oh, jeez. Oh, my. I'll, I'll be careful. <laughs> <That's okay. Whoa. laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> this is awful. Let's let's all vow not to read our spells to Mike ever. I don't know about any of that. So this is so pleasing. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, I love what Ready to Nap says. Hey, did you guys order pizza? I'm letting them in because they ordered a pizza. <laughs> you you realize you left the door open and then you see a skeleton. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? <laughs> We're not paying for this. Um, so I guess we need to figure out how to get home. I mean, I like the idea of you teleporting us home. Yeah, I'm like flipping through my book above the water. The water's like up the chest level. I'm flipping through. Well, uh, from what I understand, if, you know, this is, it's, I mean, it's, it's basically exactly the same as a teleport spell. So, I, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Really, it's the question of the material components that are going to be required, I guess. But ultimately, if we know of a teleportation sigil, the sigil sequence, you know, we, which we do, we've got several that we know of, we can go directly to it, and it basically guarantees our arrival. So it's not even like me blindly pointing through space and time like I have been with the teleport spells. If there's a place we want to go, like back to Zentra, or, or uh, you know, anywhere that we know of a known teleportation sigil sequence, then we're good to go. So you have to use your knife? Well, I, I yes. can always. I can also cast this spell. Oh, oh, we should let her do it. No offense. You're probably really good at it, but you know, mine is slightly different, as the power is gifted to me, gifted to me by the celestial being. Yeah, and you know, I don't want his brain to explode. We a don't god. know what's going yes, to happen. A god, Anubis. <laughs> In case you were wondering. We know. Oh, Name well. drop, right? Ugh. <laughs> we, we've we've become very tight recently. You're basically no cap. <laughs> you, you get uh, <laughs> for real, for real. Fr, fr. Uh, you're basically as number two at this point. I mean, I didn't want to say the chat loud, but I don't think that there will be. Personally, any... it's not something I've ever done. I don't really feel comfortable with it. I've never done a teleportation magic at all. So I would prefer if Elix is the one that does it. Well, but and Anubis is very tired. I don't think he will, is the thing. He's incredibly smart. Much smarter than you. Well, I think in either scenario, we still need a small metal tuning yes, fork that, that, that's that was worth at least point. 250 gold if, pieces. If something, the if something <laughs> happened, <laughs> absolutely last resort, I could potentially do this magic. Last resort. Felix is really our first choice. And I say this simply because he has teleported us from space to space. Yeah, I know I, he I'm, I get easily distracted, and I don't want any of you to show up there without a head. Regardless of who casts a spell, it, does it have to be a metal tuning fork, or is it the 
musical resonance that matters. It oh. is a metal tuning. Yeah, the, the spell component says a, uh, a, a small metal, metal fork, fork mm-hmm. uh, that is, is attuned to the plane that you want to go to that's at least worth 200 feet. Do we know I the... I assume there's going to be some cool DM fiat involved. Do we know the tone that we need to, to hit? <clears throat> uh, can we make a fork? I can tune it. Oh, no, you don't you have your magical lucky tuning fork? No, I don't. Thank you. Uh... Oh. Yes, if you remember, it was destroyed. <laughs> yes, I was being guided by Glacia in order to steal a powerful magical item, and it was destroyed during the time. If you want to go back and <laughs> unpack that shit, I seem to be doing the same shit over and over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a long shot because Anubis is probably tired, but I could attempt to channel my connection with my with the divine to see if he would bestow upon us. A fork to return home. It's very, very, very low chance. Like, I'd have to hit 16 or below on a scale of 100. Mm. But it's worth a shot. And then if I could do that, Felix could then send us home in the morrow. Yep. And the good news is, once we have it, we'll have it forever. Provided nothing happens to it. And if we, for some reason, find ourselves away from Avantress, we have a way home. Hmm. So where do we want to go? To Ventress? No, oh, no, but point. more specifically. Like, I mean, we could. Oh, pick... oh, we could go to Neckbed. Oh, I could meet. I could. Oh, you know him already. I could introduce you to Daddy. Oh, that's oh I mean, we... we could go on a barge down the river. I could see Thomas. So we can go anywhere, uh, anywhere that we How want. How often can you cast this spell? Oh boy, uh, uh, like one time a day. Every single day, we could go to a new place. We could go to Galtica. No, I but can... we could go to Saket. Just keep in mind, if we're not aiming for an actual teleportation circle that we know of, oh. there's room for error. Well, I've seen one before, but I'm not really allowed in that area of the temple. Is error like we show up, like, you know, 100 miles away from our destination, or is error like we show up 100 miles underneath our destination? And so this is why Felix has to do the spell. Maybe both. Uh, so... I mean, I think we shouldn't forget the fact that, you know, Pazuzu consumed uh, an elder ancient god of of chaos and entropy um, and is now who knows where, uh, you know, there's like a solstice of some kind and he wants to end the world with all of his demon buddies, one of which is kind of a cool whale, you know, that's kind of cool. But other than that... I'm I'm also a bit concerned about what's going to happen to Sentra. I mean, like, their leader's gone. Oh, yeah. Koravakia might just fall into absolute chaos. What if you could be the new High General? No, 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 no. That's... I'm... I'm, I'm, First of all... Yes, I... I defected. And first of all, Felix belongs to us. Well, I just mean, like... We need need him. In case he needs, like, all the people around to do something. He orders us around all the time. And I'm not even in the military anymore. They, if, for all they know, most of them probably think that I'm a horrific traitor and deserter. I know that Caprice certain, is pardon more me, but... than enough trouble. He doesn't need all of Zentra to worry about. Well, if it's like a, you know, if it's like being a chief from where I'm from, then Milo would be the next high general. I mean, well, it doesn't work like that. Milo's here, but that's a great 12. point. He's just a little boy. Is he only twelve? Was it thirteen? Thirteen. Oh, yeah. close enough. Wow. What's I mean, 365 days? But then we could maybe puppet Milo from the shadows. <laughs> all right, now you're just getting <laughs> way off the rails here, aren't what you? If, uh, <laughs> what if P-Man went to Zentra? We really didn't come up with a better name. <laughs> what if Mr. pee <P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P
because the water got a little warmer just now. Did you now. guys piss in the water? No, I didn't. Did you? <laughs> it's no. already hot tub level and it got hotter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it just get colder? <laughs> <laughs> Lufty. I am hot blooded. <laughs> I mean, I'm devil blood. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it's hard to make a decision without really knowing like what's going on, you know? <clears throat> Can we somehow spy on P-Man? And like, see what he's doing. Can any Highly magic doubt types that. like? Oh. But, but but let's go back to to Caprice's theory. You want to try to disguise someone as Zern and send them into Zentra in an attempt to what? No, I, I was speculating. Do people in Zern know that in Zern, in Zentra know that Zern is dead? And anyone could assume How the role. They? How what if we they? get back to the city and Zern is there and we're like, oh my gosh, it's Mr. Peepy, um, Pizzles, whatever his name is. Uh, oh my gosh, it's him. And everyone's like, nah, it's cool. Look, everything's fine. I feel, and I might be wrong, but most leaders of state will have magic wielders at the at their disposal with things like true sight and things to be able to discern deceptions. Uh, it would be absolutely ridiculous to have someone leading an entire portion of a country and so easily deceived, you see. I uh, don't know about that. Yeah. I, I feel like if I showed up as Zern and, and, and the people who are supposed to be my trusted magic spellcasters came up to me and they were like, all right, let's do the Zone of Truth thing and let's do the Truth Sight thing, that would feel uh, 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 weirdly reversed. Use your magical uh, energy elsewhere. <gasps> well, well, normally with true sight, for most entities, you, it's not something you cast. You have it. I have an idea. What if we call him Pizzle Dizzle? <laughs> it's kind of like Razzle Dazzle. Does he make you feel razzly dazzly? Well, I don't know. He's kind of... I mean, not he's not impressive. He's very scary. I mean, I, I guess he makes me feel pizzly dizzly. It's just, you know, better than just pizzle. <laughs> You know, Pizzle well, Dizzle. Well, that's why we call him Mr. Pizzle. Well, it sounds like we should put down a puppy pad for him. <laughs> What's a puppy pad? No, it's like a little pad that puppies pee on. Why don't they just pee in the sand? Because they're puppies. They don't know yet. It sounds like he's a puppy that doesn't know where to pee yet. And we call him Mr. Pizzle. <laughs> The Pizzle Dizzle fixes all that. <laughs> Give him the old Pizzle Dizzle, Pizzle Dizzle um. <laughs> I don't think that fixes anything, Della. But thank you for your contribution. But you know, after Capri sang that song, I, I do, I like it a little. How can they see with Pizzle in their eyes? <laughs> Sorry. This is a very relaxing bath. <laughs> You seem inspired at the very least. That was a really great question. I don't know how anybody would see me. It's all in there. Fun fact, that's my background. <laughs> the Razzle Dazzler. The Razzle Dazzler, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Zaluna. Thank you, Zaluna. Thank you. Welcome to the Avengers, fam. Uh, uh, well, I, I, yes, sure, we'll call him the old Pizzle Dizzle. I know. Mean, I feel like you know, wherever he is, he could be doing untold horror damage, uh, catastrophe. Yes, that's true. Or he could be, you know, the world might be over, and maybe there's no adventures to go back to. Like maybe we, we just sort of find. And it. so we can't spy on him, but maybe we can spy on people that we think he might be with. I do have some of Zern something or other, don't I? We left a whole chunk of food back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. You should have grabbed that fucking chunk. <laughs> At least pulled a toenail. <laughs> didn't you, didn't you grab a toe or do you leave it? I left it. Oh, yeah. yeah I we were it. not touching that. For what it's worth, I, I, I'm sure it's gone by now. <laughs> I do think that Zern bought us some time. I don't think we're going to get back to Avengers and things are going to just be over. I think we have some time. I don't know how much, but I think that whatever he had planned at least succeeded in some regard. And it might take. Uh, Pizzle Dizzle, a moment to recover from his transformation. I mean, he, he, he can't just immediately race into his next step, whatever his next step may be, right? I he, he, he got very sick and he, he threw up an egg. It was gross. I Twitch is on fire today. Pizzle Dizzle is only viewed behind a paywall. <laughs> exactly, right? <Sure. laughs> so, subscribe to us on Patreon if you want to see the Pizzle yeah, Dizzle. Yeah, just kidding. We don't for the real Pizzle Dizzle content. <laughs> That's against TOS. <laughs> Um, well, uh, maybe we just have to just pick a pick somewhere and try to, you know, learn from there. 
Our fruit's here. <laughs> well, you guys can, Hot you, damn! You can keep role playing. Oh, yeah, I can. I can. We can keep this going. We'll just talk. I'm, sure. I'm just gonna. I just. I can't. I can't, I can't focus on anything other than the fact that I see a picture of our front stoop um, and there's food on it. <laughs> so <laughs> squirrel being <bagel>. stoop. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. That squirrel's been like literally living under the stairs ever since. Like, hmm, when's food gonna be delivered? <laughs> We know. Excuse me. I wrote down. I gotta find it. At least two. Zentra and Austin Guard. We have Zentra. Austin Guard. Are two TP circles that we wrote down, um, but they were on scrolls. Yeah. And we used one of them. Austin Guard. I believe Guard. it was to go to Austin Guard. Yeah. So we do, in theory, know the se- sigil sequence for. You committed the that Zentra. to your spellbook. Yeah. Where's so, yeah. Austin Guard again? It was the outpost. That was on the front line when we were crossing over. Oh. Yeah. That so right? that's how you guys got to Skethrenel. Yeah. So yeah. Skethrenel. I mean, look, you know, Essence. it's not like we even have any plans to stay in Zentra, but it would be a place that we know we could go and it, we wouldn't immediately stick out because it's a big city and it would give us a chance to kind of assess the situation. Well, let's think about where do we think that he would have gone. That seems like a logical place, right? I mean, maybe. We don't even know what he's going to do to bring about the apocalypse. <coughs> right? That's true. We don't, we don't know. There's no way to know what his next move could be. What and exactly did he say when he flew away? Do we remember? Uh, he basically... The he, apocalypse aha, is nice. Now to go back to Zentra! <laughs> he did not never catch me, you good to us! Uh, he, he did say that the uh, the eclipse was coming, the the end mm. of... Uh, the end was coming, basically. It was like already, we can't stop it. Yeah. It's in motion. But I mean, basically, Zern has only just delayed the inevitable. Uh, we could have gone back to the castle. Uh, Escher. He didn't, didn't he ally with... Uh, with uh, Mr. PP for, for some time. His name is Pizzle Dizzle. I don't you know, think we've really settled really, on anything. Whatever, it's whatever we want it to be. You know, as long as it starts with a P, I'm, I'm into it. I mean, I think I'll call him like <laughs> 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 Whatever we want. <laughs> Love that for you. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention my idea from earlier. What's that? Um, why don't we just ask Anubis to tell us what to do? Yeah, would he do that? He's sort of like, you know... Probably not. I'm sure he's also enjoying his own sauna. Does he have a tuning fork? I literally suggested channeling my connection to the Divine to see if he would provide us one. But the odds are not in our favor. 16% chance. Well, what if you just ask real nice? It's like you rolled that in ye old eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> Try again later. Try again later. Outcome unclear. <laughs> Outlook not so good. Yeah. Yes, but I'm, I'm more than willing to try to see if he can provide us one. I mean, uh, now's the time the before we get a long rest in and, you know, lose all those resources. <laughs> all right. Well, I would say that if you're... Sack of if, rocks. if it's divine intervention... It is. Uh, you just got resurrected from sand, which would count as a successful divine intervention. Oh. Oh, oh so the DM unwillingly stole my resources. <laughs> All right, cool. Without well, my knowledge. Well, hey, it was a good idea. Um. So how could we make a tuning fork? Can we do that? I mean, that's really Caprice's territory. I mean, you know the mechanics behind... Uh, you know, how a tuning fork really works. I mean, we talked about resonance before, sure. and you were able to identify the note of, yeah. of, 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 the, of the tune that we heard from the machine that the, that they built. All right, perfect pitch. I, 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 if I know what note we're looking for, uh, I would be able to tune a fork no problem. And I could Why use my... Why don't we just melt down something and make it into a fork, and you can... I do have magics that are able to fabricate things. Oh, uh, that sounds easier. I'm not you know, really I, I can't smelting. be anything with too fine precision, right? I can't create... Anything that's you know, but a, but a tuning fork. I mean, it's a it's a hunk of metal. Well, what note are we looking for? That's not really about the note, right? It's to be tuned to a plane of his existence. Isn't that an, an interchangeable? I mean, like uh, you does, a tuning fork, you go, boom, and that's a fucking like A or, or a C or whatever. Like you 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 have a specific. Are we talking about a, a sharp? Are we talking about a, a G or a B or an A? What what are we, what are we talking about? 
Well, just, that's the point is we don't really know. so scary. <laughs> I mean, I assume, based on our previous conversation and the knowledge given to us by the god of this universe, that there is a way to translate it into a musical sense. I think it'd be A for Avantress, yeah? Well, no, that's what it was for the, 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 the other plane. I very distinctly remember it being an A. Oh, for the sky? Yes. Thing? I can't remember the name of technically. And I only Aka. remember that because, Aka. yes. Oh, that's an A And I only too. remember this because Maybe it was just very like cool. Maybe it's like an A minor time. or an A major. I mean, it could be anything. I it's had a, a tuning fork <laughs> that I attempted to open a chest with and it broke. And the only reason why I haven't lost that magical item is because I continue to enjoy the magical golden scale of the dragon we defeated. Do I remember what that note was, and do I think that it was prime material plainy? Uh, so if you recall, when you were resurrected, the dragon scale was taken from you and your tuning fork was repaired. Oh, I have the tuning yeah. fork. Wow. So oh, actually, your shit. suggestion was right, and we all thought you were just taunting, cruelly taunting. <laughs> I'd actually forgotten that, so I've been oh. running us around the, the horn. <laughs> So I got this tuning fork right here. Wow! Wow! We've been talking about this for like an hour. <laughs> I just needed to relax in the bath for a while. I'm very tired. All right. So, what's that tune to? Uh, let me check. What am I tuned to? What is it tuned to? I don't know. I have no it's idea. Probably middle C, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, probably middle C. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, it's straight, straight middle C. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. We, we could try teleporting to Middle C and finding out where Middle C goes. <laughs> I don't well, think we should just be teleporting around. And I also think we're, we're really riding a fine line here between the uh, the science of the spell and DM fiat of it being this really cool musical allegory. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know what you just said. <laughs> Never mind. The point is... Not only is there this, this resonance that we're talking about... You know, Toa makes a good point. It does need to be specifically attuned with, not just a a tune, attuned to a plane. So it's not just the note that's meaningful. I don't know. It's also maybe needs to be connected to the plane in some fashion. I've never done this before. I'm not sure. The first time we've ever experienced it was in the Erios. Well, couldn't you, I mean, even if you can't call on him for an invention, couldn't you at least, like, commune with Anubis? And be like, hey, Anubis. I'm getting really discouraged. Why don't I ask you several questions that you might be able to give me the answer to? Well, because I did promise him that I would stop calling on him to answer all of our questions. And told him he could rely on us to... What if you just slip me his digits things and I call him? Slide into Anubis's DMs. I'm going to need you to step away from all of my daddies. <laughs> I'll give you one. But she's kind of into that. <laughs> yeah, she's super daddy. I don't know if you noticed that. And I'm level 20 and I get guaranteed divine intervention. Holy you shit. end there. Yeah, well, I'm sure I get something like my fingernails don't grow anymore or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, right back at you. <laughs> at level 20, you'll be able to raise and lower your cholesterol. In the world. <laughs> Why would you want to raise it? So I can lower it again? <laughs> yeah. I'm a free LASIK procedure. <laughs> It's like punch card. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing in the 20. Yeah. Get something valued at $500. Sweet pizza. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it might be worth a shot, you know, just trying it. We just use it and see what happens. It sure. Was, it was made in Avantris, right? Yeah, it's probably the whole, all we need. Easy. Is it worth at least 250 gold pieces? What is it worth to you? <laughs> hey, I know we're not supposed to bother Anubis with random questions. <laughs> but, but if you could ask him how the material component value of uh, <laughs> for Anubis, I feel like that would be meaningfully important if you could ask him. I get up out of the hot tub and I go to my room. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's tired. <laughs> I think we're all a little tired. 
Well, why don't we get some sleep, and then in the morning we can try the spell with the tuning fork and just see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? We well, end up somewhere horrible. That's the worst that could happen, or our brain scramble. That's the worst that would happen is if we end up someplace really terrible. Uh, in the interim, much what more likely to here, happen though? would be that I just waste a very large amount of magical energy, and we're stuck here for another day. I mean, it's not the end of the world to be stuck here for one more day. Well, I, mean, I mean, we don't know what kind of calamity. That's like happening. really poor choice of words. He said, "Like apocalypse is coming." So yeah, if we get stuck here, it could be end of the world. I guess that's true. And also to answer your question, not to be fussy, but <laughs> <laughs> but I do also remember when we got here, we were told oh, that time flies. <laughs> yes. I've just been standing behind you. This time. God, you're <laughs> sneaky quiet. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a cat. A tabaxi. Um, <laughs> time moves differently, obviously. We're in a dread domain, so we don't know how much time is passing. Oh, jeez. So Let's go we... slower. It's got, it's got to be slower, right? It's always slower. What if we come back in like a thousand years have passed? Well, luckily, Lufty won't have aged today. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, we'll true. definitely have been out of time then. I mean, there's no way that Zern bought us a thousand years. No, it's, yeah, I mean, I think... Would anyone like a back massage? <laughs> Oh, I'd mm-hmm. like one, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, lovely. I'm, I'm like, behind around. her. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to walk around behind Toa, um, extract my claws, and start Just giving like him nails back. on a chalkboard. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, <sighs> Do you like it when I just drag my nails across uh, your back? I'm going to uh, use Stone's Endurance to block some of the damage <laughs> to my racial feature. Uh, 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 Oh, this is pleasant. Thank you, Aris. Ah. Hey, you've got knots in your shoulders, and I'm just going to dig in, like, really hard. Oh, leave, leave some flesh there, at least, please. Ah, I need that. Ah. Ah. Oh, wow. Thanks, Iris. That was very pleasant. Oh, I'm not done. Oh. Okay, just continue. I've got at least an hour in me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'll just tolerate it, as long as you want to. I'll just, I'll just grit my teeth and... And uh, grimace, but yeah, Lufty. Uh, uh, to answer your question, um, there are much worse places that we could be uh, than Prime Material Plane or here. Uh, we could be transported to the Nine Hells, for example, where a oh. Arc Devil is genuinely like salivating over the idea of vengeance over me and any of my friends. Okay. I hadn't thought of that. It, I was happier not knowing. That. I just don't know if we should roll the dice, but I don't know what options we have unless we like walk over to the nearest dread domain shop and find out that they've got like a, all the tuning forks. Is there a tuning fork shop in the? You don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I can't imagine anybody here shops, do they? Beats I mean, me. they're all like shambling dead freaks. <laughs> That's a little harsh. <laughs> All right. It's just and there's the un- and there's the undead. <laughs> <laughs> we started on those guys. <laughs> um. Oh. Mm. Oh wow. That's just. Mm. It's like oh, this is like all claw, isn't it, Iris? <laughs> I'm not sure how you. Well, I've been growing them for years. I can tell. I use a really nice oil um, product to keep them very strong. They haven't broken in six, seven years. It's called iodine. <laughs> so is it like that weird ram's horn nail? Like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no be- really I, I constantly <laughs> make sure that I file them down. They're in very sharp points. Just in case I need to use them for weapons. <laughs> 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 Did you do that on that? Yes. Ah! <clears throat> oh wow! Thank you. It exfoliates the skin. <laughs> Thank you. Seven layers at once. <laughs> All of the layers, really. Uh, I'm worried that Toa's gonna bleed out. Oh, oh, right through the epidermis, right down to the dermis. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Not the dermis. Right to the dermis. <laughs> Not my dermis. <laughs> oh, no, there goes the dermis. <laughs> Um, well, yes, Toa, I have to get to the muscle to give it a massage. You what? I just start playing me. Yep. I'm hot. All right, well, I think I'm going to get some sleep after I bandage my wounds. Um, 
But in the morning, just let me know if there's anything that I can do to nice help. Jug. No, I, I, See the other one. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to keep ruminating over this spell and then think about how to make this work, I guess. Well, good night, everyone. Um, will you check on Milo to make sure he's okay? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stay in the room with him, uh, you know, for the evening. I'll just stay with him and keep an eye on him, and, and uh, we'll, we'll be all right. You know, I really hate it when you ask Felix to do something he's already doing. <laughs> Milo <laughs> is his brother, you know. Well, I know, but, you know, there was only one bed in the room. It was like that one time he was walking over to light the torch, and you were like, Felix, would you light that torch? <laughs> and he had to stop and grit his teeth, because he's also irritated with I'm it, too. I'm just trying to be helpful, though. What, do you think you could just watch what people are doing? I guess I could... Like, be observant? I just like to be a part of What's your of passive things. perception? It's probably pretty good, actually. <laughs> like 17, maybe 16. Wow, oh, that is pretty good. Oh, that's fine. Unfortunate. <laughs> good night. Good I'm night, Toa. 12. I just don't care about anything. <laughs> I, go to, I bandage my wounds and go to bed. I wonder why he put those bandages on his back. <laughs> I don't know. I heard there's a lot of spontaneous bleeding going on. <laughs> it's just going around these days, you know. He had ghosts in his blood. Oh, well, yeah. We probably all do. We're in a tread domain. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the real twist to me. Yeah, my blood. <laughs> my blood is screaming. <laughs> all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some food and water to Milo and uh, just keep an eye on him while I work on this and... I don't know. I guess we'll reconvene in the morning. Yes, that sounds good. All right. Good night, everybody. Sweet dreams. Does everyone go to bed? Yeah. I soak for another hour, thinking about how I felt about the dagger. And when I realize I don't have any solutions, I get up and I go to bed. You all settle into bed, night having fi- finally fallen uh, over Harakir, and you sleep. Except for you. Oh, you do sleep, Caprice. Uh oh. <laughs> but you dream. There is darkness around you, and that flash of light, silver, shimmering, it's a light in the darkness, and then it snakes out, explodes in all different directions. Shimmering silver reminds you of Felix's dagger, it reminds you of the blade that you had seen forged in that memory from hundreds of years ago. It snakes in all directions and it explodes into then a single point once more. As it swirls around something in the darkness. Black metal, legs, claws, tail. You could hear faint Babbling. There's a crass scorpion crown floats above you. You wish to wear it. It courses with silver light. Can you give my man a break just for one arc? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good, good. You, it courses with silver light, and you then see Ruby, a silhouette within. It's Herja. She's encased, imprisoned in a ruby. She's slamming on the inside, slamming, pounding. Begging to be freed. 
screaming, but you cannot hear what she says. You can just read her lips, barely. And it's at this point she fades away as darkness returns. And it's not just void, it's feathers, black feathers, raven's feathers. Then six red eyes in the darkness. The six-eyed raven looks at you. And you realize now that you're wearing the crown. But it's not you wearing the crown. It's the one who owns your soul. And you see this six-eyed raven as it then glows with silver, snakes through its entire body and explodes in a disgusting pop of gore and feathers. And then suddenly, with that explosion, you awake and you all enjoy a long rest. Yes! Boy, I feel rested and had no terrible dreams. <sighs> it was very pleasant. I always sleep so well here. It's like the mattress or something. It's like, it's it's heavenly. This is a heavenly bed. Especially after, you know, everything that we've been through, how long it's been, we've had a nice place to lay down. Get it? Because it's like a divine bed. It's heavenly. <laughs> as, Do you as, sort of get it? It's yeah. kind of like a joke. You know? That's pretty good. Oh, thanks, Felix. Mm. Um, all right. Are we ready to try it? Ah, uh, well... Can we do it in here, or will that break something? Um, well, I don't know, that's a great question. I, I imagine we're... Got a nice flat piece of stone where I can use some chalk would be good. Uh, you know, I, I don't really know what's going to happen, to be honest. Anything could happen. Well, we shouldn't do it in here, right? Well, I figure, you know, I can't really draw in the sand. I, you know, Yeah, just... but then, like, where... Does it take us here, or does it take us to the plane? I've got my target. If we're okay with going to Zentra, that's the target. Oh, it a doesn't, it's a no comfy backsy rule. What? If you put the circle in here, would we be able to teleport back here, and would in here be no, 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 they, the temple? I mean, unless there's some permanent teleportation circle here in the temple that, that I don't know about, that Iris is aware of, in which case, that's a different conversation. I'm just... It's just part of the spell. I need to draw out a transmutation circle, and then, you know, it's just, it's just okay, called... Okay, don't have to yell. I was just I'm asking yelling. questions. I'm not yelling. I'm just I'm thinking out loud. Okay. Uh, I'm just uh, a little nervous, I think. Are we okay with going to Zentra? I think that it's the best place to go. I mean, especially with Zen going, I... We can we take stock of things, and see what's going on, and worst case scenario, we'll, I don't know, catch a carriage somewhere if we have to leave and go somewhere else once we figure out what's going on. Um, well, there's a nice big flat stone area right in front of the statue of Anubis. Is that is that is it okay if Felix, you know, chalks there? It's just chalk. Yeah, it won't take me long. Just give me like, you know, 15, 20 minutes to think about it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah, it'll work out. The, with the tuning fork? Yeah. Help me understand one fine point, which is, uh, let's say you're targeting Zentra and we use the tuning fork. But the tuning fork turns out to be not the prime material plane. Will we go to the nearest Zentra equivalent, or is it just going to be random? Do you want my honest opinion? I always want your honest opinion. I don't know what will happen. It could be completely random. I mean, I have a target in mind, and, you know, it, it, we could... In theory, the teleportation circle exists, and if that key's the right key for the right door, no problem. The key's not for the right door. I don't know if it's going to spit us out into whatever door that key fits, or if just nothing will happen at all. This is uncharted territory. I've never done anything like this before. Is there any chance that it just totally fails and we all die? Complete and total uh, dismemberment and death is unlikely. Unlikely. I have faith in but you, But not zero percent chance. Nothing's a zero percent chance. No, it is a zero percent chance. Felix will make sure we come through okay. I have faith. I think the most likely I scenario is that it just won't work. Then nothing will happen. But if, okay. if everything that I see here is right, then we'll give it a try. And you know, it'll it'll all work out. Let's do it. 
This is the plan. I'm excited about the plan. Let's do the plan. Yeah, right. I'm, uh, I'm like excited. I said, Fifteen or twenty minutes. You come uh, with me with the fork, and we'll we'll get this. We'll we'll make it work. Okay. All right. I'll just sit over here and prepare. Um, I'll, I'll take out a piece skin. of just common chalk from my bag that I've okay. used for you know numerous things, and start drawing out a, a, a like a teleportation circle that I remember from okay. Zentra with the with the sigil. I'm copying it from my my notebook. Uh, my spell book, um, you know, and it's got all sorts of runes and sequences and things. And I'm working with uh, a Caprice using this this tuning fork, and he's you know he's giving mm-hmm. me the resonance, and we're doing some cool uh, magical DM fiat stuff. Okay, cool. Um, and how does the so it so you you need for teleport? You're using teleportation circle. I am using oh. planar shift. Okay. Can you read it to me? How that... Yes, I can. Yeah, so, thank you. Uh, you and up to eight willing creatures who link hands in a circle are transported to a different plane <sighs> of existence. You can specify a target destination in general terms, such as the city of brass on the elemental plane of fire, or the palace of uh, Despater on the second level of the nine hells. And guy. you appear in or near that destination. Yeah. If you are trying to reach the city of brass, for example, you might arrive in the streets of steel before its gates of ashes, or looking at the city from across the sea of fire at the GM's discretion. Alternatively, if you know the sigil sequence of a teleportation circle on another plane of existence, the spell can take you to that circle. If the teleportation circle is too small to hold all the creatures that you transported, they appear in the closest unoccupied spaces next to the circle. You can use this spell to banish an unwilling creature, blah, 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 blah. All of that is, is unrelevant, irrelevant at this point. Um, and that's all it says. Uh, a forked metal rod worth at least 250 gold pieces attuned to a particular t- plane of existence. So okay. I'm really leaving it up to you okay. to yeah. determine whether or not you yeah. believe that this will work and okay. or if some horrible thing will happen to us. Roger that. Okay. So this is shot in the dark. Roger that. I'm going to use a... a Seventh level spell though to do it, so feel free to you know punish me for that. I guess <laughs> I would you never. You immediately Cronenberg. Yeah. <laughs> feel his head teleports. No oh, god, no. Yeah. Oh, a nightmare. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. Milo, spell. look away. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of it. I have to just change my prep here so I have it in my actual prepared stuff. How many Since people can go? Morning. Eight. Thank goodness. Yeah, we're good. We have exactly eight. No, we have seven. 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 We're good. Yeah, we're golden. Plus my dark passenger. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one more. Plane shift. <laughs> I'm casting it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no, yeah, my there's no like check or anything because the charisma check would be if I was using it yeah. offensively against somebody else. Yeah, yeah. So up to you, my friend. I'm willing to do whatever you think is uh, reasonable. Okay. Are you casting it now? Yeah, I would take the you know the twenty minutes or whatever to you prepare. Need, uh, get Milo and Velasco. Yeah. They could they would be getting everything that they yeah. need together. Yeah, you know, and then when everyone is tells me they're ready to go, they're both exhausted. It. They they stir a little bit, but they're very clearly going to need to sleep a long time. Are you yorking, <laughs> Velasco? Yorning, yorning, baby oh. York. Yeah. <laughs> For a second, I thought you meant like Swedish chefing, like. <laughs> and I was I've, got, I've got Milo in one of those like front pouches where the like arms and legs. That's are, like, yeah, the baby Bjorn. Yeah. I thought the Bjorn was the. the, the that's like a. Sw- that's like a. Uh, a sling. A yeah, sling. yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what that's. Really I've been picturing. A, is this another ocelot? No, I've been picturing. The, picturing the baby Bjorn is like a backpack that you wear in the front, and they just like yeah. all their limbs yeah, stick out of the baby Bjorn. That's not what I was picturing. Eh, it's okay. That's fine. I'll yeah. carry Milo then, if he, since you're busy doing yeah, the spell. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll make sure that Milo's, you know, resting and, and supported. Uh, when, when, when you come into wake Milo, Milo, Milo says like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Felix, you need to my, meet my new friends. You need to teach them how to make ice cream soup. I promise. Yeah, yeah, of course. I also need to stab a spider in the eye. Oh, I would actually have very much. We remember all of those things we experienced. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I think I. I hear what he says, and I think that I can't even begin to explain that. In a different time and space, we were there with him, and I just think like, whoa, dude! Like in the back of my head, <laughs> <laughs> we were <Yeah>. there. <laughs> I peed yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, we, we were just kids and we died horrible deaths. <laughs> yeah. We're being eaten by a spider. Uh, and then I would help him up, you know, with Toa. Yeah. 
and then continue you do that what around and there and and Valeska's the same way she's like I want to, to see my mommy I pulled a hand out of my pack. Oh, Hi, <laughs> honey. You are in rare form today, Iris. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Should we, should we talk about that real quick? When do we get home? Okay. 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 I don't think it's safe to resurrect someone <clears throat> in a dread domain. Oh, oh that might, seems fair. Might not even get out soul of here. or something. Or just so like get really some icky point. bit in them. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you're thinking about these things, because I'm not, and Richie's not either. That's why I'm the cleric of the grave, and you're a stone man. I'm the dumbest wizard How's the hand existed? doing, though? It's fun. Is it, like, decomposing? No, it's anything? mummified. Oh, that's good. Okay, just check it. It's gently reposing. We'll put it in a Tupperware. Mm-hmm. Its fingernails are growing adequately for a hand. Oh. Damn it. What? I just won't grow anymore. <laughs> Would it benefit if, if, if I if I sang an inspiring song? Oh, I can't. Well, it depends on whether it's inspiring or not. <laughs> All of my songs are inspiring, thank you very much. From a mechanical so, perspective, I don't know if it'll help very much, but it'll just make me feel better deep down. You truly believe Suckball's Mountain is an inspiring song? <laughs> yeah. No, but it's a real banger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I'll sing. I'll sing, and I'll give for you. Real, for and real. I'll give no you inspiration. No Thank cat. you. No cap. On God. No cap. On God. Yeah, Suckball's Mountain is really bussin'. <laughs> I'm just traveling through the realm with my fave party. Just traveling, 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 traveling along. We're headed towards our great next adventure. And when I get there, I'm going to sing this song. I'm going to sing, oh yeah, oh my my, I don't give a fuck about a min-max guide. You can take away my items, but you can't take away my pride. I'm singing, oh yeah, oh my my, I'm going to keep singing till the day I die. Lorebard is the way I ride. And there's a Thank rap, you. but I'll just sing the verse. Well, you know... I would say that that is much more inspiring than Suckball's Mountain. Uh, you know. Right? Yeah, I feel good about this. Let's I, do it. I think this is going to work. Let's do it. It has to work. I'm trying to be optimistic. Are we ready? I think so. Do we All hold the children hands? Yes. Bjorn properly? Get in the circle. Everybody hold hands. Make sure we got the... The youngins with us here. Um, Watch my finger now. <laughs> Felix, did you draw? It's the that? longest one I have. Yeah, yeah, I drew the, I drew the circle. Yeah. That doesn't look like a kitty at all. It's not supposed to, Milo. I, it's <laughs> magic. I, I can't even begin to. You know what, buddy? Out. It's all right. We're gonna be home soon. Uh, I wanna, I want eat ice cream soon. Uh, and I will step What's between. He's getting the ice cream. I'll step between the, uh, the space between Caprice. And Tella, who each okay. have a, a hand open, and I will begin to unwrap the dagger. Yeah. And I will hold it in one hand, my right <clears> hand, <throat> as I link my arm around Tella and hold Caprice's hand with my left hand. Pinky. Yeah, I'll hold your pinky. We're only doing pinky. Oh, we're just doing pinky. Okay, well, I'm still. <laughs> I linked my arm with Tella because I'm trying. I got to hang on to the dagger. And I will concentrate and attempt to cast Wing Shift and arrive in the, the teleportation circle that we know of in Zentra. Uh, as you cast the spell, I first need, need you to make a uh, D100. Felix? As you clutch the dagger. 41. Nearly the answer to everything. Oh god, less than 50 sounds scary. Yeah. So what was that roll thus far? The spell works. Oh no. But... <laughs> and you uh, all stand around in a circle. As uh, you hold the, the you hold up the tuning fork, and it uh, it rings out in that middle C, the same note that you've been hearing uh, Caprice use as he's been tuning his uh, violin, his fiddle, as it rings around you constantly, and the spell swirls around as arcane magic uh, uh, glows in your eyes, Felix. As the you, you look at the runes, you look at the, the everything that you've done for the spell, and then it actually connects with the tuning fork. It is locked on as it tunes and tunes as the middle C rings out, and oh, yeah. then the note becomes discordant. 
So close. As as this tuning fork uh, rings out and the note gets more and more strange and and discordant as it swirls around and your gr- the ground leaves you as you are rocketed through the planes as you cast plane shift successfully. Darkness surrounds you. Oh, Our mouths uh. and anuses. <laughs> <laughs> You are, you know, you are would, ungovernable. I wouldn't hate that as we all begin to start shit, shitting from our faces. <laughs> you, sir, are ungovernable. What's that, Iris? <laughs> all right. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> oh, God. But something goes wrong. That's what I'm writing in my notes. Plane shift. You are Black. surrounded by darkness. As suddenly your vision returns, you look around and you see shapes in the darkness around you. As the you feel like you're on a very fine rug, it's plush. And you see glints of red around you. As you look around to see where you are. This doesn't look like any place in Zentra that you're familiar with. It doesn't look like any room, although despite all the strange dungeons and libraries. Caprice, as your eyes adjust. You realize that this looks familiar. You've been in this chamber before. I imagine that the smell would actually be the first thing that would give me the The smell will hit you. And then it hits all of you. Smell of brimstone. You see now is a very nice, you see shelves and you're lined with many rubies, strange relics and artifacts. And it's still so dark. You can't tell where the walls are. You see shelves, you see it, is that a table? beginning of a strange fireplace as you suddenly see movement it moves so so subtly you realize now that only because it this shape was moving so perfect was what had been so perfectly still that you didn't notice it before. Still just a silhouette, tall, 13 feet tall, robed, massive spiraling goat-like horns going out to the sides. And then in a flash, almost blinding in this dark room, you see two circular eyes as the Lord of Lies stares down at all of you. Welcome back, Capriccio de Sesto. You have returned sooner than I had expected. Hi! Uh, uh, not intentional. Uh, I think we're just, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a pit stop. Um, we were attempting to get back to the prime material plane and, uh, somehow ended up here. So, uh, we can just be on our way. Um, oh, oopsie. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's quite great to see you. Uh, uh, thanks again for, you know, saving me from, uh, uh eternity in a uh, burning lava pit. I must have made a mistake. I didn't mean for this to happen. Hi, I'm Tawa Kamanui. 
Well, these are my friends. What's your name? They're uh, trusted allies. I couldn't do anything without them. Oh, we've seen you before, kind of, right? We have spoken, yes. Wow. I just forgot how big you are. I thought I was big. <laughs> did, did I do this or did you do this? He, the lantern-like eyes turn to you. It was a cooperative effort. Did you really think, Capriccio, that your family's lucky tuning fork was attuned to anything beyond the nine hells? Sounded, even to my ears, the same. I am called the Lord of Lies. But great arcane power brought you here all the same through the mist. That requires great strength. Oh, well, the good news is it worked, as expected. Yeah, I guess that's a silver lining. It was just tuned to a different place than we thought. So we can just, maybe you can just help us along back to Sentra. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you're up to date on the latest uh, uh, happenings, but uh, we, there's some serious shit going down. We, 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 we need to get back to the Prime Material Plane right away. If, 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 if reality is going to continue to persist, even. I have seen it all. Also, you know. Well... Your friend Capriccio has seen it all, and so have I. You are uh... the duplicitous Pazuzu attempts to reignite an all consuming war, to tip the scales for himself, to renege on our deal. He wishes to destroy all and rebuild it in his image, reclaim this universe for the Oberiths. It will not happen. Oh, I mean, that's good. It sounds like you want what we want. Yeah, our goals are aligned, it seems. Yes. So you've come to bargain, then, because I have a bargain for you. I, well, I, I don't know about all that. I mean, it's just it's kind of a mistake, a mix-up. We just gotta get back to Zentra. We just have to go home. Oh, and yeah, oh. I left my purse back there. Hmm. So, you well, know, I get mean, you back next time, okay? If it's just something that we can do for you, like a favor or something real quick, and you can just get us where we need to go. Oh, I don't know about that. No. no. Oh. No. How else are we gonna get out of here? The Scorpion Crown. Oh, this thing <laughs> pulled out of the bag of holding. <laughs> yes. Oh, what about it? I wish to have it. Why? There is few. <laughs> there are few things that can defeat the power which your adversary has consumed. That crown was forged by the mad god himself. And with the curse that now flows through Pazuzu, it may be strong enough to be his undoing. It can be turned into a weapon. Wow. But what kind of weapon? A weapon 
that will send the Lord of the Lower Aerial Kingdoms back to the universe from whence he came. Annihilating him entirely. Look, I'm not going to pretend like I know much about any of all of this. You know, I'm just the guy, but we don't really have any use for the crown. I mean, what are we going to do? Hold on to it forever? It seems kind of dangerous. I don't even know what we do with it. We're just going to sidebar for a minute, okay? While you do, allow me to remind Capriccio of the collateral. And he waves a long hand. And you hear as there's two glowing uh, red lights on either side of you. And you see encased in glowing red ruby are the corrupted forms of Herja and uh, Torvald. Do we see this too? You all see that, correct. <laughs> and they're small, right? Or are they full size? No, they're full size, yeah. Oh, and we we, saw we haven't small, seen yeah. this before, right? No. We haven't. No, no, no. Herja. Maybe, I don't know if he told you about that, but... Did you tell us about it? I can't remember. I, you would have. I would have told you guys as much detail as I could about my experience from okay. the moment that I died to the moment that I was returned by said Lord of Lies. Um, that would have included that Herja and Torvald were trapped, but probably seeing them in this way, you're realizing that like I couldn't have articulated the nature of the image that's in front of you now. Herja. Oh my god. I try to go forward and like, like, yeah, tap on the. Movie. You uh, you walk up to it, and despite its size, it is solid ruby, and you tap on it, and it is it has the consistency of what you imagine a massive gemstone to have. As you tap and tap and tap, and it uh, lets out a strange resonance. Uh, but she seems completely encased. Uh, the uh, the shaggy fur of the beast plague that had, and the horns and the hooves, uh, still affecting her. And you see the same with the jade statue of Torvald on the other side. Um, Are they like in stasis? They're in stasis, yeah. yeah. As the Lord of Lies turns back to you, you will recall that I took the collateral until you could ensure your loyalty to my service. That was this, the deal. This is such an opportunity, if you wish. To give you the crown? And to utilize the dagger. And the eyes turn to you, Felix. Ah, man. This thing is really becoming more trouble than it's worth. You may keep it once I return it to its normal, meager state. So you're aware that there's something seriously wrong with this thing? I wish to cleanse it, transfer it to the crown. Guys, oh, go ahead. I'm just feeling like... You know, we're like in the ocean and we see a big fish coming and we say, oh no, it's a really big fish. And then that fish gets eaten by something even bigger and we're like, oh, thank God that fish is gone. But now we have to deal with the bigger fish. And this just feels like a bigger fish. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the, the problem is we're not going anywhere. We're stuck here. I mean, there's no way out. Look around us. It's nothing but darkness. There's no like... Backspace button? I don't know. I mean, what is he going to do? Watch me sit here and draw for 20 minutes? And then try to sneak out here? I don't know. We could you just... heard him. The tuning fork only leads to here. We don't have a way back to Avantress. We would need another tuning fork to leave. Right. We didn't have the right key. This is terrible. I mean, I, I get the heebie-jeebies just looking at it, just holding it. It feels terrible. I don't mind giving it to him. It's the same way with the dagger now, too. And, and I mean, you know, he's been really nice about Caprice. He saved him. Um, you know, I, I don't For know. For what purpose? I, I'm, I'm a little more convinced with this guy compared to, you know, Pazzle Dazzle or Pizzle Dizzle, whatever his name is. I just... Look, Caprice is a great guy, don't get me wrong, but... 
Why? Why? Why is he saving him? If not just to get something else that he wants. I mean, they all have motives. Everybody's got an angle, right? This might be him getting what he wants. I know, but but why? What happens when he defeats him? <clears throat> we don't know. I mean, then he what? destroys the world. We don't know if he has any interest in that. Lufty. Yeah. Hello. Have you ever known true hate? Well, I'm a pretty easygoing gal. I mean, I, you know, Patricia was a real bitch, but I don't know that I hated her. <laughs> Vengeance. A desire for retribution. Yeah, I, I guess I have. Why? He... He... Looks at you and says, Perhaps you will be a more willing business associate if I show you the... first encounter with our adversary. And he waves his hand. And suddenly the rubies around you containing Torvald and um, Persia dissipate. And another one alights with a tr- as it glows with a st- with a, uh, a strange hue and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter until it consumes your vision and your senses. <clears throat> All of us are just lifting. All of you. Oh, good. You see a massive mountain. Larger than any of you have ever seen in Avantress or otherwise. You see brilliant spires of silver and glowing blue and gold. And you, the air around you is shimmering and the world is almost glittering itself with a strange rainbow-like hue all around you. You are standing, or you perceive yourself to be standing on a long road built into the sky. Thank you so much, Zimmy. Thank you so much. Thank you so for much the sub for the and sub. two gifted subs. Two gifted subs. Oh, oh, awesome. oh my gosh. Thank Pars. you very Thank much. You, Zimmy. Zimmy. Thank, Thank you, Zimmy. Thank you. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. As you see a long uh, road of a pristine white marble with railings that it's, it's, it's floating in the sky by this mountain. You see a large, a silver, almost like chrome-like railings that goes to what looks like a massive structure, a, a fortress floating in the sky. Uh, parapets and towers, uh, not completely unlike the spires of Akka, but far more grandiose, militant, divine. As you see that they're flanking this road leading up to this massive fortress are winged humanoids, heavily armored, holding pristinely uh, crafted weapons. As you see uh, massive doors that lead towards this road that goes off into the strange otherworldly place that you're in. And you hear a voice in your mind. The heavens 
when these realms were young. The prison of Thara's doom. The first prison of Thara's doom. As you see a you, you now see a single angel walking down this road past rows and rows of angels, guards, and then up, walks all the way up to this heavily guarded door. And you realize now this fortress is very clearly a prison of some kind of vault as concepted by creatures of the divine. You can understand now. And you see that this is a helmeted angel wearing a, a gilded golden helmet uh, adorned with uh, the, the vestiges of what looked like an, an eagle or some kind of majestic bird. As he steps up to the guard on the right side of the door. This is a very handsome man. Uh, pristine wings behind him. Uh, very perfectly uh, shaved, except for a small goatee and a little small black mustache. As this, as this helmeted angel stops and looks at this angel that's guarding on the right side of the door, as the helmeted angel says, My heavens, you're Asmodeus, aren't you? And the guard looks and narrows his eyes and says, Yes, I am. Why do you ask? What is your purpose here? And the angel with the eagle helmet puts a hand on his chest and says, Pardon me for stepping out of place, but I have heard of your great valor at the Battle of Peth. You've slain so many demons. You you'd slaughtered Oberths by the thousands. And the guard simply looks at him and nods and says, yes. And the visitor, the stranger, uh, stops and says, well, I must admit that I am surprised that such a great warrior, a, a noble angel with a legendary reputation in battle and for virtue would be relegated to guard duty. Such a thing does not seem just or virtuous, does it not? Does not seem to be the wise judgment of a prudent and virtuous God. But I don't mean to speak out of turn. As the guard you know as Asmodeus stops and he says, I follow the will of our God. I guard the prison of the God that must remain chained. And he, this stranger, uh, takes a few steps forward, very close. And, and you can tell that she's actually several inches shorter than Asmodeus. And he looks up. And you can now see underneath this eagle helmet, there is his very bright eyes that dart back and forth. But there's something strange about these eyes. They almost... They almost observe Asmodeus with the eyes of a predator. Of a bird of prey. As, as he, as he says, I suppose that is a very 
high honor, the power that Thara's doom once wield, wielded, should he ever reclaim the shard of evil, well, I shouldn't say much more. If one were to reclaim that power, imagine what could be unleashed upon those obereths, those demons, perhaps be able to destroy them once and for all. It's a shame we cannot wield such power, for it is evil as our wise god says. And, uh, and Asmodeus just nods at him and says, You are exactly right. No one deserves to wield such power, least of all us. And the stranger uh, takes a step back and says, Ah, you're right. You're right. No, no one could be that great. No one could, could be wise enough and virtuous enough to ever wield it. Well, my business lies elsewhere. It was very lovely meeting such a heroic angel, Asmodeus. What did you say your name was again? You may call me Pazario. The vision fades. And the eyes are looking at you, Lofty. It was not long after that interaction that Pazaril became my great general and I fell from grace and fell from the heavens crashed into these hills that you see. Does that provide adequate motivation? So you want to redeem yourself, yeah? No. Good is foolish. I do not wish to ever return to those realms of good. No. But one who thought he could outplay me when I was young and foolish. He served his purpose. He helped stoke the demon lords to foolishly continue the blood war. But now he has overstepped his bounds and his usefulness has run out. And so like a, a chicken at dinner time, his neck must be wrung and he should be plucked. So he was an angel too? No, that was a deception, oh. an illusion. All right, so you, you mentioned a, a deal, if it were. We have the crown and you want it. What are you offering in return? Your dagger will be cleansed. The crown and the dagger, all right. I will return it to you. You will do whatever it takes to destroy Pazuzu, claiming the shard of evil in the process. It was not just I that Pazuzu corrupted. Thoris Dune himself was not always mad. What about our friends? I will send them 
back home. Safe and sound. You can fix them. I can. I promised Capriccio that I would. This assurance of loyalty will satisfy that piece of the contract. They will be cleansed and returned to their mundane lives in the Grizzlepaw Mountains of Yona on Avantris. Will they remember after being cleansed all of this? If you wish them not to, I can make that happen. Do I have to decide right this second? Not right this second. But you do not have the luxury of time. You need to rest. According to my estimations, you have several days before Pazuzu makes his move. Only days? I figured Zern would have bought us at least a few months, maybe years. Is that wishful thinking, I guess? The power of the Raven Queen and the memories of the mortals that she manipulates is strong. Pazuzu would have acted immediately were it not for the contingencies. But Pazuzu has shrouded my eyes, has shrouded my spies. What he does now, I do not know as much as it pains me to admit. Are you able to see what happened to Zern? Or I guess Ra- Raum, maybe is what he said. Turned. Turned to what he loathed. As like a punishment? Punishment for betraying his patron? Or perhaps making the deal in the first place? Is he, there is any- a f- he is a fiend now. <clears throat> All of us can fall. All of us can turn. And as it is the colloquialism, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And there's nothing we can do for him to put him out of his misery or... or... He has served his purpose. That's awfully sad. It bought us time and now he gets to live in eternal punishment. He also allowed for the weakness that will continue to corrupt Pazuzu. The first strike perhaps will come in days, but it will be a war after that. It will just be the beginning. I was going to ask if, as part of the deal, if you can send us back to uh, Vantress. I mean, we have to get back there. Uh, we, we were aiming for Zentra, and I know that's not where we ended up, but I was hoping that maybe you could tell us where Zuzu was going to strike. Where where, where do we have to face him? Yeah, anything you can tell us to help us to achieve to, to, to your aim. You will undoubtedly face him in Pazunia. Where, where is that? His realm in the abyss. Yes, that was wishful thinking. But Thinking that we'd be on our own turf. You are haggard and weak. You need time to rest. Return the children to safety. I can send you to Barovia if you wish. 
reunite with your allies you left beyond the mist. Oh, that's a great idea. Because we know that Alexei and... Oh, no, not Asher anymore. And then, to Zentra, you will find friends in Barovia. I fear you will not find friends in Zentra. Well, at the very least, if we end up in Avantress, I can teleport us where we need to go. Well, and it sounds like maybe that, um, that Pazuzu's not like ending the world right now, that we have a few days. And so that was one of the things we were worried about, was to try to help Zentra, but, I, you know, I agree that maybe it is a lost cause. Um, and, you know, maybe we can return Valeska and... Sophiana back to her people. Right. And if there are allies there, then maybe they'll be able to help us with what we have to go and where we have to go next. I don't know. As good as any. And they can look after Milo, you know? Because he can't come with us to Pazunia. I don't think he should anyway. No, you're, you're right. He needs to find someone that, he can, that we trust. That he can stay with. And when he's back on his feet, he's, he's very helpful. And he'll be, able to, he'll be able to help out. I know it. I'm in. I mean, we've got no other choice, really. I'll pull the scorpion crown back out. And I'll pull out the knife. This will be just the first step of our agreement. What are the other steps? Once the end begins... Once the red eclipse occurs, the end of all things will be initiated. We will know what to do when that time comes. Once I have time, scour this relic he looks very clearly at the crown and take the power of memory secrets and death it will be Pazuzu's undoing especially once you secure the shard of evil So we need to kill him and then get the Shard of Evil? The Shard will be required to destroy him. Oh. At least a sliver. A single sliver is all it took to create this. And the silhouette raises the large cane-looking thing that he has, and he extends it forward, and it disappears out of the shadow, and you see it's just this massive uh, rod made of pure ruby all the way down. Pure what? Ruby. Ruby. Whoa. Damn. And he pulls it back in, and it turns <clears throat> back into a silhouette. All right. I, I can't believe I'm turning this over twice in, like, two days. It's never left my sight. But I guess there's no time like the present. I mean, it's clearly more powerful than I think anyone realized. And if it can, you know, if it's going to cleanse it and you can use it again, then it doesn't have to leave your side anymore. Right. Yeah, you're right. All right. Here. Hey, real quick. Were you the reason why I was acting all funny towards that thing? I was going to claim it whether you agreed or not. And he raises his hand and a, a new contract uh, emerges, uh, ignites, and uh, as you step forward with those two objects, the eyes turn to you and then the rest of you and says, do you wish to amend the fate of the collateral?
I want them to not remember any pain. I don't mean in some broad, like, they only have happy memories. Herja wouldn't want me to modify her memory. Or, or, and, 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 and I have no right to say about her father. But towards the end, during the corruption, if there was anything that could be forgotten without tarnishing their person, just make it easy. And when they're returned, they'll remember the the journey they've been on and how they got there and be able to return to their mundane lives without the kind of suffering that makes that impossible. The... You see his hand uh, wave an additional scrawling of infernal text is added to the contract. You know, and, I lean in and see the nature of the script. And I would say that you see that it seems to be pretty airtight. But you know there's post it, feel, it feels like it yeah. captures the intent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Said the Lord of Lies. Said the Lord of Lies. <laughs> all right. Just trust me. That's, uh, that's all I wanted to know is you, you don't have to make me do anything and, 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 and take over my shit anymore. You can just come and talk to me anytime. That's fine. I will commune when needed. Be certain of that. Yep. Super certain. You can proceed. And with that, he waves his hand and suddenly the dagger and the crown both lift up <sighs> and they uh, swirl together in front of the Lord of Lies. As you see, the crown disappears, the blackness of the um, metal disappears into just it's barely a silhouette illuminated by the lamplight eyes of the Lord of Lies. The dagger uh, raises to be in the center of it as it spins around, as does the dagger, and the bright silver light, the incredible amount of empowerment and enchantment that you had done, the power, that incredible power of the Raven Queen uh, blasts through the room, and you get a, a quick glimpse of, of the strange... Uh, like this bizarre infernal study of some kind for just a moment until you're blinded as you hear as suddenly uh, the light dims back down and you see the scorpion crown swirling as it then is pulsing with snaking lines of silver light uh, as the dagger now Felix, you can see there's no more blood or corruption on your Talon Guard blade. And all of that incredible, immeasurable power of death combined with the essence of Thar's Dune hums from the crown. And you feel a sense of satisfaction from the Lord of Lies and the gravity of the situation. With a wave of his hand um, he, Yikes. the dagger floats back to you, Felix, and the crown, um, spins, and in a wave of his hand, you see as it, uh, moves over to this a very dark shelf and slides into the darkness, disappears, and you see now that the... Your names have been added to the contract. <clears throat> Welcome to the fucking party. Yeah, no choice, right? I mean, for me, absolutely not. It was this or, or I, mean, I can't even begin. But uh, I think also there's a, you know, burden of saving the world type responsibility that comes with these kinds of things. I, this is how this is supposed to go, maybe? They don't tell about this in the stories and epics I've studied. Well, we've already agreed to it and handed it over, so I'll be first. And I'll walk up and... Is there like a floating 
magical quill or anything. Oh, your name's already on there. Oh, like already signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I don't have to sign again. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> oh, there it is. I see it. Yeah, just, I thought maybe it's like printed versus signed, but that's the most toe you've ever been, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and with that, uh, as there's, uh, glowing red light on either side of you, and with a hum, you see as the silhouettes within that had once been affected by Beast Plague, that had once been affected by the, the Jade Curse, now are just dwarves. Trapped in stasis. You see Torvald and Herja. Their eyes just staring blankly, but peacefully, forward. As they float towards you. And the Lord of Lies turns down and says, Do you wish to bid farewell? They will not recall anything of this place. Only my closest associates may know. But I will give you a moment before I send them to Yona. I would walk forward immediately and lean down and... Torvald, I uh, hope to see you again in good health. Her giant. <sighs> Miss you terribly. Every second, every minute, I wish that you could be by my side and fighting along with us while we deal with these nightmares. I'm sorry that you're in the state that you're in and that there isn't anything more I can do for you right now. We'll see each other again soon, I promise. Okay? I sort of hesitate before thinking about something like maybe a kiss on the surface of this ruby before I back off and step back with the group, regaining my composure as best I can. You do that. And you see as... Persia's eyes are open, but they do not lock onto you. There doesn't seem to be recognition, but there is a peacefulness to her face. I'll just give Caprice a little pat. That was nice. Why, Persia? Thank you for everything. We'll see you soon. Yeah. He raises his hand. Your loyalty is appreciated. And with a wave, the rubies glow. And in a flash, they are suddenly empty. And they darken as they float back to the various places where they had come from. Are you okay? Yeah. Now for everything that's happened, this feels like coming to rest in a weird way. I think we know what we need to do. And look, when we succeed, and all of this is over, and everything goes back to normal, we all have various plans of seeing where we all come from. There's nothing saying that you can't go visit her. Vacation. Yeah. It's yeah, a, Felix can teleport us all over the place. A sabbatical. That's right. When we're done with this, we don't have to sign anything. Let's just agree, you know, a uh, word of mouth style. We'll we'll go to our, 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 our each other's homes. We'll just relax and spend all the time we ever could need. I love that. It'd be so nice. Oh, to take you to the islands would be amazing. And if you're cool, you can come too, Assy. I mean, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> My place is here. 
and the dagger floats back to you, Felix. How does it feel? It feels like your old trusty blade. It feels like it's back to normal. That's good. Yeah, at least I won't be worthless in the coming days, I guess. <laughs> so you can still use it to, um, you know, zip 30 feet in one direction and then turn a bunch of sand into the glass, no problem, instantaneously, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Then I've got my bow and my, uh, my, my, my fiddle. Some people like to call it a viol. Oh. All right, so... We go back to. I'm drawing a blank. Bro- Barovia, go, wherever you wish. We go back to Barovia. I will send you to Avantras. All right, we we go back to Barovia. We, we we assess the situation. We make sure that the kid's all right, and we have a few days to prepare. And I don't even know how we begin to do that. So where do we get this shard of evil? If we needed to kill him. It is lost in the abyss. So how do we go about finding it in the abyss? That time will come. Your mortal souls need time before you face that horror and chaos. Three days hardly seems like enough time for anything. Is that what we're down to? Three days? I, don't know, I just picked a number. He said several before. <laughs> several, three. I mean, you know, who could it be? Oh, three is a few. Everybody knows this. I think three could be several. Wait, I mean, does it have to be the prime material plane? Do we have to go back to Barovia? Can you give us like a, a Barovia ticket, and then also we could go to the time stopped uh, your, 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 the, the, uh, where your mom was. We 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 have been months there, just fucking around the playing knife vale monopoly. Aka is no longer in stasis. Once the Wind Dukes returned, the mom really doesn't like to babysit. She well, hates kids. Fuck. It was a good idea. I'm always a couple stuff behind. <laughs> well, I think Barovia for now, and then we hopefully take care of the little ones. And then I guess we'll wait for further guidance. But most importantly, we gotta rest up, it sounds like. I mean, we have to prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally and physically. Like to compose some, some, some new songs, some new jams? Yeah, that'd be nice. You must prepare for a war. You have time, perhaps a week. Perhaps more. I wish I could give more guidance. But you must (coughs) do whatever you can, whatever you would deem wise to prepare for the end of all things. A war on the material plane? Like, should we warn, you know, everybody? The Oberith Lords came from another universe. A dying, desiccated universe, thanks to their chaos and corruption. It was Pazuzu who pushed the shard of evil into our domain. Turn the Thara's doom mad, and he unleashed the Oberoths. Created the abyss. Wow. Demons as we know it. And now they wish to do the same to this universe that they did to their home universe. And on and on and on. So if we push them back to the old dead universe, they just they they're done. They walked out. That is the hope. Or perhaps forever trapped. A fate worse than death for someone such as Pazuzu. All right, well, we can maybe, you know, we could warn the 
the, the orc tribe and and we could warn Zentra if we can. And what good will it do? How would they protect themselves against something like that? They can at least try to fight. I mean, we've killed demons before. Like, obviously not like... Oh, we even killed the the personification of Moloch and Baphomet. I mean, so, you know, they could at least fight little demons. In a flash, you hear... <clears throat> and you see a very small... Um, it looks like a bottle. Like a little round bottle with a, a cork. And you see inside a little bullheaded imp as it's it's very viciously clawing at the side of the jar, hatefully looking at both Felix and Caprice especially. <laughs> you never grew beyond your days in the flask. <laughs> <laughs> so good. As as it as the, the bull, the, the, the bull head is snorting and uh, lets out a roar that is muffled. It also sounds squeaky coming from an imp. The roar of the bull uh, in its final form as it disappears as the Lord of Lies turns and says, Yes, you did. We'll be able to do this thing for you. I, I could use a few days and I have a notion of something that I could do if I had... 12 hours or so to really sit down and focus my attention, but I, I, I would need a little something extra, if, if that's alright. I would need a ruby worth 1,500 gold pieces. And with this, I could make a, a kind of another person with, through, through, my, through my song, through my storytelling. If there's one thing I have, <laughs> it's a ruby. That's why I thought I'd ask. <laughs> it's nothing it's extremely <laughs> apropos. Wow, wow. What, what, how serendipitous. <laughs> Rubies, you say? Fresh out. Yeah. <laughs> Best I can do is source shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take that. Thank you. Um, and he he um he looks at all of you and says. Pazuzu still has agents working in the prime material plane and beyond. I will send my agents to disrupt and harry his plan as much as possible. But as much as the curse of death surges through his body, the power of the chain god still grows within him. It is only a matter of time. If we are lucky, we may get a week. <clears throat> I will do my best, but even the Lord of Lies cannot promise such a thing. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll just get back. We'll assess the situation. We'll figure out a plan. We can do this. We don't have a choice. <laughs> we got to do it. That does make it easier. We just have to do it. You're right. Sometimes the only way to do it is to just fucking do it. Well, let's fucking do it then, okay? okay? Let's do it then. Are we ready to go? We're ready to go. Until we meet again, associates. And with a wave of his hand, suddenly uh, you, all you see is red as you are immediately frozen, encased in ruby. And with a single flash, you are immediately thrust forward through impossible distances and realms, and you, your consciousness returns, and you see red. You still see red, and you look up, and it's not the red of the ruby. You see gold mixed in, and the brown of bark as you see a dragon flame tree, an edelwood tree. You've returned to the Valley of Baruch. <coughs> dark. The moon <laughs> looms high over the valley of Barovia at night as uh, Milo stirs from his rest and he says uh, he had beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, it's alright buddy. We're, we're almost home. 
We are? Oh, man. I can't wait to eat Mr. Mendel's souffle. Go back to sleep, buddy. Okay. Where are we going to take this? He place? never made souffle. <laughs> Is he okay? <laughs> I think he's still delirious, honestly. He's looking yeah. pretty rough. I mean, he's always been a tiny kid, but he's really thin. I mean, they, they really must have did a number on him. Mm, poor thing. He'll be all right. He's tough. But we just got to get him somewhere safe. And, you know, I can, we, can, we can come back here anytime <laughs> to check on him. It'll be all right. Just somebody we trust. So who do we trust here? Do we get a sense of where we are? Yes. Um, so you look up and you are actually um, basically right outside the village of Barovia. Uh, really the city of Barovia with Barovia Castle um, at the center of this. And you look and you actually uh, you see as there are um, flickering uh, torches all over the valley. <laughs> Um, as you see that there are the, uh, that it seems as if for however long you've gone, that the army that you had left with has just recently returned that day to Barovia. As you see that, that you hear the sound of, um, uh, a creaking of, of, of wagon wheels as a, as a horse that had been bringing supplies, uh, pulling a wagon with supplies is, is, is making its way. And you're up on a hill, a uh, several minute walk down to the main road. Um, all right, well, so the castle is not up on the big mount, mountain anymore. No, right? no, 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 no. Yeah, that's so, yeah. Ruins. So that's, that's all moors and ruins or whatever. So basically that was the old, where Castle Ravenloft had been, right? So there's a castle that was built up uh, uh, beneath the cliffs, basically as the Barovia, the city of Barovia basically grew out in those, those hundreds of years. Well, should we call on Alexei? I mean, uh, yeah, if, if we can talk to him, I mean, that, that's, that's probably the safest place for the kids if he's willing to <clears throat> keep them somewhere safe. Well, let's get what going. about her mother? Oh, right. Um, well, maybe we can find her people and then we'll, you know, resurrect her there. That's a good idea. Okay. You don't think they'll be like freaked out that we're just coming back with her hand, right? I mean, they probably will be, but we just have to explain the situation. We don't really have a choice. Okay, I just don't want to get into unnecessary fights, you she, know. She died a hero. Yeah, but then they're gonna say, oh, you cut our hero's hand off? I don't know. I don't know the, you know, how they do things, so. That's fair. We'll, we'll handle it if they get up. Okay. Which way? <clears throat> you make your way into the city as you see that there's a, a handful of knights and soldiers that have been um, very grievously wounded. Uh, you see that there's a, a large um, medical station that's been uh, erected and there's people bustling in and out. Uh, of this area, you see uh, one soldier walking on a, on a makeshift crutch, um, probably after riding in a wagon all the way back to um, Barovia, and you can see that there is some sort of, through his bandages, strange necrotic wounds um, that seem to be spreading. Uh, but you see that there are several clerics and paladins of the Morning Lord doing the best they can to be healing this uh, horrible necrotic magic that the, the Shadar Kai had been using. Um, you are greeted by um, knights of the Morning Lord as they uh, you explain your situation to them and they welcome you and they, they escort you into the castle. And this is anything you'd like to do in the city before you before you head up. I don't think I. No, I think we would just go straight to Alexei. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this uh, this is a, a relatively uh, modest castle, very simple in its construction. Um, definitely a little bit bi uh, a little bit bigger than Castle Ramornia, I believe I said at one point, um, but not much. As you um, are are ushered past the the various uh, guards, you can see that down one wing there's a very 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 nice. Uh, uh, 
pristinely constructed and gilded cathedral to the Morning Lord um, that's been built on one one wing, and you're welcomed into the entrance hall, and uh, you see that there uh, is a large uh, a large portrait on the grand uh, staircase. As you see, um, as you see that there are uh, f four figures that you recognize in this portrait, and you recognize Berov von Zarovich, Ravanovia von Zarovich, and you recognize a younger version of Sergei, the slain paladin that was slumped up uh, as when you were in the memory with the knights and then the the warlord that you had killed Stradanya, uh very clearly a human very clearly uh, younger in that um, uh, these memories that you experience as other people uh, come back to you as you recognize people from different visions all in one place um as it hits you and, and you continue on your way and you're led to the audience hall. And the doors open with a uh, uh, a loud creak as you hear uh, voices discussing. As um, you see uh, Ervin Martikov, the, uh, the leader of, of this uh, sect of the uh, Order of the Feather, Right? Yeah, the Order of the Feather. The Keepers of the Feather. That's what it was. The Keepers of the Feather. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, the Glad Keepers of the help. Feather. And you see uh, floating just an inch above the ground the strange uh, Deva, uh, known only as the Abbot to you, uh, as they... Um, as they see you all enter, and there's various guards and other uh, officials from Barovia, as they step back, as Sergei um, sits at a very simple, it's not really a throne, it's just more of, of a um, a war strategy uh, chair, and he, st he steps back as he uh, stands up and he looks expectantly at you, as you return only five, when you had left seven. As you enter, and he says, I am glad to see you all alive. We did not know what had happened after Castle Gloomvale disappeared. Uh, that's right, well, we, we, we're all alive for the most part. What, what happened in, in, the, in the battle? Did, did you all win? We took massive casualties, but... We won once Castle Gloomvale disappeared. The many of the cowardly necromancers turned. Many got devoured by their own ghouls. It was chaos on the battlefield. But we survived and routed them. And we did not have time to conquer the city or or occupy it. But we prayed that it was the distraction you needed. We, I was trying every ability and power, communing with the Morning Lord, attempting to communicate through the mist. If that's where you had been to, to, to you, to Sofiana. I, where, where is Sofiana and Count Kreskov? Unfortunately, uh, they fell. And you see him just stop. How did it happen? They were, um, they fought valiantly against uh, King Vorak and, and um, the, the uh, Ravenovia, Esha's daughter was corrupted greatly by some sort of demon. I didn't really follow all of it, but she was a horrible monster, and Sophiana died protecting us while we were um, fighting Ravenovia and bringing them into her. So Sophiana was 
an impossibly strong warrior. She, there could have been 20 men in her place and not have done, have done as well. It, we're alive because of her. That's right. And Valeska, and he looks like expectantly. Oh, and he'll see, oh, thank you. You see Valeska, she was alive. We were able to. And the other children. These were the only two. Is this the one you were looking for? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's my younger brother. Valeska. And he he steps forward and he gets out of his chair. And uh, you see Ervin and the abbot uh, look <clears throat> at each other as well as some, several of his other generals. And they just all nod at each other and they uh, make their way towards the back of the room and leave out a door, uh, giving you all the, the audience hall and, and the large table. Upon then, seeing Valeska, they do this? Yes. Or his reaction to Valeska uh, as he steps forward and uh, he looks at this the sleeping girl and says, What did they do to you? She's still resting. She's still very uh, weak. She's a little out of it, but I think she's okay. She needs care. There's a lot of horrific experimentation and cruel torture. I mean, really evil stuff. All the other kids, they didn't survive. She did, because she's strong. And Milo, too. And the Carrion King. And the Princess. Well, the Carrion King is definitely dead. Good. Fortunately, they Still fell. Still on my boots. Good. We finished off the child, but some things happened, and we don't know where her body went, to be honest with you. But you saved the children you could. You brought vengeance, Peruvian vengeance. You finished the crusade we started. Sofiano would be pleased. And he runs uh, a hand gently through what you know to very clearly be his daughter's hair. As he hesitates and says, Well, vengeance acquired. The morning lord served the evil, vanquished the creatures of the night, burned in the light, and Valeska safe. It is all she could have asked for. And dying in battle is what she always wanted, I guess. Well, now that you mention that, um, we did preserve a part of her in case you wanted her, or her family, or in case those that cared about her wanted her back. And Iris has the power to do that. She does. Yes. Um... <sighs> Perhaps the, the abbot has the same, but Oris is willing to... And I'll bring, I'll remove from my, the bag the sort of her mummified hands. Or at the very least, we could maybe give her a proper burial here. A uh, shrine. Just, something just, to honor her. Instead of just leaving her where she fell. He looks and looks at Iris and says, <clears throat> I do not have the power to do that from just a hand. The abbot can very sparingly bring someone who has met a very untimely death, but only days, not from a hand. The hand is just there, like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for even with everything you have been through. So it is all over, then. I mean, what we set out to do is over. The reality of the whole situation is that we still have a lot to go. There are still threats. They're still evil. He stops and he nods and he looks at the hand briefly until he has to force his gaze away from it. And he looks at you and he says... 
it is not much, but you have a home in Barovia. As long as I am the Count, as long as I rule this land, you are free to come and go. This castle, these our resources, how we can help you for whatever is, lies next for you. You have saved our children, you have saved our people from the enemies that have lurked at the outskirts of our way of life for centuries. The fear that we've lived with since as long as I have <clears throat> had memories. You've put an end to that. I do not know what lies in store for Skethrenil, perhaps a an ambitious count that is not as malicious and malevolent as Vorok will rise. But I will serve no king, Carrion, or otherwise. Thank you. No, no, we, thank you. We, we couldn't have done what we did without all of your help and all of the people's here's help. Could you be, I mean, what's stopping you from being the lord of this land? Why do you need to be a count? His eyes open wider and he says, I guess I never thought about it before. I do not know how to rule all of these strange elves. We have our Dusk Elf population here, but it's a different culture. I, I, I'm interested in my people. I guess you don't want to get involved in all the politics. The risk I would be assassinated almost immediately. <laughs> That's a good point. Especially with all those cats. I would not authorize the use of undead labor that they have grown so accustomed to. Well, I just hope that you can keep your kingdom safe and that, you know, whoever replaces Vorok isn't even worse. I have a feeling there is not much that could be worse than Vorok. That's a fair point. I do have to ask, is there any way that you have a diamond worth at least a thousand gold pieces? We might have one, but I'm not sure. We were just down in the town. I thought you wanted to get a bunch of mirrors. Yes, in our chapel we have diamonds. Is that what you wish? Do you, these little ones need more medical attention from our clerics and healers? Well, they, that's... Uh, I don't want to speak for you, but... but uh, we have much to do to prepare for uh, the coming war. And um, it'd be great if you could look after the children and keep them here very safe, because Felix has been looking a long time for Milo. And it would just be awful to finally save him and have something else happen to him. I, I don't... I, I can't express how difficult it's been searching for him. And I, I hate to just leave his side right after I've finally got him back. You don't have a choice. There are things that are much bigger than all of us that we have to attend to. If I can be of assistance... And whatever you need, you let me know. I have allowed the evil to conduct its dark machinations unchecked for so long, I feel partly responsible. I can have someone guide you to our chapel and you may see what we have there we will heavily guard the children they are safe here no undead creatures no no werewolves no one will capture them while they are here in Barovia on this hallowed ground thank you I, we appreciate that and I mean one more thing is I know you've experienced heavy losses, but there will be more fighting to come, most likely. So, <clears throat> just lots of demons, presumably. 
Um, we're going to do our best to limit it, um, but we've just been warned that we should try to, you know, let as many people know as possible to start preparing. I mean, we have a week, maybe less. Demons. You will bless as many weapons as possible. Your, your morning lord would probably be really useful against... Yeah, demons. this is probably the best place. As much holy water Indeed. as we can. How many demons? Probably Our... like more than you can count. An this... army. Endless. Countless. More than the tide of ghouls. Infinite. Legion. <laughs> we don't Tom, know. Are you okay? <laughs> we don't know. We just been warned that it's a lot. <laughs> I would just prepare for worst case scenario. The goal is not to... For, for the people of this world to, to strike at them, it's to survive. You have to do what you can to protect yourselves. Don't go looking for a fight, just make sure that your people are safe. Yeah. All right. I will gather all of my, all of my clerics. We'll start producing as much holy water as we possibly can. Yeah. As many blessed weapons as we can. <sighs> Thank the gods of light for this hollow ground. Thank the gods for dragon fire. As he looks at all of you and he says, I'm going to meet with the high priest and the captain of my guard. The castle is yours to roam. Make yourselves comfortable. Ask my staff. They know who you are. And we also found your gargoyles outside of the beast food. Oh! Oh, are they still ours? Like, is that how it works? we were able to bring them to the castle grounds. Wow. That's kind of cool. They would let us fly all over the place and warn everybody. That's that not a bad idea. It's like really bulky carrier pigeons. Yeah, yes. Oh, oh but poor Esh. Well, no, Esh had Bocephalus. Where is Bocephalus? Do we know, that's out of character, do we know where Bocephalus is? You knew he flew off. I'm sure it's fine. We'll never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the follow, Guitar oh, Vamp. Thank you. Welcome, oh, thank you. Hello. Welcome, Guitar Vamp. Um, it's just a thought. I mean, I think we could take some time to rest and prepare and get Milo and, and Valeska settled in and get them, you know, get her acquainted with her mother again. Um, if this works. Um, all right, well, thank you. Uh, and can you have someone take us to the chapel? Of course. Of course. And, uh, you know what? That is rude of me. I will take you myself. And you can see that his eyes, that he, his eyes are darting back and forth. And he, uh, stands up and he, he gestures to the, the main door and says, oh, it is right this way. As he takes you through the castle, and you see now that uh, that you you go back in the direction that you came in, and you go down the wing that has that large cathedral that you had seen, and there are a few um, individuals, uh, very clearly um, farmers or, or or shopkeepers, that are there just kneeling in pews, make uh, praying to themselves, uh, or rather praying to the morning lord on their own, um, as you see that there's uh, all sorts of iconography of the Morning Lord, very similar to the uh, the images that you'd seen with the knights from the vision that you'd had. Um, as uh, you... As he takes you to a smaller offshoot room uh, that has a variety of uh, bottles of holy water, uh, various vestments and, uh, and and iconography and magical relics similar not dissimilar to what um, so, uh, Sofiana had kept with her the monster hunting the holy symbols of the morning lord 
and uh, you see that there's various uh, pieces of art, and uh, you see that there is a uh, small shrines of statues, and uh, you see that there is a statue that has uh, well, it's like a palin with a flowing. Uh, uh, blonde mane holding a sword made of sunlight itself raised up and you see on the plaque um, Count Sergei Von Zarovich um, and you see that there is um, a you see that there is also a there's also a very uh, or he leads you to a um, a uh, a wall that has all sorts of strange like bowls and gems and that sort of thing and Radiation he picks one up her. and hands it to you and says this is what you required is it with 1500 gold pieces well, no. I mean look at that thing uh, if you can, if I couldn't sell that thing for a thousand gold pieces then my name wouldn't be Capriccio Big Dick to Sesta <laughs> oh I mean yeah just a thousand gold pieces here you go oh thank you and I says, and this is the, these are the artifacts of our history. And, and you can see that we keep this guarded with our, some of our most skilled crusaders. This is, the Morning Lord is the reason why we are able to survive here among the living. As we've toured through these shrines, seeing tombs and and statues and and and, and experiencing sort of the history of the, re- of the relics yeah. of this castle, I'm looking out to because I have a memory now. I've I've inhabited one of the knights mm-hmm. that confronted Countess Stradania. Yeah. Do I see anything that tastes like? A memory of that, or, or or references that, or or tells that story in 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 the stone, or or anything along those lines, just out of curiosity, really. You think back, and you actually look out into the main cathedral, and you see at each corner of the room is a beautiful statue. In each corner, and there are statues of four knights, but of beautiful marble and uh, gold as you recognize the four knights that you had inhabited. You're so I can spot, I can point myself out yeah. and look and be like, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they are in very heroic and, and, and noble poses as, as he guides you out and you see that there's actually uh, two small doorway, uh, doorways off to the side where um, one, uh, where there's iconography of the Morning Lord everywhere, but uh, there's basically two doors that split off to the side, and one seems to be some sort of draconic eye that's wreathed in flame above one door, and another that has um, the profile of a raven head. Hmm. The lore bard in me smiles as I see these details, and I continue to absorb the history of this place as we as we continue to follow the count. Um, thank you for for the diamond. We should probably get the little one settled before we do anything with it. That's a good idea. <clears throat> so where will they be, will they be staying? Oh, uh, oh, this way. And uh, you you look through the, the the doorways as you pass, Caprice. And roll a perception check for me as you're as you're enjoying oh, this. Oh my goodness! As uh. <coughs> That's not my... Oh, dear. Oh. The perception. Oh, the perception. Um, I rolled a five, so give me a 21. 21. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, You... You look through the... um. You look through the, the, the doorway that uh, has uh, the strange draconic eye above it, and you see uh, that there's actually a small uh, tree. You see a statue of what looks like a um, 
some sort of uh, lizard type person holding a lantern. You see that there are also uh, on pedestals what look like strain, like very old uh, mechanical toys. And as you pass the um, the room with the raven, and I would say that being in, in knowing, this is very clear, the iconography of the raven. Actually, you know, you've been blessed by both. You recognize yeah. Garrix and you recognize, after being in, uh, inundated, basically the, yeah. the, the, the symbol of Garrix and the symbol of the raven queen, you look and you see that at the center of this room that has the raven queen on a large pedestal, there seems to be uh, in, a, in a, a glass case or crystal case shining with light like almost magically, uh, this simmering silver light, you see what looks like a large, um, a large uh, hairpin, a very large hairpin that is seemingly has been fractured and splintered, but also but refused together with shimmering uh, silver of some kind. Uh, and there's all sorts of writings as he uh, guides you through out of the chapel and these uh, these bits of history as uh, you enjoy that time. <laughs> As you enjoy that. <laughs> These relics, they're very sacred. I hope that they are well protected uh, in the <laughs> Me too. face of things to come. Yes, the hairpin there is the, what caused the great return to Avantris. It is, was able to shatter the hold of a god worse than evil gods. As, uh, and it says it was the power of, of death and love. This, all of this power, the power of the divine and of good, good, honest people, is why we have survived as long as we have. And this, the power of you all, good, honest people, willing to do the right thing. And he guides you to uh, rooms. You're able to secure rooms for yourselves, uh, rooms for the children. Uh, any food you wish is brought up. Uh, as he says, make yourselves at home. This is your home. As long as you need it. Whenever you need it. Thank you. Um, and we make I sure will take we... the little girl. Yes. He does, and he looks at her, and he just... What did they do to you? We will find you a good healer. And he uh, he looks at you and says, Anything else you need? I don't think so. Not right now. Find me. And he turns and he leaves, leaving you alone. Okay, well, we should get Marlon settled. I would find a spot for him. I don't know, like a, you know, just like a place for him to, to rest and... Um, you know, where we could kind of set him up and let him know that if he needs anything, you could find someone to, to, to ask. Yeah, yeah um, you do that. You settle him down and he says, hey, Felix. Yeah, my love. This castle's a lot less scary than the last one I was in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, buddy. Uh, you're in good. You're in a good place. These are good people. Hey, can you check under my bed? Just yeah. for monsters and spiders. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're not going to be any can, that. Can, can you check under there? Yeah, I'll, I'll look right now. No, yeah. no, can you check under there? Under where? <laughs> God, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never saw that one come. Yeah, you got me. You got me good, Milo. That was good. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm really... I never had a brother. <laughs> Do you have food? This kid's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, I, I got some food here, and if you need more, uh, just call for, for anybody. I Do have... you think, because it's a castle, they have like a big roast turkey? I'm sure they do. Can I'm, you ask him for a big roast turkey for me? I'll do that. A I whole will... turkey? A whole turkey. Wow. Wow. And he looks around at all of you, and he says, you guys remind me of my friends that I need to introduce you to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah listen, buddy. Uh, uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be here for a few days, uh, presumably. Uh, I don't really know what the next week is gonna entail, but we're gonna have to part again for a little bit. There's some things we gotta take care of. What? I know. I know. Trust me. I haven't stopped looking for you for so long. He snuggles into bed. Like he he looks like a. 
it's almost comical with how much like the blankets and the pillows are around him. His head is just like this tiny little thing, like looking at you, especially with how small and like emaciated he is. And uh, he he says, "But I just got to see you again." I know, and and hopefully we'll get to spend some time together over the next few days. And but my friends and I have to take care of some stuff to make sure that everybody's going to be all right. <sighs> I know. Look, I'll let you know before we go. Uh, but we gotta figure out what we gotta do. And in the meantime, look, you can rest and eat all the turkey and that you feel like eating. Are you sure they're gonna bring turkey? Yeah, I, I'll make sure. Do you know if you swallow a pumpkin seed, it'll grow inside you and you die? That's not true. Your belly explodes. How many times have I had to tell you that, that stuff's not true? That doesn't, that's no, not how that works. My friend Jeremy said it. <laughs> Jeremy doesn't know anything. Yeah, you're right. He's an idiot. Look, yeah, you've been through a lot, all right? Okay. Get some rest. I'll get the turkey. It'll be here when you wake up. And I, we're not going to leave without letting you know. I'm, you know, I'll let you, as soon as we know what we're doing, I'll, I'll fill you in. Okay. I'm waiting for the turkey. His eyes are just glued on the door now. <laughs> all right. You, you wait for the turkey. I'm waiting for the turkey. I'm going to, like, slowly get up off the bed and, like, take a few steps backwards and be like keep waiting for the turkey <laughs> do you know turkeys are really great dancers what <laughs> yeah they dance and then it brings rain turkeys can't dance well what would you know you're just a nerd that reads books yeah I would know a lot about I get turkeys. all my facts from my dreams have you ever seen a turkey dance you don't know that I haven't I would bet a lot of gold pieces you haven't. But you can't prove it. <laughs> That's you got me true. there. You got me there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. You got you there. Mr. Knowledge Man, you <laughs> just, can't prove it. Just stay in bed. Okay. And the turkey will be here soon. And it won't be dancing. Oh. I'm right behind you and I slap you on the back. Remind me to tell you about Newton's laser sword one time. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Milo? Yeah. I, I don't know if you know me. I'm, I'm Caprice. Oh, yeah, I overheard. Yeah, I'm Milo, by the way. Uh, I'm Milo Ackerman. We didn't really have a time to do a, a official introductions. I'm, I'm sorry. Here, please. No, I, I just I just want you to know that uh, I'm here to help uh, take care of your brother and make sure that we're all safe and good. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I put a gold piece on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the bed. You know, if you ever need anything, you know, I, I, you should consider me a friend. I can tell you jokes. I can I can sing songs. I can dance. I can, I can uh, you know, I can turn into whoever you like, very literally. What songs do you know? Oh, I know all kinds of songs. I mean, you don't get me started. It could be fucking no, three No, please, don't hours. get him started. <laughs> hey, get, watch your language. I mean, uh, it could be uh, F in three hours. Sing me your best song. Well, I thought I'd tell you a story, but if you want to hear a song, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> you, 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 Milo's choice. Well, I was calling you Red. You're, you're calling me Red? You're Red. It's Red. Blue mm -hmm. cat. Oh, I get it. Okay. Red, blue, cat, rock. Well, I can sing a song if you uh, want to go to sleep or something. In fact, it even has red in the chorus. I have to wait for Turkey. Well, I'll be I'll be back to sing that song when Turkey has arrived. Also, let's stay away from anything like Fall Suckball Mountain. <laughs> Suckball Mountain? No, don't repeat that. Don't repeat that. That's not nice. Suckball Mountain? Stop saying it. <laughs> what? What are you? Should I stop? Should I stop saying Sepball Mountain? <laughs> Milo, Felix. Just because you've been through a lot doesn't give you free reign to be uncouth. I think I heard Mr. Mendel call you Suckball Mountain. <laughs> you're, 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 you're being really cheeky. Roasted. <laughs> like that turkey that's coming, and also cheeky's good. That means you're feeling better, right, Milo? I'm feeling a little better. All I've right. been eating this whole time, but it's not a lot. All right. I think I, have, I had a dream that I was like a bird or something. Is that why you have a taste for birds now? Am I a bird cannibal? <laughs> I don't. I, Whoa! Is he a bird cannibal? No, Felix? he's not a bird cannibal. He's, oh. he's a normal human child. Okay, well, just I mean, he brings up a good point. He might be a bird cannibal. 
He's definitely not a bird cannibal. You can be whatever you want. I put another gold piece on the, on the bed. <laughs> can I be a bird cannibal if I want? I mean, sky's the limit, man. man I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to write a story about a bird cannibal. I'll read it. And I'll, maybe I'll make a song about it. You got any more gold? <laughs> you, why, just, why you just be good. Why are you giving him gold? Do you have any more gold? So we can buy you candy. You know what, boys that age? You think he's buying candy? <laughs> what is he buying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the cap. I know cap what I was middle. buying at that age. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Different story. <laughs> um, all right, let's 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 figure out what we got to do. I'll have him send you food. All right, just stay here and rest up. And if you need anything, call for somebody. They'll send for us. All right? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for the turkey. Yep. You wait. promise, Felix? I know. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Milo, what's wrong? Oh, uh, I'm sick. You're not sick. Are you sure? Are you feeling all right? Oh, I'm what? dying. What are you doing? And I'm gonna like. Are you grab his, I'm gonna like grab his face and like look at him. What are you doing? Let's what's get, what's wrong? Get an inside check. <laughs> oh shit! I know what's happening. <laughs> I rolled very poorly. I'm probably not insightful at all. Seven. Uh, it feels like he's like choking or very ill. Uh, I have a twenty-nine, but I'm not. He's it. very clearly faking. <laughs> he has got a natural twenty on his deception check. Wait, I think he's fa- I think he's choking. Yeah, or like he's like he's very sick and like he's struggling to breathe. Yeah. Um, I would immediately like I would <laughs> like I would him? immediately like stick my finger like in his mouth and like try to like oh. depress his tongue. Oh, and, like, I take him back. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was messing with you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> You're gonna make me throw out, you weirdo. Yeah. Well, that's what you get. Try to wash you your hands that? before you did that. No. Oh. And that's exactly the problem. <laughs> Yeah, emergencies call for emergency situations. Oh my god, fine. I need turkey. That was very Haven't cheeky. you ever heard of the little boy who cried wolf? Oh no, but there was a story about the little girl who cried, who cried werewolf from some of the kids. It's a spin off of the original from my tale, friend yes. Leska. Well, do you know how it ends? Uh, no, she never finished it. Well, I'll tell you. Auntie Lufty will tell you how it ends. When little boys and little girls pull shit like that, they get fed to the wolf or the werewolf, depending on the story. So, you think about that. Yeah, you better watch out. Never do anything like that again. (laughs) Yeah, I never will do anything like that ever again. That's good. I can see I've put the fear Mm -hmm, of... mm -hmm. Something in you. Yeah, I'm werewolves not sure are not what. cool at all. I would never want to find one or meet one ever. Definitely not. Never. Well, you'll just have to stay out of all of the woods surrounding this castle. Okay. Yeah, definitely don't go to the beast wood. Yeah, Why don't go, go there. The, the beast wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, di- no, no. The, the definitely don't whole song go there. Of it. What? <laughs> I mean, I did, but he I will. sits up now. <laughs> he's now sitting up. He was like very clearly ready for bed. <laughs> now he's sitting uh, up. <laughs> How about maybe uh, Caprice tells you that story now and you go to sleep? Yeah, tell me a story. Tell me a bedtime story. You want a story? Are you up for that? Do you think you could maybe, you know? All right, all right. You got to sit back down. You got to settle in. You well, got to close should, your eyes. Now that we mentioned the Beast Witch, you could probably sing the song about not going there. I The Beast Witch song is not a The Beast Witch sounds like such a cool place. I love beasts. <laughs> I, will t- I will sing you the Beast Witch song tomorrow. Are I there promise. giraffes? I, the, you just going to have to wait to find out. Are there giraffes in the Beastwood, Felix? There are no giraffes in the Beastwood. It's a very <laughs> dangerous place. Are there geese? No. Oh. There might be. I don't know. That seems <gasps> more reasonable. You said geese? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Please but tell geese a story. are really mean. Right. They're almost worse than the it's werewolves. It's a little mature. Oh, come on, oh, Caprice. But, but the, the, the gallows humor of it, after everything that Milo's been through, I think is just the right thing. Fine, just don't repeat anything you hear this guy say, all right? Okay. He's not a very good role model. That's not very good. All right, this is not a joke, all right? This is the story. A paladin, a cleric, and a prostitute walk into a tavern. <laughs> Sounds like a joke. <laughs> this is just a story, all right? All right. They Wait, sit- what's a prostitute? No, 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 no. It's, it, uh, uh, it's just for the sake of the story. Uh, it's your uh, I'm at a loss here. What happened? Uh, this is a woman who uh, uh, gives uh, massages for coin. 
That's good. That's good. That's a good way to describe it, Caprice. Thank you. Carry on with the story. Uh, the paladin, okay. the cleric, and the prostitute, the uh, massagist, uh, masseur, uh, they sit down, and the barkeep is cutting limes, and he says, hold on, I gotta go switch out the ale barrel. barrel. And he, he, he leaves. Uh, the paladin, he starts talking. He says, he met a man who told him that he no longer believed in their god. So I explained to him about the fires of the nine hells of eternal damnation and instilled the fear of our god back into the man. The cleric. He says, you paladins and your fear. I had a similar man come to me, said cleric, I no longer believe in your god. However... Our dogma teaches us to explore and question our faith. So after some conversation and my wise counsel, he came to his own conclusion that he believed in our God. Then the paladin and the cleric both look at the, uh, the, uh, the, masseuse, uh, the masseuse and says, What about you? How would you make a man believe in our God? And the prostitute picks up the knife that the barkeep was using and says, Oh, I just introduced them. And she stabs the cleric's hand, pinning them to the bar. The paladin oh, makes a run for the door. Her tongue extends out of her mouth, wraps <laughs> around his ankles, and pulls him down to the floor. He digs his fingernails into the hardwood, but it's of no use. She reels him back in. Her jaw unhinges, and she begins to swallow him whole like some great monster. He screams as his feet and legs begin to dissolve in her stomach acids. <laughs> By the time she gets the paladin all the way down, the cleric has freed himself. They're holding the knife and says, Young lady, I don't want to hurt you, but if it means saving my life, I will. She lunges towards him and he stabs her in the belly. She looks down and smiles and pulls the knife deep inside of herself. The knife wound opens and wraps around the cleric's hand and begins absorbing him, arm first, then the head, then the rest of the body. And now that she's consumed both the paladin and the cleric, her arm and leg bones begin to crack like firewood and her ligaments and head suck inside of herself. And then the barkeep. <laughs> comes back inside and he sees this mound of pulsating flesh there at the bar. He walks over to it and sees the the, the, the masseuse's uh, belly button right there on top. It begins to split open at the seams and peel and then out emerges the head of Gorgon Ramses. It was another episode of Tavern Nightmares. <laughs> oh, you had three customers here. You didn't take their orders. The limes should have been back before you, before they should have been done before you opened them. You're back there ding-donging around with ale barrels. You should have been taking care of the customers that were here at your bar. Not to mention you left a dangerous night Knife. And tell me you're gonna be held liable for this! Shut it down! <laughs> Boy, was he heated. <laughs> Stunned silence fills the room. What the hell? Milo Don't blinks. Milo blinks and he says, I would like turkey now, please. <laughs> oh no. Thanks, kid. I put another coin and I start to make my way out looking for turkey, I think. Oh, God. I'm just, like, staring in, like, absolutely, complete, like, stunned silence. And then I just, like, turn towards the door and I, I, look, and I look at Milo and I say, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get that turkey for you. And I just <laughs> proceed to the exit. You do that. And you leave him behind and he's like, I'm gonna wait for turkey. <laughs> as soon as we get outside in the hall. Oh. What the nine hells was that? Yeah, seriously, what was that? I told him a story that was just, like, ultra-violent to just, like, wipe clean everything that was going on. I, th 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 that, th that's obvious. Was it? What I don't get <laughs> is, why was Gorgon Ramses also the prostitute? Oh, yeah. Well, Gorgon Ramses is a spirit that haunts the, the, the city of Galtica. <laughs> he shows up in many taverns. He, his, his form can, can take any appearance, really. That sounds terrible. And he just, like, eats people? Oh yeah, no. I mean, uh, uh, among many things, uh, uh, until until we had this whole adventure. Honestly, the, he was probably the thing. He was my um, 
uh, uh, Crab Man. Uh, what, 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 what's the name? Hector. Hector H- Man Crab. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know my spine was broken by him, but loud. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my Hector Man Crab. You know, uh, 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 just happy restaurants or taverns or whatever. They'd be, they'd be uh, doing their thing, family owned, what have you. All of a sudden, their food would start to rot, or, or their, 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 their customers would suddenly get really upset with them all the time for no reason, and then the apparition would appear. Uh, th- this was a, a story about that, but I, I, I sort of livened it up and uh, made it kind of fun. He he seemed into it. He, did, 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 didn't you see how he like pretended to choke for a moment? Kid's bright as hell. He's he's fine. I I, I look what? around and I like to hopefully just like find a, a like a an attendant like <laughs> passing through the hall and I hey. just stop and I say, uh, can you can you get my my younger brother some turkey? <laughs> Turkey. Not like a slice of turkey, uh, or like a whole turkey. The kid's hungry. Is he thirteen? Yeah, but you know, he'll, he'll eat it like it'll be multiple meals. Just he's been through a lot. Count said whatever you all wanted, and he shuffles off. Thanks, again. I appreciate it. Anyway, that was Greece. that was my reasoning. That was my reasoning. <sighs> he, he's he's, he's He's clearly on the threshold of maturity. Now's not the time to be baby handling him and 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 and, and pretending like he's been through a whole horrible situation. He, it's time to it's time for him to be like, oh yeah, that was fucking awful. But guess what? Life goes on. I hope you're right. I don't disagree with that. That sounds okay. He's been through hopefully the worst experience of his life, and it's all up from here. Provided we win. Jeez. Yeah. Right. Provided we win. But I think I know we're going to win. We've won every time so far. All right. Uh, hopefully he gets his turkey and he gets some sleep and some rest. And turkey. then, uh, you know, we got to figure out what we need to do. Turkey is rich in tryptophan. That's true. So he'll probably have a good snooze. Knock him right out. <clears throat> what's, uh, what's on the docket for us? What's next? Honestly, I'm kind of craving some turkey now. I don't know if you guys are hungry. <laughs> yeah, gosh. I mean, I could eat, I guess, yeah. Let's do that and... Uh, Figure out what we need to do for the next two days. Let's pretend that we only have three days left. Just in case we only have three days left. And if we have more time than that, then we've overprepared and we're fucking uh, effing great. I mean, as long as the kid's not in your shot, it's fine. Oh, I thought that you were the... Oh, no, 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 okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> as long as we're... We'll be fucking great. You perplex me. I really like Toa's idea. Maybe not sending gargoyles, but we should send some messages around so people are ready. Couldn't hurt. I, I just, like, I'm a little concerned about what's going on in Zentra. I mean, uh, who do we even contact? I, if we could send them a raven and let them know what's happened, I think that we need to do, at a high level, they at least need to know that, uh... Fuck a raven. They're... We have magic. We can just send messages, yeah? It's, it's nothing saying that anyone would even believe us. I, I mean... There's got to be somebody in Zintra you trust. Or, well, n- or nobody, I don't know, that place kind of sucked. Honestly, the Ravali's only- the only person I trust, to be honest. And he's not even there, isn't he's he? Not- he isn't Kai? Right. But I mean, we should definitely let him know what's going on. Um, we can try to contact... Man, there's so many people. And all of their names are just fucking <laughs> right out of my brain right now. I mean, now. it was only four years ago. I'm really um, fading past here. The, the, only, the only person I can think of are the prostitutes that we talked to. <laughs> no, anyway. I'm thinking about Prostitutes, Hart. we met Hart. along the we way. Had a, we got a contact heart. Uh, there's uh, got to be more true. people in the in the in Urios that we can contact and, and let know. Yep. There's, um, there's Hart, <clears throat> there's... Uh, the young Al Folk man who who was who was a real upstanding owl folkman oh, yeah, yeah isn't he wasn't he he was uh, became a new leader after he was we, so sweet i exactly can't remember right. his name yeah we were kingmakers that day oberos that was cool. i think right? oberos yeah that sounds fright to me i don't know was it <laughs> thanks i said oberos, yeah, oberos out last oh that's exactly right yeah do i remember that uh um so i guess that saves us the trip of flying around all those places right right i mean it'd be nice to have i mean should we let um Brutus know about what happened to. Mm. What? I'm concerned about what would happen in the castle if Escher should return after his dealings. We don't know what what he's up to. I would be lying if I said that I wasn't concerned about that as well. 
Isn't there, if we signal to Brutus, wouldn't he necessarily pass that on unknowingly to the Count? Should he already be back and acting like normal? Well, maybe we, maybe that's one place we do fly. We know it's not that, I mean, we know that's it's a true. bit of a trip, but we could just fly over there and just take a quick look, see if he's back. I would like to talk to him if he was back, because necessarily, he probably made some promises. So maybe, okay, we'll send messages to Rivali in Ograkai, he can warn the orcs. We can send a, me send a message to Oberos to warn the owl people. And then, and, and Hart maybe to help as well. Um, and then, I mean, as far as Zentra goes, all of those, you know, military types kind of creep me out. Wasn't there a, um, disciplined woman who was very special and professional that we talked to? Uh, uh like, uh, uh, second under... Was she horribly killed or, or not? I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> Most of them are. Uh, so the, there was one guy. There was one guy that we God. dealt with right before we went into the, into the Erios. Uh, he was like, you know, supposedly okay. Uh, he was kind of a dick, and I can't remember his name. When we were in Bradley Zentra, Furman, that's General right. Bl Bradley Furman. <laughs> He's still alive, right? He's alive. Uh, and then I'm trying to think. There who, was the woman. There was he a led woman us to Urios, who, right? Yes. He was like the the, the, the forward general. He led us to Urios. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who you're referencing. The woman who we had to convince to take us to Zern in the I first place. Who you're talking about. When uh, we uh, were, General Pardiso. 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 Yeah. Pardiso. Was okay. she? Is she still alive? Yeah, she was still alive. We trusted her, so we could we could message Portia. her as well. Yeah. Portia. The only one that we killed was Kujada. 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 Dead. And Chumley got executed. Well, oh, I was going to say there were, there were several Gross that... Chumley got executed. I was going to say there were definitely some that got, like, busted for war crimes. Because, yeah. they, you know, there was, like, all these shady dealings going on. Right. Um, we got we got friends. Yeah, so Portia's another one that we can message out of character. Because um, I'm not using my Felix voice at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Um... Well, I mean, we didn't really... I mean, everybody else that we dealt with was in that sort of, you know, in the slums. Yeah. At the... At the oh, what about that guy, Zelik? Oh, that no, was... that was just Zern. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he got the Zelik. <laughs> um... Yeah, I... Uh... You know, I, I... I don't... I don't really know how we're gonna get stronger or, or prepare for any of this in, in one week, and... I'd be lying if I didn't say that I wasn't thinking about, you know, the, the, the power that was held in those amber sarcophagi. I mean, there's a lot to harness there. No, I know, but no, they're, they're horribly evil, Felix. I mean, that's, no, they strike that from your mind right now. It's, 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 that's a terrible idea, and usually you have great ideas. That is, a, that is a excuse my language, fucking horrible idea, Felix. <laughs> I don't, I don't wow. think there are any bad ideas right now. We're dealing with potentially the end well, of everything yeah, that we know. None except that one. That one is a bad idea. That one's a really bad idea, Felix. I mean, we turned into horrible demons. Look, you left a trail, a slimy trail. <laughs> oh yeah, and there was, was a gross. lot of power there. And I liked that it was gross. I'm just saying. I was very big and strong and angry, and I didn't like being angry. I, just, I don't know what we're going to do. We're really, I feel like, at a severe disadvantage here. I have at least one thing that I can be doing over the next couple days that could give us an edge. What's that? Well, I, I'm going to need to get a, a bunch of snow, and thats it's the reason why that I, I asked for that, that ruby. But uh, I may be able to uh, create a form of backup for ourselves. Snow? Yeah, like in okay. order to create a kind of a, a construct through my magic. It's going to be my magnum, mag, magnum? magnum opus. Okay, uh, magnum that's good. Pie. That's good. How, how long does it take to prepare this? Does it melt? Right. You make it out of snow? I'm going to have to sing for 12 hours without stopping. <laughs> wow. Um, you are gonna need when to do you want to start that? Well, we should start it as late as possible. Before the danger begin, if if we could just target when the danger starts and then twelve hours before, then that would be ideal. That's gonna be tough to time. It's a tough target. It, I know, and that's part of the rhythm. And I'm gonna incorporate that into the song. It's gonna be hard to sing for that long. I'm gonna need a lot of water. 
Are you allowed like breaks to use the bathroom, or you gotta like sing the whole way? <laughs> it's through? the whole way. It's the whole thing. Okay. You know, it's like it's like working the. Uh, uh, it's like working on a roller coaster at Six Flags. You, you can't you can't fucking leave for for a bathroom break. You don't get any food or that water. Awful. <laughs> you see, <laughs> as you walk through the castle, uh, sounds like hell. <laughs> uh, you, there's like motivational quotes on. Uh, like motivational quotes on the wall from like Barovian history, and you see one that says, "A little shit in my pants won't stop me, Stratania." <laughs> Silas <laughs> Burn Morgan. <laughs> Take that, Stratania. <laughs> but uh, it's my impression of Rich doing an impression of Shepard. <laughs> well, that's. Anyways, if I can, if I can succeed in the spell, oh. then I will create another me for how long forever until it's dead like what what he does don't you do that a little oh, i mean i was just like mirror images they're they're they're, they're illusions you can create an illusion or you can create an actual other you i can uh, i mean i know i can do illusions i can be me i can be you i can be whoever you like but uh if if you with this spell in particular I'm, i'd spend a tremendous amount of energy and i'd consume this entire like this ruby that we got from azzy right <laughs> oh, Jesus. you too and then <laughs> and then we uh, from the from this note, a version of myself with all of my abilities, all of my spells would appear. I, I, I'm sorry, I have a lot of questions. This is fascinating. Is there like what if it can it think for itself? What if it goes rogue? It is obeys. There, it obeys my commands. But so it, it listens to you. But I can tell it to think for itself, and uh, it, it, it would have Don't the same that. spells that I have. Are there moral implications for creating a, a, an exact copy of yourself? There are sexual implications. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I was asking. That. I mean, what? What's wrong with you, Caprice? It's totally different. What? Why would you say that? Why would? I, why wouldn't I say that? You're not curious. You did, if you had another toe right here, you wouldn't be like. No, I wouldn't. Really? That's the difference between you and me, Toa. It just seems. I'd be all over other me. No, it just doesn't seem like there are two very distinct camps in this, in this, <laughs> this debate. <laughs> Iris is on my side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, I mean, hey, look, that sounds powerful. Uh, and reality fabric bending. I, I'm, I'm blown away. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just excited about the harmonization. Like, think about what songs we could sing. Oh. Oh, that sounds so cool. But I don't want to trigger it too that. prematurely. Yeah, I know he lasts forever, but uh, he, he, once once he dies, he dies. Like, uh, he, we, he, can't, he can't heal. We can't cast magics on Wait, him. Wait, he lasts him. forever? Yeah, yeah. If he never took any damage, he'd be around for 100 years. Well, what about... How long will you be around? die of old age? I don't think it ages. I think I age. You're messing around with some really powerful magic. Well, we're getting up there. I, 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 I just, I've been working on this one particular song for a long time, and the more and more I started to get into the chord, chord progression and the harmonization, I realized this isn't just in the same way that when I strike a, a chord and someone gets blasted ten feet back, you know? What's the difference between that and a 12 hour version of that that creates another me. A lot. So, hypothetically, if if you died but it didn't, should we like just be it, its friend or I would hope that you would feed it and take care of it. <laughs> I mean, Give it a little kisses on the cheek. Caprice, you're a lot more than just a pet, and what you're describing is that the second you is basically yeah. just a pet. Well, I mean, he, when do you he not shows, see the moral implications of this? When he shows up, he's probably going to be equally mercurial and, and cheeky. Yeah. What if he dies? No, you die without having given him uh, guidance. Is he just going to be like a potato? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> see, you didn't think about these things. I'm not going to die right after. As soon as. <laughs> As soon Maybe as he shows like, up, I'll give you guys him. all keys to the castle, <laughs> okay. and we can all drive the car, all right? 
Okay, that sounds fun. Holy oh, shit. I don't like where this is going. He's <laughs> like the tabaxi that he had, he summons it. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, that's all I got. That's everything. I, I don't have any other plans other than just to, like, be prepared for battle. So if I can be doing anything, I feel like that or... What other strategies or tactics we care about? Um, okay, so we'll send messages. We could fly over. Once we're done with that, we could fly to Castle Ramonia. Just make sure things are okay there. Um, and then I guess we just wait for further word from, you know, the Ruby guy. Mr. Ruby. Mr. Ruby? Ru- Ruby. Ru- Ruby. 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 Yeah, you know. Asmodeus. Let's call him Ruby Rod. Mm. He did have a big Ruby Rod, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen a rod that big, especially made of Ruby. Me not me neither. Yeah. Wow. Um anyways. <laughs> we could all hope to have a ruby rod that big one day. Jesus Christ. Imagine how powerful you'd be with <laughs> Anyway. Are you going to be the big bad? <laughs> You're going to steal this ruby rod and just suddenly just go around bashing people with your... Okay. You all called me stupid for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's literally fucking sour. I know we do this every fucking session, but it's sour on from Lord, from fellowship. Uh, it's so heavy, you need to anchor yeah. your elbow. Yeah, your elbow's tied to your side. It's very important. Yeah. I need to go back and see the scene. Maybe you should watch the whole thing. Nah, just that scene. No. <laughs> that we scene. don't have time for It's that. in the first two minutes of the film. So. That's yeah, I still I don't just, think we have time Then I can just that. go do something else. <laughs> Right, well, before we resurrect Sofiana, should we, like, you know, ask her family in the Vistani camp first, or should we just do it? <laughs> you're, you're, you're asking more moral questions that I don't have the answers to. I feel like Iris can answer that question. Yeah. Let's just do it. <laughs> I do feel kind of like, oh, he's like, oh, she died exactly how she would have wanted to die, so... You know, that's cool. How many chances do you get for that? I don't think that she would have wanted to die. I think she would want to be with the young girl and and her and her family and Well, okay. Yeah, I mean I know I wouldn't want to die. She has the ability to, you know, not come back, as far as I understand. Well that's true. She gets to yeah, we should just let her decide. It's like reincarnation, remember? At least Iris said that before she brought that orc back as that halfling, it was really up to the orc to come back and be a halfling. And he decided, hell yeah, I'm gonna be a halfling. I don't think he knew I, I he don't was think, going into yeah, a halfling. Well, I think he just knew he was coming back. Right. He I'm seemed a- pretty pissed about being a halfling. Oh great, I can't wait to get back to my giant teeth <laughs> and huge cock. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> that was what his life was like. Thank God he was able to redeem himself briefly. Is that what ghosts think about? <laughs> I miss my giant we do teeth. You? <laughs> I missed it for the few moments my soul was away from my body. Oh. This cleric has done a oh no. God. <laughs> oh yeah. We could have foreseen oh, no. this. <laughs> Uh, uh, I even live. What did I do to deserve? We were all this? thinking it. I just said it. That's all. <laughs> I don't. Think I, we I were. was not thinking that. But when, when, when an orc bot, uh, chieftain was transformed into a halfling, you don't think that was the first thing he thought of? Was no, 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 my God. no, no. It's not the first. thing. I don't doubt that it's not the first thing he thought of. I doubt that it's the first thing that I ever would have thought of. Uh, you all are, uh, you're in the castle wherever you wish to be as you're planning your next moves, as you're planning to prepare the apocalypse is, is beginning in a week, perhaps. Maybe less. Po- probably less. Um, so we gotta get the messages out, and we gotta 
prepare for war. Um, could so I, th- I think only Iris has message, right? So we'll have Iris send all the messages. Okay, I'll just burn all her spell slots real quick. Uh, so how many are we sending? Well, we many. counted. How many can we? Ir- Irios two. Yeah, two Irios, one to Rivali. One to Rivali. At least one or two to Zentra. Yep. Uh, probably just the one. So that's four. Yep. I'd like to send one to Kirsten. Kirsten. Oh, yeah. Can message uh, travel across the plains? Can we send anything to her mom? To uh, lift you from her Can it? It would say in the spell's description. I don't think so. I do not believe that. That seems very powerful. powerful. I don't think so either. Do you not have a message? Nope. Thanks, Iris. Uh, Is it second level or third? Second level. Yes, like two or three. Two or three for sure. Message, message, message. I don't see it. Does she not have it? Uh-oh. She better have it. Sending. Well, it's oh, it's sending. sending. Mess- message is the cantrip. Uh, is it? Oh, yeah, message is a cantrip. Yeah. But na 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 What the very message least? is a cantrip. Whoa. I have sending. Sending is third level. level. I have sending stones. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. What should I have? Oh, yeah, did I give you all rocky talkies? Yeah, I guess I did. That needs to stay Shell prepared. phones. They're called shell phones in Galtica. <laughs> God damn it. Thanks for sharing. It's a phone. I'm it's, it's phonic. It's, it's a phone. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Sending is third level. Wow. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So we are sending. So we have uh, definitely Rivali. Uh, okay. Or Ouroboros. For sure. Oberos, yeah. Oberos. Do we need to send one to Heart? Send yeah. One to I was just trying to be... Okay, we'll send one to Heart. I feel like this is the time to be like, hey, anybody we've ever met, yeah. prepare your anus. Uh, Brother Gruber. <laughs> bite the pillow. Yeah. This is not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> prepare your anus. Prepare your anus. Uh, Brother Gruber. Uh... Who else? The we, the two generals that we mentioned in Centra. Oh right, uh, we should do to, to both. Yep. So Furman and uh, Portia. Mm-hmm. So that's six messages that we've sent, and yep. I think that's it, right? Yes, and we're doing this all before a long rest. Yes, yeah. presumably. Well, we, we woke up and then like teleported, so we should <clears> probably have all day to like just chill out and relax. I'm having turkey, but yeah, um, all, all the talk of turkey made me very hungry for turkey. Okay, so we send those messages. What is the I was the full context of the mm. message, just so I'm okay. clear. Oh. Uh Iris will say <laughs> Oh Jesus. Um I'm a cat. I am a cat. I'm a cat. Hear I am my a message. cat. I am a cat. I, I hate cat. Mondays. <laughs> but I do love lasagna. Um Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Prepare to it all in movie titles. <laughs> a new challenge. Oh, deep impact. <laughs> Armageddon. Apoc- Apocalypse now. Apocalypse. The day after tomorrow. Apocalypse the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. Dude, where's my car? Uh, <laughs> the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Oh, no, that works. <laughs> <voice. laughs> That's good. Uh, no, but, but actually it'd be a uh, great film. Incoming apocalypse in less than a week. Inf- oh. Infinite demons. Infinite demons <laughs> uh, invading Avantris. Prepare armies. Gather strength. Holy water. Mm. I mentioned demons. Yeah, it's... You know, if, if, if we, we don't know how to defeat demons, demons. Well, they've got no hope. What's a demon? <laughs> oh, spell Damon? The fuck? Um, I don't know how many words I have left, but it would be something else like, uh, just it doesn't forget that. Anyway, word. yeah, that's it. This is not a drill. <laughs> okay, so you got it, got it. Basically, just letting them know that the apocalypse is coming. Yeah, prepare general, to yes. fight metric assloads of demons. No jokies. This this for real. <laughs> Six people across the van trip suddenly look down on their phones and see an Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the equivalent of me. Uh, maybe we could say uh, unchained. The chain god is is dead. Right, chain god is dead. Uh, 
something worse coming, you know. I, and we wouldn't mention Pazuzu, but maybe a greater demon, uh, in like coming. Good news is, <laughs> bad news. Is. Um, you hear back from Rivali. Uh, he says uh, he'll inform the new war chief, um, and that uh, he'll be glad to kill as many demons as possible uh, to avenge uh, Holnhar and uh, and the Lodge. Um, <clears throat> you get a. Uh, Did Holnhar die? Who? You, you know that the seal was broken. Right, we and actually so, don't know their fate. Oh, right. Did who die? Holmhart, the big, uh... Oh! The, uh... Oh. When we went to the lodge. The, the strongbow. The order and the, guy. And the, yeah, and the chick and the strongbow. The and daughter and the and the brother. And oh, the, God, the she's sister probably dead, too. Yeah, we, they, we, well, like, we, like, don't know their fate, but it probably isn't good. That's not good. I like them. That sucks. Well, I guess, okay. Well, <laughs> I liked him at first. No, the brother. I liked the brother at first, and then he was kind of old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he said, uh, "Avenge uh, them the, and, the, and the lodge." Uh, <clears throat> uh, you hear back from uh, Oberos. Kind of a lifetime ago. Yeah. yeah you uh, you message uh, Oberos, <laughs> and he says that they will have their um, aromancers uh, to use as much protective uh, magic as they can. Um, to hopefully fight back against the demons, and he's appreciative. Uh, Hart says that you know she'll fight to the last breath, and she promises. And hey, how are you? Do it right, hey, Mike. Say hey, it. how are you guys doing? Are you gonna? Oh, I'm gonna give out. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna fight to the oh, last man. breath. I'm gonna fight. This was so nice. I miss her little voice um, and her little face. Oh, we forgot to message Fartbox. Oh, no. Well, we could always have Vyra send him a message. I don't know what he would add besides, oh, I'm worthless, and I was supposed to die. And my name's Fartbox. <laughs> my name is Fartbox. We should also send a message to Zorbeck. What about him? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 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 Iris, Iris, can you send a message to Zorbeck? If you've got the energy for it, can you just be like, fuck you. <laughs> Oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, I have to get that checked out. <laughs> Zorbeck has seen things in corner of room. <laughs> uh, the shadow people again. <laughs> you message Jamity and, and all. Oh, yeah, right, Jamity. Jamity we could have done a whole bottle episode. Ooh, loan, perfect. P Daddy. Why didn't we think of that? That's Dude. really good. P Daddy. P Daddy. That's really good. Oh. Or P Diddy. We still got time. We got time. Uh, you, uh, way better. <laughs> you hear back from, um, <laughs> you hear back from a uh, Paradiso, uh, General Paradiso, and she, uh, says, Oh, to those two. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I say, think we, should... we would mention Zern's fucking dead. Uh, Zern is dead. We won't tell him about the demon thing. We'll say Zern is okay, dead. Okay, so not about the demon thing. No. Okay, we're not going to mention that he he turned into a horrible demon and whatever. Okay, we're just going to mention like the demon apocalypse. They're bits. still an apocalypse. Oh, yeah. they'll mention the demon apocalypse, yeah. but we want to let them know that Zern is dead, just so that like if there's a fake Zern right now, like Pazuzu pretending to be Zern, now that we know that Pazuzu can like deceive, we want to let them know that Zern's dead. She's um, like lying in bed next to a Zern right now. Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear from Paradiso. Uh, you hear from Bar- Pardiso and says the the uh, the remnants of the Horn Legion, uh, uh, Zentra. Uh, I'll uh, I'll let the I'll let the high. Um, he says I'll let the high general know. And you hear back from Furman. We are already aware. Stand down. Stand no down. further action needed. Bullshit. I hate that guy. Fucking hate that guy. That's great. What Everything's good. Hell? I never liked that dude. To be fair, just to just to to be fair, someone we were speaking to mentioned that Zentra was like no good. Was it was it Asmodeus, who said something about Zendra, and because he suggested Barovia instead, 
that you'd have no. Fr- yeah, they said that you'd have no friends in in Zephyr. Yes. Okay. And so that's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. Pardiso that said that burn. mentioned that it was basically the remnants of the Horn Legion and Baphomet. I'll let the High General know. And we know. Weird. We know that the thirteenth seal was under Zentra. Yes. Right. And we know that the seal was broken. Yes. And we never knew why. We never and found we never out how. We never learned why. Yeah. Something's fucking in Zentra. Yeah. It has been it's since been day happen. one. It's Always happened. has been. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? Uh, one, two, uh, brother, 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 Oh, uh, oh, I miss you. I suppose we can spare drops of a holy ale. <laughs> oh, uh, the the Korahakians. The Korahakians. <laughs> oh, the French. Oh, he sounds good. He sounds like he's doing good. <laughs> he can't even string a sentence together. Oh, he's oh. good old brother Gruber. The demons may consume us, but we'll be full of holy ale. <laughs> oh, no, they may eat Grubers. us, but they would get drunk. <laughs> uh, Iris would add, also, how's Amos doing? Yeah. Oh, that's we a should. Great question. We should tell her family too. Whose family? Iris's family. Yeah. That's, oh, that's actually probably very reasonable. Well, I mean, are they gonna attack the whole world? I uh, guess they might. Yeah, it's apocalypse. It's not localized apocalypse. <laughs> oh, I, Iris, if you could also send a message to my dad, he hasn't heard from me in a letter form for like six months. I'm sure he's very concerned. <laughs> uh, you. Uh, you hear back, uh, we'll say that uh, Oemus is uh, alive and well, and uh, the newest member of our order. <laughs> Good for him. Nice. I don't know if you, I don't think he had the German accent. Oh, he didn't? I, I think he was just- Was he like, more like, oh, this honey ball? No, I think he was more, I think it was your, like your, your Gragas impression. I think it was more just like, oh, uh, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. We'll, we'll have, have to, to go, go back, back and watch. watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think it was German accent. Oh, check the but taste. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. It's been so many mutants. Yeah, it's been many Yeah, years. I'm just old honey ball. <laughs> um, yeah, it was yeah, like that. yeah. Was like <laughs> that. <laughs> Amos is fine. Yeah, that's the voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amos is fine, you demons. I'll dunk my hand in the holy air and smack him across the face. They don't scare me. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's him. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. Oh, and Amos is fine. He's finally apologizing with <laughs> acts of penance to the faith of La Bruard. It's quite nice. <laughs> He's taking to his studies a lot more dutifully than Lufty did. Tell her that. <laughs> Iris would. Yeah. In he doesn't mean way. that. He j- he's just joking. That's how we do things. You uh, hear back from Jamie, huh? Who the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> we do not want Jamie. No. <laughs> We're, we're, I wonder where, where Jamie is yeah, right she's, now. She's just, she's just she's she's on is another face continent. down yeah. in, the, in a ditch. In the gutter, <laughs> somewhere backwards on a horse. Yeah, no, literally, it's like the opening of season two of Deadwood. Yeah. We're like, you're panning to all of your allies, and Jamie's like, huh? What the fuck was that? <laughs> and just collapses back. I love it. Is that everybody? I think so. That's basically all of Striga. Well, I mean, I could let, you know, the Makani Islands know. I think you should. Be kind of rude not to, they're your family. Yeah, but they haven't heard from me, and if all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, hey, there's a demon apocalypse. No, I'd rather just deal with him and let them keep living in their peace. Just like die blissfully ignorant. Hey, man, some cat just told me that there's gonna be <laughs> demons <laughs> raining from the sky. That's pretty wild. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that doesn't sound very oh, good. The wind spirits will protect us, man. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Should we should we do something about that? Nah, it'll be fine. <laughs> That's fair. Just let them. Better not knowing. Maybe. Well, I mean, we could tell my dad in Galtica, but like, he wouldn't be able to do anything about it. He runs a music instrument shop. I, it's, 
He's, he's not gonna be able to... Honestly, Galtago will be fine. Of, of, of any of the places in the Mantris, they're the ones who give the most fucks about anybody coming in and giving them shit. So I think we're gonna be alright. So like cockroaches, they just, you know, they'll just... We, we are, we're we very the, independent uh, people. If anyone gives us what for, we give them right back. Yeah. Oh, like very heavily armed society. <laughs> it's like Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> the demons are going to be like, this place is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck right off. No, they've all got like fucking uh, 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 Flynn Flow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Shit. exactly. Whoa, we messed with the wrong city. They We're show up here. to fuck shit up. Oh, I can't believe it. You fuck with the demons. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. yeah. All the goths are there, they start snapping, yeah. and the demons are like, ah! <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about goths. You too. fuck with Caprice, you fuck with the rest of us. <laughs> Meet me out back of Spike like bat. gazpachos, eh? Bat with nails yeah. and chains and shit. Good times. Good times. Good times. Okay, so messages are sent. All right. Um. Well, we should maybe. Now that Aris has used all that magical ability, now she'll be ready to resurrect Sophion. Maybe we should do that in the chapel? Or should we just- hey, what else can we milk her for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else she got? Let me, let me look at her, let me look at her. <laughs> Shake her down. Let's look at her, 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 her step like, real quick. <laughs> Anything else we need <laughs> while she can't help it? Out. Put all your spell slots in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nobody gets hurt. Oh, we can have a summon a celestial. <laughs> oh, we can oh, talk to a good. celestial. <laughs> No, it seems kind of disrespectful. <laughs> oh no, just... this celestial can fly! It can pick us up and fly us around! Oh, that'd be so cool! Whee! You just do that. You summon a koala. <laughs> Fan snake. <laughs> snake. Oh, listen, you're not caught up what I was expecting. No, um, for, for an hour, I think Toa rides a snake around the castle. <laughs> yeah, we we yeah, The so never so ending <laughs> story! <laughs> 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 Ah. I like how you make dough into Cartman when he's like having ah. fun. Oh, Casa Bonita! Wow! <laughs> They've lived on us! Oh my god, they're so cool! <laughs> that the name ah. of the castle is Castle Bonita. <laughs> Holy shit. Welcome to Castle Bonita, <laughs> the city of Verona. Yeah. You can have the uh, complimentary <laughs> breakfast in the morning. You know? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, do you think we should we should maybe just find a room with the bed and just resurrect her there so that she's already, you know, at peace? Yeah, I think if I want was going to be resurrected, I'd want to be resurrected in the bed. Not like in the middle of a chapel. That seems kind of light. Uh, especially not in the middle of a chapel. You don't think that would be helpful? Maybe if it like chapel. Well, I guess it is her god. She might feel at peace, you know. Yeah. And presumably, she sort of snuck around these halls. No offense. You know, probably, they probably have some back doors and secret tunnels to get her in and, in and out, you know? I mean, no offense. What? I'm confused. Eh, it doesn't matter. Let's move on and focus on the resurrection. <laughs> so are we going to put her on a dais in Was the church, or are we someone? going to put her on a bed where she can be all comfy and whatnot? Oh, I live. <laughs> oh, you know, I thought that. Yeah, that's why she met half of the Raven Child, because she was secretly sleeping with Alexei von Sarovich. It goes in the, in the yeah. <laughs> <Avernus> <laughs> chapel. Sleeping, sleeping, Alexei, 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 Alexei. Pointy, 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 pointy. What do you think? What, what do you think, that? Iris? Let's, oh, do, the, let's the, do it in the church. <laughs> we go to the church. Okay, you do that. Uh, and I'll switch to chapel music here. It will help if she's closest to her god. <laughs> if there's an altar. Yeah, there is. Be true. Um, I believe it. Let me just do like a little bit of... Stands to reason. Hey, what do we do for... Uh... <laughs> Doing I think, Sanctum of I think we just had you do me. that over and over again for the whole oh. time. <laughs> the... You see um, several members of the clergy of the uh, Church of the Morning Lord uh, walk past you, and the church is actually empty as they are making their way deeper into the uh, rectory um, to presumably under the orders of Count von Zarovich, 
uh, to bless as much water as they possibly can. Uh, and it's very quiet. You see the statues of these knights watching over you. The, um, the smaller chapels to the other, uh, there's the two other gods in this, in this space off to the side. And there is an, an altar. Sorry, chap. Uh, if I smack the, the microphone, uh, you, uh, that the, there is, uh, an altar with, uh, bits of iconography and you see, um, uh, that um, it'd be very easy to get to, and it's, and and there's a number of like cups and other holy relics on that you'd be able to move if you'd care to. All right, well, yeah, we would just prepare a space. I'm gonna place the hand down on us on only this altar, and and um, you know, I, I'm guessing if it's follow her lead, if it's like the Catholicism analog, you know, I'll just sort of you know make sure there's the cloth down, and I'll put the mummified hand in the middle. And I'll sort of back up, and the, it takes an hour to cast. Okay. Um, and so... Catholics can resurrect it. Well, I would probably just, like, read a book and, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, Iris is working on this. I don't know the faith, so I'll sit in the pew and... Yeah, I'll sit next to you <clears throat> and hope for the best. Yeah. Um, I would I would stand, like, behind Iris, but, like, near enough where I could jump in and assist. And I know that Iris would never ask me to, and... I would probably just fuck shit up, but I would be ready to jump in just in case that one time she'd need my help. It's very tall of you. In case it kind of worked and the hand came to life, but nothing else. God, I should probably check. Iris, you need any incense? I can do one of these. Huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've got wine. It's not holy wine, but... It counts. It might help, I don't know. You want some wine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Grabbing the cups um, for the holy water. <laughs> do you want to read the spell just so you know? Uh, no. Uh, you don't need to. It, okay. It'll it'll work, right? Uh, Casting an chooses. hour and the durations and someone's after the hour it's instantaneous. She has to touch the hand. Uh, Ew. It it's just closes all mortal it. wounds and restores all missing body parts. And in this case, it's just all of the rest of her. Jesus. Uh, the target takes a minus four penalty to all attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. Every time the target finishes a long rest, the penalty is reduced by one until it disappears. Hmm. Uh, uh, so she's going to be really weak. Yeah. If she had been dead for more than a year, Iris wouldn't be able to basically do anything for the rest of the day. Oh my gosh. But because she died more recently, yeah, we're fine. Okay. Um, Iris places and she prays and she, she puts out some of her relics to um, Anubis. And... Uh, let me switch the Aggressive. <laughs> As the her eyes flash with gold, and they glow brightly as as you feel the power of the divine here. You feel the warm sand a whip around you as the light from the desert sun uh, fills the space along with the light of morning, the shimmering light of the Raven Queen even and the, the blazing dragon's fire. It feels as if there's this the combined divine presence. This is a, a very holy place as it floods the room and suddenly uh, this divine sand whips around Iris. Anubis returned to Arcadia, restored, is at full power now. Ankhotep finally uh, punished for his crimes as, it sw as the sand swirls around the hand and continues to form out an arm and then it, it, all, it turns into a pile and then it starts to shape as if a child was making a sand castle or a sand sculpture Whoa. as the sand forms the shape of a body. Damn. As the ritual concludes, as the eyes uh, final, the light glow goes out of the eyes and in a a, a gust of, of, of magical wind blasts through the space and all the sand disappears. And laying on the altar is the resurrected, unconscious form of Sofiana. Holy shit. I'll rush up to Sofiana <clears throat> immediately. How are you? How do you feel? Um, she looks at all of you. Let me put the chapel music back on. Cover her up. Oh. oh, she's probably... Yeah, I immediately oh, yeah, pull I out so. like, a, like a blanket, right? You do that. And I'll shroud. Yeah, there's like a, like a holy shroud somewhere there that I'll unfold. 
and I don't know if it's disrespectful or not to the religion, but I'm just gonna throw it yeah, over. Yeah, you do that, and as you run up to her uh, as you throw it up, and she uh, literally jolts forward and like stends a hand, um, as if to throw an axe or a, a dagger or a holy symbol uh, at a at a vampire child, and she looks around. And she almost like grips you, just having no idea where she is. No, 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 no! It's okay. It's okay. You, 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 you're, you're out of the castle. Um, you're, you're, you're safe. We've saved Valeska, and uh, everything is okay. Valeska is safe. She's alive. She's safe and alive, and she's resting in a room just down, down the hallway. We, we, we're back in Castle Barovia. Thank the morning, Lord. And she, the wait of being resurrected and you feel as if the weight of having everything with Castle Gloomvale and looking for Valeska finally has caught up with her in this moment of her rebirth in sand as she collapses into your arms. Can you pull back the veil and tell us in, you know, Gloomvale is still in the Dread Domain Yeah, and all her, her body minus the hand was just laying there. Does, is that body still there too? Yes. This is a new body, like mm-hmm. crafted from the weave. Yeah, interesting. Wow, it's in a state of deco- dom- decomposition. I, I, I would make the same adjudication or judgment as DM if I were my because it doesn't say anything about like the existing body. No, nope. no, it's, it's just a new, body. It's a new body. So yeah, in Harakir, holy shit, That's in Harakir kind of is up. Sophia amongst the corpses of dozens of vampire children. Uh, is there's some existential crisis? Her corpse there. is rotting while she's alive. Yeah, and well, yeah. It's kind of the ship of Theseus. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, and it'll probably, probably dry out a little bit, and like last a while. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a desert. And if anyone knew well enough and cared enough, they could have that body to use a scrying spell, and it would probably attach to Sophiana. But if you tried to resurrect that corpse, you couldn't because she's her soul's soul already back because, in the body. Yeah, right. It's you just, could animate it though. It's oh, oh you could. Imagine you just fight your like undead body. Ne- necromancy oh, villains are are super sexy and it's fucked up. It's a great up. concept. Super yeah. sexy and fucked up because of the chest that we just walked through. Yeah. There's a matrix. Holy permutations. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap her sort of tightly with whatever shroud that I found in the chapel, um, and I'll say thank you, Aris. This, this is amazing. Vless is gonna be so happy to see her mom. There's got to be a place that we can take her for her to rest. I mean, I can't imagine the toll that this has taken on her. Uh, you're, you're right. Um, here, let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick her up. And so I'll pick her up and I would want to take her to not the same room that Valeska's in because I'm okay. too much, but like the room next door. You do if that. there is one next uh, door. There is actually a nurse that's leaving, uh, Valeska's room as, uh, she, uh, follows you into the room and uh, offers her assistance as well, um, to look after, uh, Sofiana now that she's been resurrected. Yeah, and just keep an eye on her. She shouldn't be fully healthy, according to Iris, but, um, you know, she's been through a lot, and I left to implement, and so I'm gonna set her in the bed, and I'm gonna leave all of her... Oh, yeah. You know, Simon Belmont implements her whips and her crosses and her axes that do this, and you know, yeah. uh, her holy water. She wakes up and she starts doing this. <laughs> Does she find a pork chop in the middle of the wall for no reason? <laughs> There's the turkey. Oh, the turkey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a turkey in this wall. I'd eat it. She smashes the wall in Milo's room. <laughs> <laughs> My turkey. <laughs> Um, and then fucking death shows up. Yeah. Uh, so I would leave all of her Yay! stuff there, and but I would let the nurse know, like, I left some very dangerous weapons in there. I think she probably won't use them, but you know, just wanted to let you know in case she sort of instinctually grabs an axe or a cross or something. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> she eyes it. I will maybe apply some sedatives. Just in case. I think it's probably that seems idea. wise. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she needs to get her things. All right. Shall we fly? Fly, fly. It's a castle, Ramonia. That's the next step of our plan that we crafted. 
to the gargoyles. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Toa is doing really this. taking charge. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw holy water every, every uh, few feet just to make sure that there aren't any secret doors. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> okay, and then, and then when we're finally ready to travel, we all crouch in the corner until a tornado <laughs> comes over and picks us up <laughs> and then takes us to our next destination. <laughs> Simon's Quest! <laughs> Castlevania 2 on NES, bitches! Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm down was with the... In, was that in, uh... Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4? No, the, yeah, I was what I was referencing just now is a very stupid moment in Simon's Quest where most people got stuck. If you like rented it from Blockbuster, oh, you couldn't figure it what, out. what you were, you were supposed to go around and figure out from the NPC suggestions that you needed to pray at a specific spot in a, and, and then a tornado would take you to the next level. Well, like, like no hint. Who, who in a platformer is going to go into a corner and do this? Right. For more than a, a second, right? The, but you had to hold it for like ten seconds in order for the tornado to show up, and it's fucking horseshit. I don't want to derail. Remind me in Adventures and Chill of another instance just like that, another game, because Make I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, right just here. remind me. Remind me of the of the waiting. I have another one too. So we there's some good ones. About that. Anyways, uh, so are we flying? I think we should. I mean. It's only probably the middle of the day at this point, right? Or maybe yeah. afternoon. It wouldn't take us very long to get over there. I'm just worried about what we do if we do find Escher there. Well, It'll take you probably about a day if uh, to get there. A day of flying? <clears throat> uh, yeah, was that not what I said? Something. Again, it's been we, so We long. traveled on foot the first time. so it was, No, you it, flew on our goals to get to Barovia. Yeah, we did. No, 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 to, but... Am I have I missed plot? Oh, what, what you, castle were we going? To? Yes, you to Castle Romania, which is Ashford Castle. The first time you went there, you the were on foot. The first time yes. we were on foot because yeah. I remember we crossed the bridge and it was right. a, a bridge of nightmares. Right. Thank you. I'll say that with you <laughs> are feel crazy. like with the time being of the essence, you could probably get there into the evening. Do oh yeah, because that would chew up a lot of time to go all the way there and all the way back. Um, but not I'm not opposed to doing it. But hold on. I mean, they probably have, like, wizards here and stuff, right? Maybe we should ask if there's a teleportation circle somewhere here. And you can add it to your, you know, or, you know, write it down. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna do that. I'm a little tapped today, but no, I don't we mean, could come back. Well, I'm saying that you could write it down, we could fly there now. Yep, we can come and back. Just, we could have it. Now, I'm sure Escher has one in his basement. We probably should have, you know, checked before he maybe died. All right, well, we'll, uh... I'll talk to some people and see what I can find here. All right, and I'll go look for the gargoyles and maybe just meet me there. Just come back and meet us there, and, you know, if we decide to go, we can go. Roger. I will look for anybody attendance that could point me the direction of somebody who might know if uh, Barovia, you know, the, the greater area of Barovia in this castle, there is a permanent teleportation circle. Um, I would say that you uh, ask, and many people don't know what you're talking about, but there is actually a... Um, a sage uh, of the Morning Lord that uh, tells you that there is a small garden with um, a uh, that's in the courtyard with a uh, a, uh, a dragon flame tree, an Adelwood tree, where uh, oh, that, that trace into the ground. There is an equivalent of a tra of a transmutation sword. I would go there. And using my super mega brain, <laughs> memorize the seat. The yeah, it's actually you, the gargoyles that's out in the courtyard, so you're able oh. to all go together, and you see that off to the side by the stables, like the horse are like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and the gar... <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> and, as the, all, all the gargoyles are just completely dormant, just staring forward. Um, <clears throat> all right, well... Let's fly. Oh, what was the name of my gargoyle? Yeah, oh, I don't even know if I wrote that down. It would be so rude if I forgot. I, I have to go back past the Akurian dire animals. It's been a while. Past what what day was it? What session? There's icebound notes. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> uh, yours is Conobo, <clears throat> Rich. Oh, that's right, Conobo. Uh, Lufties is Lascivia. That checks out. Uh, I believe Felix has Loopy. 
But it's cute. I, and uh, Cogsworth is Caprices. Oh, that's right. I remember that guy. Great guy. And uh, Gerald is uh, Iris. Iris's. Yeah. Hey, buddy. It's great to see you. It's been a while. Hey, Codsworth. How's it going? You held up okay? As soon as each of you approaches the runes, you remember that there had been kind of like an alchemical binding but, to yeah. your essences. Yeah. They light up all over the gargoyles and they just... <laughs> and each of their unique gargoyle features uh, reacts to you very obediently and they lean forward, their wings uh, furl back even more uh, as they as they welcome you on if you care to ride. Yep. Um, real quick before we uh, before we get on the gar- gargoyles. Sure. Just between us, if the gargoyles start acting strange, because we still don't know where Escher's at, or, or and these are Escher's creations, we all need a plan to not die if we fall out of the sky. I, have I, we all have we all got that? I've got it. I got backup plans for sure. I don't, but I hope one of you guys saves me. That'd be nice. I will save you if that happens, Lufty. Lufty can I just can float fall. around, you know. Yeah, but we, we might be falling hundreds of feet. Can you well, survive then I'll, le- I'll levitate. She's 40% air. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm 40% devil. Iris, you got a plan? Okay, great. You're fine. All right, we're fine. Sounds good, Iris. <laughs> God, Iris, you're such a No, tragedy. actually, I need a lot of assistance. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'll, uh... Climb up on my gargoyle. Yeah. You do. And you feel the strings. There's the handholds, and, and they hum with the energy. And just in the same innate way you're able to use your own uh, magical abilities, you all have magic in some way or another, uh, you feel like you're able to harness and command these gargoyles. And they are very, they very obediently take off into the sky and fly through the air if you decide to fly north. Yeah, we'll start <clears throat> heading north. You leave uh, the... Valley of Barovia behind you. I'm singing the entire time we're on okay. uh, in the air. I'm singing, oh yeah, oh my my, I'm a stunning straight strike till the day I die. Drunk monk is the way I ride. And I uh, can do this for all of the classes, but I will continue to enjoy the ride. You ride through, and you fly through the sky on these gargoyles. The you see the dragon's fire trees, the Edelwood trees, um, shimmering in the sunlight as the sun is is, is cresting. Uh, um, I guess it's it's been morning, and you're able to. Uh, it's 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 in the daytime, and it's just this beautiful valley yeah. of golds and, and reds. As you fly north and leave it behind you, you. Uh, see that that uh, the various castles off in the small towns that have been built around them in the wilderness of Skethernil seems to be far less active. All of the, the undead caravans going back and forth, you don't see. Uh, it seems to be very quiet, strangely quiet. Um, and eventually the sun sets and the gloom uh, the gloom and swallow the sun behind you after you leave the valley, but the, the darkness gets more and more uh, thick and all-consuming as even the moon is shrouded by the clouds. As you finally see the silhouette of Castle Ramornia standing tall on the mountain that has been built upon the most remote castle of all of Skethrenil. Thank you. For the follow, Stargana, much thank appreciated. You. And Goblet's Warlocks, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. So great, great names. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Did did we know if Escher built this castle himself, or this was a remnant that came over and he just squatted it? <laughs> he was gifted it was by gifted. Vorok, okay. and he uh, <laughs> made the heavy modifications. I knew that he like did a lot of tinkering. I just didn't know if he yeah. like built it with his bare hands. He made all like the tech upgrades. Right, right. The, mm-hmm. He installed the traps on the bridge. Yep. He, he was in the traps he and the chemical fire. Brought to life the gargoyles. Yep. All of the interior would have been completely redone. Basically a reno, but you know, it had good bones. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's important. <laughs> oh, I had another question. Yeah. The Deva. Yeah. Uh, do they like die of old age eventually or are they immortal? They're immortal. So he he will just chill there forever. The abbot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean at least that as far as you're as far as, as, far as, as you're aware. Yeah, as okay. far as you know, yeah. Unless okay. he someone kills him, right? 
So if they, like we had killed him, they, right, instead of cleansing him in Strahd, right? So they, they can be killed. Yes. They're not invulnerable. They're just immortal. They're like elves from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Pre-Third Age. Gotcha. Invincibility okay. is a very rare and special thing in Dungeons and Dragons. I would think so. I would think so. Okay. That answer my questions. We fly. Okay. Fly, you fools. Uh, you see, um, as... Uh, it's very quiet as you see the, all of the gargoyles and the, uh, you know that uh, Brutus had been left in charge to create more gargoyles and there's uh, uh, dozens of them on the parapets built just leering off into the darkness on all sides. Uh, you'd seen many flying about but they all seem to just be completely dormant as you are able to land in the courtyard. Um, the doors uh, are closed uh, as your, your gargoyles allow you to dismount. Oh, here just, we are. Yeah, just keep your wits about you, and let's, you know, we don't know what we're going to walk into here. Uh, let's not act any weird. As soon as we see Brutus, we'll just ask him how things are going, and we'll go from there. Well, and if we see Escher, we shouldn't treat him like he's all of a sudden a horrible, evil guy. We know that Zone made a deal, and we know that Caprice said, you know, P-Man three times, and it didn't turn him immediately evil either. But so, we just need to be on guard. I, I, I know, but I just mean that we shouldn't be like me. No, I agree. He hasn't been transformed into evil. He may have agreed to evil, but that doesn't mean he's evil right now. I completely agree. I'm mostly interested whether or not that uh, Brutus was able to preserve our board game so we could return to... Uh, you guys remember? Yeah? We were, we were playing Knife Monopoly. Let's, couldn't we finish that game? We were like two rounds from the end. No, I think you were playing Daybreak in, in Emporium. The third edition or the fourth edition? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I wasn't playing. <laughs> Lufty certainly. Wasn't I feel playing. like we had pieces from three, and we just started. Uh, well, hopefully it'll be preserved so we can pick up where we left off. Because I can't remember at all. That was that was like eighteen. <laughs> Why don't we just say you won? Wow. <laughs> That'd be fine. I mean, you know, if you want to be a loser. Let's go. We walk into the castle. <laughs> this is where we can't play games, okay? This is where we can't have nice things. <laughs> we'll talk about it later, okay? <laughs> you, uh, you, you, uh, as you approach the stairs, you hear the, <laughs> the, the, the grinding of the doors as they open, and you see the, sm the long shadow cast uh, <laughs> uh, that's horned and winged with a swishing tail. <laughs> Oh, it's and just then you. you see the small form <laughs> oh, of the, the, the small goblin-sized gargoyle <laughs> named Brutus, Major Domo Brutus, and he says, "Oh, welcome back, friends. How, how was your trip? Harrowing, to say the least. How are things here, Brutus? Oh, things are really great as they've always been, keeping the castle all looking spit." Uh, spiffy for Master Master uh, Escher, and 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 yeah, absolutely. So he hasn't returned yet. Oh no, he's with you, all right. Um, no, he's not with us. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> talking about him on. now. Oh, no. oh, this it's all it's very close. flattering. It's kind of close, surprisingly. The both of these accents are kind of you know. Oh, you're pretty similar, oh, aren't they? I can talk, talk like this now from now on. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Tell why are you talking like that? Oh, That's sorry. crazy. Oh, here we go. Um, <clears throat> are you sick? You mean? You mean? Are you sick? You oh no, don't be sick. <laughs> I'm not sick. Oh, hey man. Got a good guy. Um, so unfortunately, um, Isha, uh, he's not with us because he is somewhere else. He, he, you really fucked up my accent. He's somewhere else. Oh, I'm sorry. Shall Just, I keep talking? Uh, you can keep talking. Oh, I left your board game is exactly where you left it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, I mean, for, for what it's worth. He helped us a lot, and we don't know that he's gone for good. He could be perfectly fine wherever he is, but we are worried about him and miss him. 
And and maybe he'll turn up. We, we... Oh, yeah, I hope he does turn up. That would be very nice. I would like to see him again. Just don't. But I'm uh... doing a very good job to uh, to to keep a look at the castle and all the blockheads, and we have plenty of magical reagent. All of the defenses are rearmed and cre- uh, even new uh, new uh, uh, armaments. Great. That's great. And yeah. Don't don't to the st- Don't stop doing that because he could come back any day. I think crucially, you you prepare uh, 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 defensively. Uh, you you think you think about what could attack the castle. You don't think about building machines of war or anything that could go out into Scathrinil or or into the rest of Striga. You just you just make sure that you keep a tidy home, something that is uh, defensible. Okay, a tidy home. We did just finally finish getting all of that soggy bread out of the guest room. That was a lot more of a tricky uh, thing than, than I thought it was going to be. I had to bring in some, some big guns. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I I mean, I've never seen so much soggy bread in my whole life, and I hope to never see that sight ever again. Um, well, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was a lot of bread. To, to be fair, it was it was quite a lot of bread, and I'm shocked you managed to get it all out. Even oh no, so am I. I was like, it's oh, like like usually take us weeks, and then it did. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I mean, the good news is that he might have saved the princess. Oh, um, did you see the princess? Did you see the? Uh, did you see the mistress? Oh, did you say hello from me? Did you say hello from Brutus? Um, we didn't really get yeah. a, a chance. There's a lot going on, you know. It was sort of sudden. It was very um, obvious, though, that she was thinking of you and and missed you deeply. I uh, we, it, we oh, tell. oh, you're right. Yeah, she definitely thought fondly of you. We know that for sure. Um, oh, that's very nice. I'm so happy to hear that. It makes me the happiest thing since ever since she left. I, you know, I haven't been in me right block stone head. Oh, <laughs> this guy. Um. Well, so I'm glad that you're doing well. We wanted to make sure that Escher wasn't here in case he happened to come back to this place. Why would he come back here if he wasn't with you all? We got split up. Simple as that. Right. We weren't sure. Uh, we, we came to, to check on him and, and, and make sure that everything was all right. I don't know. He might be hiding somewhere. I don't know. If you need to look around, feel free. I can take you wherever you would like to go. Thank you. Would that, does he have ways to get in and out of the castle without you knowing about it? Oh, of course. He's a master of the castle. Yes. We all look at each other very like Scooby-Doo uh. style. Dun, dun, I mean, that's. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> There's a wall, and it's like. Uh, 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 it, uh. I mean, I, I don't. Let me look for signs that maybe he's been here, but I don't. I can't imagine that he would. Why? Why would he feel the need to sneak in and out? It doesn't really make any sense to me. I, maybe if he's trying to avoid us, and in case he knew we might check, and he wants to. You know, keep Brutus in the dark. Hopefully he's not listening to this, but he is standing right there. Brutus, earmuffs. <laughs> what I would mean, I not be able to hear? Oh, earmuffs. If, earmuffs. I mean, if, if he really wanted, <laughs> if, if Escher really wanted to come and go unnoticed. We I would... have a confession to make for full transparency because I am an entirely stone sentient. These ears are entirely aesthetic, I believe they <laughs> use the word. I can hear from my entire stone person. I can hear from me belly. I can hear from the tip of me tail. That's fine. I don't think it matters. If Earmuffs you don't help. <laughs> uh, it's, we appreciate the honesty. What I was saying is that if he really wanted to come and go unnoticed, he would do it, and we would never know the wiser. I believe that. I, I mean, he would know this place better than anyone, and we would never catch on. Are there any rooms in the last week that uh, you haven't gone into, like the alchemy lab or uh, uh, in the into the dungeons where he might have co- come in to... For resources or, or, or something privately and not informed you? I know that sounds maybe a little offensive for him not to have told you, but it, it, these are dire I times. I think that the master of the castle would tell the major domo of the castle, because he'd say, Oh, Brutus, here, fetch me more wine, fetch me more bear blood, fetch I- me my nice slippers, fetch me my dirty book. 
Hypothetically. Just like bear blood? <laughs> bear blood, yes. <laughs> Hypothetically, yeah. Major Domo oh, Brutus. Hypothetically, is there a room you haven't looked in <laughs> since he left? I mean, I occasionally poke my head in, but there's a lot of rooms here. I mean, you really expect me to check all the time? I, I mean, for the purposes of janitorial work, yes. However, <laughs> oh, have I been a bad major domo? No, no, you've been fine. No, oh, I'm just no, 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 no. If you if you, if you mean a bad major domo, we'd call you a minor domo. You still, you're still major in my heart, Brutus. You're fine. But I'm asking you to answer the question: Is there a room in the last few days that you haven't got into that he could find a, a, a respite or healing like or the lab, a maybe. solace, like the lab, maybe? Oh, well, he just never lets me go into his private quarters. Yeah, I'll we, just... That's right. it. We got to go yeah, in there. Yeah, let's go there. Well, we might have to check that out so that we can make sure that uh, everything's all They're clear. They're very private. Yeah. He says, Brutus, stay out. <laughs> I mean, these are desperate times, and they call for pretty desperate measures. Leave the blood outside. We just need to check uh, that room and any other rooms like it. And Fetch we'll, me a Danish, Brutus! Then we'll be on our way. <laughs> Ooh, a Danish sounds nice. Mm. And he just would look at it, because he doesn't even eat Danish. He just wanted me to do it. Are you going to let us go in the room? Of course he's going to let us go in the room. Oh, well, I guess so. I look mean, how helpful he is. I'm not supposed to go in there. Well, you can stay outside. <clears throat> And we'll just check real quick. You are awfully helpful, like Lufty said. Oh. oh. Yeah, I love being helpful. I know you do. That's Absolutely. why I know that you're going to help us, because you're just, like, so good at your job. So. So maybe if you could take us to his private chamber, then, yeah, we could go check it out real quick. Okay. I'll do that right away. Let's go. And if Is you it? have a Danish, I wouldn't say no. Oh, well, we have to go all the way up to the kitchen to grab a Danish. No, the Danish can wait. This is more well, important, Lufty. Take, Come on. I'm just saying, you know, drop us off, and then, then maybe you scoot and get the Danish. That's what oh, you can do while I'll we're... Oh, grab a Danish while you investigate the private court. <laughs> but I like fruit, not cheese. It makes me bloat. And, and you might as well make it to... Fruit, really? You know this isn't rooting, and you're not cheese. hazel, right? <laughs> all right, if it's a cheese Danish... <laughs> Or of it, any Danish is fine with me. You know, two Danish. I feel like in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a little bit of all of us, you know, inside of each of our characters. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, self-inserting a little bit of Danish hunger. I'm sorry. You're right. I just <laughs> says Rich I, forcefully. I, I I could use a Danish too. This is how I get when I get hungry. <laughs> Uh, okay. oh, you're not you're yourself not, when you're hungry. You're not you when you're it's hungry, Master Phoenix. Thank you. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. What, how, we'll yeah. go to the chambers. A round of Danish is Okay, for a round of, So you want a Danish. You want a da So fruit. You like a. a All we have like is an, like poison berries. Po poison or poison? Poison berries. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I think you said poison. I think poison. 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 No, I think he said poison. Now is really sure not the poison. time to be rolling the dice with poisonous plants. No, oh, the, the cheese Danish, because what kind of mad person would prefer a fruit Danish? I'm with the cheese. I'll take a cheese Danish. So poison, poison, poison berry, poison berry. No, no, no. cheese, cheese oh. for me. <laughs> oh, I always want cheese. I just have cheese, cheese okay? I but option. If I get tootie, cheese. it's all on all of you. <laughs> cheese. You're 40% wind. <laughs> Yeah, no one will notice. <laughs> Why have I not canonically had a gas problem this whole campaign? Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I also am coming to the end of this campaign being like, oh, man, I missed so many things that I wanted to do. <laughs> four cheese Danishes. Four. Okay. I was gonna make my second canonically gassy character. <laughs> wow, there are four cheeses in the Danish? No. I might have a four cheese pizza in a four cheese flatbread. In four cheese ravioli. Let's talk about but it on I the way. I have a four cheese Danish, Felix. Please take us to the chambers. I feel like there's a song in here. <laughs> what kind of cheese is in a cheese cheese? <laughs> oh, like, I guess I could make a, a full question. cheese. We could, <laughs> we could use boar cheese. We could use bear cheese. <laughs> uh, we I want could it to be sweet. Elk. Yeah, yeah, have you got any goat, uh, uh, or uh, goat <laughs> cheese? No, we don't got goats here. <laughs> Just You're... please don't tell us what kind of cheese it is. Just bring us cheese Danish. We got wolf cheese. Ooh. Oh, it's cream cheese. That was my assumption. Yeah, that's what I figured too. You got cream cheese? <laughs> oh, creamy, Speaking of creamy Philadelphia, wolf cheese. Wow. So, wait, what, what you're telling me is you you milked wolves 
and you created cheese. <laughs> yes. And then you took that cheese and you mixed it with a vinegar and left it sit overnight <laughs> in order to create sour cream Damn. cheese. And that's what it's going to go into the table. Uh, if you want full cheeses, there's just full mammals I got. <laughs> I really just How long is this going to take when you, <laughs> when you get these danishes? Is it going to take a long time for you to make this? Look, I'm sorry I said anything. We should no, just I go. Just, I can just get the milk. I no, milk. I need you to do the whole process. You, you're going to have to go and really take your time. <laughs> oh, shit, I'll do... Okay, I'll, I'll make sure I'll do it however you want. Fresh wolf's milk is what he's asking for. Okay, fresh wolf's milk? Got it. Yeah. God. I mean, okay, if you're going to do a danish... Oh, do you know the secret? You know, do you know how you milk a wolf? Very, Very carefully. Oh, that was my job. <laughs> we both beat Caprice to it too, so that's a new one. I was looking for something more clever. I don't know. <laughs> okay, lead the way, Brutus. Let's go. Okay, okay. Uh, this way, uh, his private quarters so will go down, and it's like right by the dungeon, so he could feast on all the prisoners uh, very oh, easily. Convenient. Exactly right. Uh, and so he leads you through the castle, and uh, you see that there is a large. Uh, he arrives at the end of a long hallway that gets almost. It feels like it gets narrower, and it's very dark. And you see that there is. Um, that there's a very uh, uh, heavy wooden door that is kind of shimmering, and uh, it's beautifully etched and gilded with um, with a, a, a sigil of uh, the, the the Kreskov sigil uh, that that he had made for himself, the outline of Castle Ramornia. As he says, oh, "This is it. This is it. This is where he says, hey, Brutus, get away from here.'" All right. Well, just you, you, uh, you go. Fetch the things we asked for, and we'll go in. We appreciate you bringing us here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for, for thank you for 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 coming with me all this way. Thank you. Okay. And he reaches up, and there's a large uh, metal uh, lever that's by the door, and it's, it's like it's there's there's actually two. There's a, a normal size, and then his height, <laughs> and. Uh, he reaches up and he pulls it and you hear <laughs> as the wooden door it shimmers and flashes as it opens. Uh, and it's just, it's very dark inside and he says, okay. I light a f- my, one of my fingers and I hold, hold a small flame up in the air in front of the camera. Uh, and I, you know, I just make some fire to light that Okay, light. and don't tell me what's in there. I'm not supposed to know. That's fine. We, we won't Danish say anything. anything. Everybody if it was like a hundred more Brutuses, just like, <laughs> like unanimated, like, like waiting. Bros in in like nightmare. Nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it looks like hundreds of clones. Sorry, uh, everybody, just uh, stay close, and we'll uh, see what we find. All right. I'm right okay. behind you. Okay. And uh, it's very dark, and as you you all enter the room, as uh, it's it's. The darkness is is penetrated by the light, but it's it's barely. It should it should the oh, the fuck. flame should be um, illuminating uh, more than it is as you as you enter this room, and and it's incredibly uh, incredibly quiet as uh, you enter, as you as the light catches on stone, and it's not the stone of the walls, you see a leering face looking at you, as there's a, a huge gargoyle, uh, not as nearly as massive as the ones that you had mounted, but uh, person size, certainly, uh, leering forward, and you see that there's uh, another one, and another one is, as there's a bot, you, your, 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 your foot, uh, uh, kicks uh, a, a, a bottle that just rolls across and clatters with more yeah. as uh, the light illuminates and there's an, an open coffin uh, at the center of this room that's completely empty mm-hmm. as you see um, as you enter the, the center of this room looking around and then suddenly hear a <laughs> as the door slams behind you and you hear Brutus's voice call out no god I'm sorry, I was only following orders. I'm sorry, friends. As... I trust you, Brutus. As... I'm the, you do this. As, you still want me a 
Danish! Out chemical runes light up all in the room, on the ceiling, the floor, they snake out as green humming alchemical flame glows all around as you then see the as lights flash all in these gargoyles eyes as they then all uh, surround you. You realize that Major Domo Brutus has led you to a trap as the gargoyles start to animate and lunge forward. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh, God damn it, Brutus. We, we, we got outsmarted by a, by a literal stone hunk of rock. We got outsmarted And we by didn't get our Danishes. And we didn't get Danishes. <laughs> I, no, I, think oh. I still think he's going to get the Danishes. <laughs> but we'll just be dead. Yeah. I can't believe that little fucker tricked us. <laughs> just following orders, the question is. Fucking new. From who? Etcher's 100% back here. 100%. I mean, he's the only yeah. one that could issue orders, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Brutus wouldn't. Yeah, 100%. Well, My. join us next time. But we're not done. We're not done. What's next, Andy? Well, so we got a few things. First, we're going to be doing Avengers and Chill, which is uh, where we're going to talk about our favorite moments. We're going to have a lot to theorize, but most importantly, we're going to answer all of your questions and comments. Um, and then, so don't go anywhere. Stick around with us. We got a little bit more to stream here. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we've got uh, some schedule changes coming up. Um, so the changes. next time that we're going to be live is going to be this next coming Tuesday, which is uh, June 21st at our normal time of 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to be playing Root. Then the next week, we're switching back to Wednesday nights. So it's going to be uh, June 29th. 7.30 p.m., same time, same place, just moving to Wednesday nights uh, for the remainder of time. eternity <laughs> until that changes again. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be playing Root on, you know, the, the, the next Tuesday and then the Wednesdays out until August 24th, uh, where we'll be returning with Edge of Midnight, a Ravenloft folktale, which is DM by Nikki. Um, and then we've got Icebound on Friday, July 1st. And the next episode of this campaign will be Saturday, July 23rd, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'm going to keep hammering the schedule out there. Every time we have announcements of any kind, we're going to put it in the Discord. Um, but just keep in mind that after this coming Tuesday, we are switching to Wednesdays for our weekly stuff. Um, and that's about it. So we can move over to Avengers and Chill. So thanks for hanging, everybody. Uh, if you don't want to stick around for Avengers and Chill, join our Discord. Yeah. Uh, that's where we hang out between sessions. Um, or, uh, also check us out on TikTok. We're, um, <laughs> we're doing a bunch of, uh, wacky clips, trying to get one up every other day or so. Um, and so it'd be great to, you know, if you want to binge some funny moments, check us out there. Um, and then finally, if you want to get a little backstory on Escher and Castle Ramornia and all, and where Barovia, dun, dun, dun. Uh, the Curse of Shredania podcast is now live, new episodes every Friday. That's where you want to be. We are taking the Curse of Shredania campaign that we played from 2019 to 2020 and um, streamlining it, editing it, and putting it into a podcast format uh, for your enjoyment. So check it out. Um, go to Strodcast.com. You can find uh, all of our socials there. And you can find all of our socials. Um, so. Thanks for hanging. We're cutting over. Cutting over. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>